Today is the oh come on. Let's see. Uh 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 uh. All right, hold on. We might have to restart the YouTube. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're having a wonderful day. If you're watching this and it does not say live at the bottom of the screen, unfortunately, you are watching the recap. The good news is we are live Monday through Friday, 30 minutes before open. Drop your thumbs up on that video. Make sure you're subscribed. You're on mobile. Press hot chat. X out the chat. Hit the thumbs up button. I don't know how long it took you to hear that there. We had a little bit of delays here, but Chatadonia. Today is the big day. I hope you guys are all ready for it. You have Jerome Powell at 2.30. It is going to be very important. You actually had a little bit of activity there in China. We are coming off of Snapchat earnings. Was not good. Had a little bit of an effect, which is kind of good. It didn't bring the market down a lot this time, but AMD was good, and now we are waiting. You're even going to be getting a little bit of debt ceiling talk today, which could also be important, but Chattadonia at 2.30, the market may change forever. Not forever, but it might really start to set up now the new month. Because if you didn't know, it's already February, baby. So, Chattadonia, I hope you guys are ready. I hope you're locked and loaded. I am glad that you're here. And uh, good morning. How are you, baby? What's up, Twitch? Twitch was with me right there early, baby. What's going on, Fed Chair Peach? What's up, Yatana? What's up, Payday Devo? Dr. Sway, Fed Chair Peach again, Triple Three, Charlie. We're built for this. Oh, yes. What's up, CJ Bori? Kobe Maguire. Oh, El Trapado, Clap Chaser, Yee Yee, Wesley O'Neill in the house. Good morning, Chattadonia. Are you ready? What's up, Trevor Vincent? Donkey, SG, baby. Smars, Arturo, Matt, Bubba. Oh, what's up, baby? What's up, Jim Birch? Good morning. Open face sandwich, baby. This is the day. Oh, Tony. Tony Garlinger. Oh, Nazi Wolf. Oh, good morning. Don't let me lose my voice just now. Y'all got me hype. Look at the morning, Chad. Y'all showed up ready to go. This is the day that you show up, baby. This is the day. Mr. Castillo, Gregory, Kite. I can't say it. Smoke, Manic, Mark, Ports, Danny, Big Ratchy, Riley Mack, Alaskan Assassin, Samuel C, baby, Hameen, James, Taylor, Barry, baby. What's up, Jeremy? What's up, Caesar? What's up, Judah? What's up, Malcolm? Inverts King. Cody White, baby. What's up, Chattadonia? Good morning. I love to see it. I love to see y'all bright in the early. Let's go. Bright in the early. Bright and early. Let's go. Hit that like button. Show me you awake. Show me where that you're awake. Say good morning. Hit the like button. What's going on? Jay up, oh, baby. In the house. Let's do it, man. Let's do it. Andre. Queen City, baby. Oh, it's here, baby. This is the big day. I hope you know that. It is the big day. Everybody around the world is watching. You know that. Everybody's getting ready for it. If you did not check out yesterday's watch list, I have a good play-by-play, -play, okay? You get a play-by-play, minute-by-minute. I even got a couple of theories. I have to still go over a little bit more information with you guys. We got to go over the written statement. So I have a little bit more there. It's going to be very, very simple. But, oh, man, Chad, this one is going to be a wild one. So I hope you're ready. I hope you're feeling good. I hope you smashed that like button. I hope you're subscribed so you don't get left behind this year in the market. You know, we here for you, baby. But let's get it. What do we got for the news? What do we got for the news? It's here, man. It was the day of Powell. Whew. So brace for a Fed pushback. Uh, Jerome Powell will probably be rebuffing the pivot narrative that he sees a halt of tightening soon and he starts easing by year end. Jeffrey Gunlock said after hiking by 25 basis points today, the FOMC is set to keep further increases on the table. At least it doesn't have to worry about the recent surge in borrowing in the Fed's fund market. Bank of America said funding pressures are mild. Uh, the Adani crisis deepened with the sell-off in group shares triggered by Hindenburg's fraud schemes or fraud claims turning into a $92 billion route. Even after key share sales, Bloomberg reported that Credit Suisse has stopped accepting bonds as Gautan Adani, a group of companies as collateral for margins to pri private clients. Adani Enterprises, which pulled off a $2.5 billion follow-on yesterday, lost 28%. 
Uh, futures tick lower. Treasury yields in the dollar fell. PIMCO sees further dollar weakness this year as slowing inflation limits its haven appeal. Oil was higher. OPEC will hold output steady next month as expected. Delegates said as the market awaits clarity on demand in China and supplies from Russia. Uh, the debt debate, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy and Joe Biden will meet today to discuss raising the debt ceiling, cutting spending, and avoiding a default. The Treasury on Monday ramped up their estimates for borrowing this quarter, implying that the government may bump up against the ceiling earlier than forecast. According to Barclays, uh, the Treasury held steady in their quarterly sales of longer-term debt, matching widespread expectations among bond dealers, but the department said that until the debt limit is suspended or increased, the debt limit-related constraints will lead to greater than normal variability in the issuance of bills. The Treasury will sell $96 billion of long-term securities at its quarterly refunding auctions next week. Uh, Peloton jumped pre-market after CEO Barry McCarthy said that they are no longer on the brink of extinction and they'll reach positive cash flow this year. Even as the sales slid, T-Mobile top profit estimates and forecast 75% free cash flow growth for 2023. After the close, meta sales may have fallen 6% on a slump in ad spending, a third straight decline. Octara, the electronic trading system for syndicated loans and CLOs founded by seven Wall Street banks, saw their first trades executed via the platform. Funds advised by T. Rowe Price, Invesco, Lord Abbott, Invesco, and Steel Creek participated in the transactions. Uh, Euro area inflation slowed more than expected to 8.5 last month from 9.2. The core reading was steady at 5.25 month on month. Consumer prices fell 0.4 as they did in December. The figures suggest a heated debate to come at the ECB over how many more rate hikes uh, must occur. The bank is expected to hike by 50 basis points tomorrow. And then crypto, some users of bankrupt Celsius custody program will be able to pull out 94% of their eligible assets while the fate of the other 6% will be decided later. A court filing shows, as for FTX, a filing showed that companies had $1.43 billion in cash as of December 31st, up from $1.24 billion on November 20th. Just after their bankruptcy, the figure for Alameda Research was $876 million versus $401 million. <laughs> That was weird. <laughs> What's up, Real Fry Rice? Uh, chart of the day is another U.S. crude build. Uh, nationwide stockpiles swelled to 6.3 million barrels last week, the API is said to have reported, which would be the sixth gain in a row if confirmed by the EIA later. There was also increases at Cushing and for gasoline and distillate inventories. So 945, you're going to get January manufacturing. You already had a very weak ADP, so... Weak jobs data today came in uh, at 5.30. That was this little pop right there. Uh, 10 a.m., you're going to get January ISM manufacturing and December jolts jobs openings. 10.30, EIA U.S. crude oil inventories. 11.30, 36 billion of 17-week bills. 2 p.m. for the Fed rate decision. 2.30 for PAL. And then 3.15, Biden is meeting with Kevin McCarthy. And 4.30, Brazil rate decision. And then January wards, vehicle sales. Earnings include Meta, Cortiva, MetLife, Align Technology, Allstate, McKesson, and Hologic. Ooh, it's going to be a good one. Uh, Brazil Central Bank is expected to keep their benchmark selic rate at 13.75 today. Uh, Jair Bolsonaro reemerged from the self-imposed exile in Florida to tell supporters that he intends to remain active in Brazilian politics. Uh, Peru's outlook was cut to negative from stable by Moody's, which cited mass protest. Uh, Nikki Haley plans to announce that she is running for U.S. president on February 15th, a person familiar said. And then Trump raised less than $10 million since announcing his campaign, showing the GOP, GOP race is wide open. And then the ADP jobs report today added 106000 in January, well short of expectations of 180000 uh, December's figure was revised up to 253,000. Uh, coming up, available positions may have dropped to 10.3 million from 10.5, according to December jobs report. Uh, European equity capital markets face the slowest start to a year since 2019. Proceeds from IPO, share, uh, IPO sales in listed companies fetch 1.43 billion, a 79% drop. Uh, UK house prices posted the longest string of declines since the great financial crisis. Prices in stores rose 8% in January, the fastest pace since 2005. And then more than half of the company's bosses are optimistic about their business prospects this year, the Institute of Directors has said. Uh, Britain will regulate crypto asset activities like trading, lending, and custody under the same regime as financial services. The government began consulting on a series of new rules, including making exchanges, write detailed requirements on admission standards, and disclosure for token issuers. 
Uh, India aims to narrow their deficit to 5.9% of GDP, even as they boost capital spending by more than a third to $122 billion. Finance Minister Nirmala Shitharma, uh, or Shitharam uh, will forego 350 billion rupees in revenue for raising the cap on income tax exemption. Bank of Japan Deputy Governor Mayoshi Amiya's lack of recent public speaking offers support for economists' view that he is the front runner to the helm of the central bank in April. Uh, South Korea posted a record trade deficit in January as exports plunged 17% year on year. China's Caxin manufacturing PMI ticked up slightly to 49.2 from 49. Hong Kong's GDP contracted worse than expected to 4.2 in the fourth quarter. And Pakistan's inflation quickened to 27.6%. Uh, Biden may support a scaled back drilling plan in ConocoPhillips proposed Willow project in Alaska. People familiar said uh, OPEC's output fell by 375,000 barrels a day in January to a little over 28 million barrels a day, led by a drop in Saudi Arabian supplier. Uh, crude supply latest Iranian exports have slipped in January from close to a four month high, while the North Sea uh, downgrades have declined for the highest in seven months. Uh, U.S. natural gas extended losses after their worst month in more than two decades. Gold was little changed as ETFs have cut holdings in the previous session. Base metals mostly gained. Soybeans held at two week highs in Chicago as investors weighed mixed crop conditions in South America. Uh, CATL chose banks, including Goldman and UBS, for the sale of their GDRs in Switzerland. Ariel Investments raised $1.45 billion in Project Black, a new fund aimed at minority-led suppliers to Fortune 500 companies. Casino Gouchard Parashan is exploring a potential sale of their combination of French retail operations with Teract. Uh, Advent back uh, Colbin Studies. Takeover of U.S. defense peer Mercury. Swiss trader Sukafina strikes deal with to buy U.S. coffee merchant. Michigan battery startup one raises $350 million to fund a factory. And then Grey Bull Capital and talks to bid for Brit British Volt. Uh, Intel CEO Pat Gellinzer took a 25% cut in his base pay. His leadership team may see their pay decrease by 15%. Senior managers will take a 10% reduction. Uh, Blackstone reshuffled the top key of real estate business. Frank Cohen will see leadership at the core plus real estate business to Wesley LePanter. JP Morgan plans to launch a digital bank in Germany late next year or early 2025. And they expect to target other EU countries after that, uh, people familiar said. Snap drop after it gave guidance uh, weaker than expected. Meta, or I gave weaker than expected forecast, even though they didn't have guidance. Uh, Meta and Pinterest also slid. AMD rose after their beat. Electronic Arts fell uh, after it cut their full year forecast and delayed the next Star Wars game. Uh, Humana's profit and forecast beat. Novartis sees profits rising, driven by demand for innovative drugs. Nomura earnings beat with signs of recovering sentiment. Uh, Tesla to raise Shanghai plant weekly output in February. Uh, says Reuters, chat GBT drives buzz buying frenzy in China, AI-related stocks. Key Apple partners ties to Taiwan think, think tank rises ire. Uh, Intel trim CEO pay by 25%. JP Morgan uh, plots Germany Consumer Bank. Uh, JP Morgan's European millionaire surge in sign of Brexit shift. Goldman's Australian equities head said to be leaving. Goldman Sachs loses equities co-head. Uh, Goldman Bell says EM stocks still have appeal after rally. Um, uh, milestone for open protocols. Uh, it's related is now officially no stirs on Apple, says Jack Dorsey. And then McDonald's raised to buy at Fubon price target 308. And then this one's big news here in the morning. Even though we have Jerome Brady, Tom Brady announced that he is retiring from football. But this time he means it. I'll get to the point right away. I'm retiring for good, Brady said in a video posted online. Brady announced his retirement last year, only to say he was returning to the league a few weeks later in March. Uh, they found the missing monkeys. Uh, two emperor tamarins stolen from the Dallas Zoo were found yesterday, New York Times reported. After a tip, police discovered them in a closet at an empty home in Lancaster, 15 miles away. A zoo spokesperson said they were thrilled beyond relief. They've added more cameras and security guards. Not only did somebody, like, steal the monkeys, somebody snitched on the monkey thieves, and they, were, they had their own house. That's crazy. Traders predict AI and machine learning will have a biggest impact on how trades are executed in the next three years. A J.P. Morgan survey showed more than half of the respondents expect tech to shape their future. Up from a quarter last year, chat GBT alone is behind much of the excitement. Sean Penn's disaster relief rally said lives during the pandemic, save lives during the pandemic and raise millions for Ukraine relief through online donations. But staff say the firm mismanaged fund downplayed their complaints and failed to address the alleged sexual harassment. 
Uh, hackers stole $3.8 billion worth of cryptocurrency in 2022 as sanctions on North Korea drove a surge in suspected hacking by Asian nations. Uh, blockchain analysis and chain analysis said hacking groups that the officials have linked to North Korean government stolen an estimated $1.7 billion in 2022, up roughly from $400 million the year before that. A missing radioactive capsule was found by a remote highway in Australia. After days-long search, the 8mm capsule, believed to have fallen off the truck, went missing from a package sent from Rio Tinto Mine. En route to Perth, officials appraised searchers for finding a needle in the haystack. So they found the little capsule and they found the monkeys. Well, I guess the market's going to rally today. Maybe Powell found what restrictive territory is too. We'll find out. Uh, Porsche bargain. A dealership in China mistakenly advertised a $148,000 Panamera for about $18,000. Cuban and embarrassing backtrack. Porsche apologized and rejected most bids while negotiating on an agreeable outcome. The first person who made a res reservation, they did not elaborate. Uh, and then on this day in history, writer Mary Shelley died in 1851 at age 53. The daughter of women's rights activist uh, Mary Wollstonecraft, she devoted much of her life to editing the works of her husband, the romantic poet Par uh, Percy Shelley, who drowned during a storm near Italy in 1822. Frankenstein is her best known work, but she also wrote a prophetic novel called The Last Man about Europe's ravaged uh, by a mysterious pandemic that sweeps across the globe, resulting in the near extinction of humanity. Wow, there you go. Mary Shelley, Frankenstein. Maybe that's the dollar today. Oh, I don't know. So, Chad, it's a big day here today. I hope you're ready. That's a lot of news. I even got a little bit more for you. Uh, Amazon said they could see a strong driver uh, to earnings interest and taxes from the recently announced buy with Prime Services. According to Morgan Stanley, shares are up 0.3. AMD rises 0.3 after second largest maker of computer processors. Gave a forecast better than expected. Boston Scientific, BSX, they drop 1% after reporting uh, EPS in fourth quarter that missed average analyst estimates. Chinese stocks are on the way up trying to break a down streak and they are led by AI hype in China. Uh, Digital Turbine APPS drops at 2% after B. Riley analyst Daniel Day cut his recommendation. Edward Life Sciences EW rises 1.4 after the maker of blood vessel valve replacements reported sales for fourth quarter that beat the average analyst estimate. EA shares fall 9% after the video game co company uh, cut their full year forecast and announced the delay of a Star Wars game. Foot Locker was upgraded to outperform from neutral and price target raised to 62 from 38 at Credit Suisse. Uh, Foot Locker goes up 3.2. General Mills is initiated uh, with a neutral recommendation at Mizuho. Shares decline 0.2. Juniper Network shares fall 3.3 after the communication equipment provider reported fourth quarter net revenue that missed expectations. Uh, Match Group shares tumble 8.3 after the dating service firm gave guidance for first quarter showing little fundamental business improvement. Uh, mobile eSports MGAM soared 71 after today's record surge as the volatile electronic sports platform continues to climb. NEO is upgraded NEO. Uh, to buy from hold at Nehem, shares gained 5.4. OI Glass gained 17% after beating analyst estimates on revenue and EPS. Peloton reported improved cash flow and narrower net loss than the last quarter. Uh, CEO gave a very optimistic guidance. Shares are up 5.7. Qualitrix XM shares jump as much as 7% after investor Silver Lake disclosed a 14.9% stake in the software company. Supermicro SMCI are mixed on the company after it gave an outlook that was seen as pressured by economic backdrop. It also reported second quarter results that were in line. Shares are up 0.9. Snap shares are down 12.8 after social media gave a weaker uh, than expected forecast saying changes in the advertising products may be disruptive to their business. Uh, Tisha, uh, Tashi Jean, uh, TSHA shares are sink as much as 24% after they provided an update uh, on their TSM 120 program treatment. Uh, T-Mobile shares are down 1.9 after the company gave a forecast for 2023 postpaid net consumers that was weaker than forecast was management. WM shares are down 2.6 after the company reported fourth quarter results that missed expectations on key metrics. And then Western Digital slides 2.3 after the revenue forecast for the third quarter fell short of estimates. Wow, a lot of plays, baby, a lot of plays. <laughs> are you ready? Are you ready, Chattadonia? I hope you're ready. I hope you're ready, sir. We gonna have a good one. We gonna have a good one. So, Chad, we got a little bit of time here. I think we're doing we're right on schedule here today. So let's get this popping, okay? I'm gonna go back a little bit in time.
Uh, we'll let you listen to the news a little bit. I'm going to go to the potty. Follow me on Instagram. Uh, don't fall for the imposters. Mine is the private account. Uh, and I love you. I hope you're ready. Smash that like button. It's a big day, baby. It's a big day. So wake up. You better wake up. All right, I'll BRB. I'll BRB. I wanted to finish on fixed income with you. The Fed's doing QT. They're going to hike some more through the next 12 months, so I've got no idea how much. The ECB's in the game as well. QT rate hikes maybe as much as 125 basis points plus to come from the ECB. There's an odd one out here, Bob, and I'm wondering whether it's the BOJ who gets set to join the party and what you think that's going to do to global fixed income. Yeah, that, that's a really good question, uh, John, because it is the Bank of Japan. And you talked about the developed market central banks. Also, the emerging market central banks have done a ton of tightening. And yet the Bank of Japan sits out there. Last time I was on, we talked about they may have missed an opportunity to widen uh, the bands on yield curve control. They do have inflation. They do have some growth in the economy. They do have a positive immigration policy. What they have in place to me looks so outdated it could only change. What does that mean for the rest of fixed income? It means that markets outside of Japan are less attractive. Right now, if you buy US uh, government bonds and hedge them back to yen, you're coming out with a negative yield, not like negative relative to where JGBs are, but outright negative. I think if you return to something that looks normal in the Japanese bond market, where the central bank just guides policy around growth and inflation and lets the market price the bond market, that makes that market very attractive. And, and my concern is, if it's done clumsily, it could lead to a generation of repatriation of all those flows we've seen in the last 20 years come out of Japan into the U.S., European, hey, and emerging markets. You guys should know what that so, means. Final question, then. You guys should you know what that if... means. We had a nice little lesson today. Some repatriation, some economics. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So, Chattadonia, I hope you guys are feeling good. It's going to be amazing today. You know, God willing, let's have a good one. But, Chattadonia, you hear what they say. You hear everybody. They be like, oh, my gosh, 50 bites apart. Everybody has something to say today. But, you know, it's your turn. It's your turn. Chad, what's your first play of the day? You killed it. Ba uh, mods, feel free to ban anybody. If it's not serious, I take this moment very seriously in my life. So I need a play right now. Tell me your first play of the day. Mods, just feel free. Let it fly today. Let it fly, baby. TP on, on Baidu. Lucid puts. DAX rally. Timo calls. Jeppy Lawn. Spy puts. Short and ZN again. Spy calls. QQQ. Russell 2000. MO calls. Tesla calls. NVIDIA calls. AMD. Meta paper trade. Waiting for the jolt. Spy. TQQQ. AMD Lawn. DraftKings calls. NVIDIA calls. Russell 2000. Spy. Bam. AMD puts. Apple puts. Bros puts. Soxel shares. ES Law. COF puts. Take profits on Snap puts. Buy Duke calls. Nothing until power. NVIDIA calls. NVIDIA calls. NVIDIA leaps. XOM calls. Calls. 410 Spy. Holding Snap puts. Averaging down on SDAO. Peloton calls. TQQ. SPX shorties. MS TR long, getting out of snap, NVIDIA, buy do long, Adani, long DXY, uh, watching and watching, SPX calls, selling Amazon calls, shorting ES, Tesla puts, Yash calls, Meta calls, XOM calls, power run, cash until power, Google puts, FedEx calls, UNG baby, Tesla calls and puts, Mao, uh, Roku calls, TLT, SPX, DraftKings puts, MSGM short, UNG long, Spy calls, Tesla baby, Spy straddle, Roku put, hold it till power, waiting on power, UNG long, selling AMD calls, long bank, shorting everything, Spy 409, 23 and mean, NVIDIA shares, AI, Intel puts, set handle, maybe try boil flip, spy calls, then Intel calls, CCL calls, power will show the way, maybe GM calls, first live trading day, MES, spy puts, says QQ at 39 and we ride, QQQ, bear puts, sped, Pinterest calls, SPX, long everything, selling everything, Tesla puts, power puts, AAL puts, being patient, chilling, and VIX calls, and then Lucid puts, let's go Chattadonia, wow, you did it again. Everybody was safe there. Some people were close. So I had to, I'm, I was about to ban a Jesus call, bro. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Y'all came close. That was good. They did it again, baby. They did it again. That's what I'm talking about. Let's go, Chattadonia. Oh, you're ready today. Locked and loaded. It's a big day, bro. It's a big day. Being patient, the smartest one I heard. <laughs> Let's go, Chattadonia. So I got a couple plays for you. 
I'm going to be watching AMD Intel, uh, given the earnings there. Uh, QQQ, I have that one on my list. I'm going to be watching that. Uh, Meta, EA, uh, Match, uh, they had bad earnings. EA as well is going to be another one. Baidu, and then WDC, uh, and then I have Meta on there, right? Yeah, so pretty simple list. And then the bonds, I think the bonds are going to go crazy. Uh, you could also look at TLT, IEF. Uh, don't even be afraid to look at shy as well, too. Uh, but the bond curve is going to be active today. And like I said, we still have a lot to go over. So you better make sure you hit those likes because I got a little bit more homework for you. Or I just got one little hack for today. You got one more hack to look at for the meeting. And, you know, we got to be prepared for it. And I, I do have an expectation. So I have an idea of how today is going to play out. I look forward to sharing it with you. I look forward to having y'all locked and loaded and liking the video. And Chattadonia is game time. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I hope you're ready. I'm glad you made it here in the morning. It is a very important day. It is the first day of February. But with all that aside, we do something very special here. And that is paying homage to the people who have sacrificed more than most of us ever have and ever will, man. And that is the veterans of the United States of America. So on behalf of the cult, the people here, the people not here, we want to give a huge special shout out. All the active servicemen, past servicemen, anybody who has served this country, for real. Shout out to the veterans, baby. Even down to their families as well because they made their sacrifice. We love you and appreciate you and thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you and uh, all the people out there serving their local community, all the firefighters, doctors, nurses, teachers, police officers, anybody volunteering, my nonprofit people out there. You know you helping out your community. You being a light. We love and appreciate you as well too, man, and keep up the race, okay? Keep it up. Keep it up. Don't ever be discouraged, my friend, and get a long term. But ladies and gentlemen, uh, please rise. Place your right hand over your heart. Say it with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all, baby. Save the Jets! Oh, it's game time, baby. Or oh, nah, let's go. Welcome to power. Oh, it's game time. It's game time. Do you feel it? Do you feel it? Are you ready? We're going to have a couple of hours of waiting, too. You're going to have a lot of post-earnings plays, so there might be some opportunities. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to get up EA here. They were the bad one. Uh, who did really good? I think Peloton, actually. That was a growth name that held up. Uh, we're going to see here. Uh, WDC did bad, but they were able to bounce. And I don't know if we're missing anything else. But, Chad, we got one minute, man. You have one minute, and you're almost at 1,000 likes. That's amazing. Let's go. Hit that like button, baby. Hit that like button. Get ready if you have any questions. Uh, once the market kind of cools down from the opening cash open, I'm sure we're going to talk about a lot of today. And like I told you, I got, I got a little bit more for you here. And if you didn't watch yesterday's watch list, if you want to know how the last Fed meeting played out, uh, we have that. So I, I took a screenshot of it, but if you want the live breakdown of it. So here is how the last Fed meeting played out. So I think I have a bigger one, too, if you want more, you know, intricate but we go over the watch list, so it's second link in the description. We explain every single little pop and drop. And, and remember, last, last time was a shit show. So it's going to be very, very unique here coming into today. So I hope you are ready, my friends. Oh, yeah, AMD, that's another one. And then I'm going to see. I have my Visa play. Uh, Biden's going to come out with some credit card shit today so on the late fee. So we'll find out. Five, four, three, two, one. Round one, fight. Game time. Let's go. Mm -mm. Again, bonds just came out of nowhere here today. A lot of people. Again, I think bonds are going to be insane. Oh, man, especially off of the opening statement. So Meta wins court nod to buy with within unlimited in, in unlimited in loss for FTC. Meta just won an FTC court case. So uh, they're kind of recovering here. Again, we still have that Google as well. Is it up there? I don't even have all the... We have Amazon, Google. Uh, what's the other one? 
AMD. I know Baidu came up again. A lot of China rips there today. Okay, there's the Visa. Bullish Apple DIA. Watch for Meta. Uh, Apple Red, really. Uh, where are we at right now? You're down only a point four on the uh, on the Nasdaq, and then Dow Jones is getting murdered today. Actually, Dow Jones is down point four five. Yikes! So forty seventy, Chad. Uh, just like yesterday, the levels from here they actually get crazy. AMD is continuing. Uh, see if what's it called starts to drop. See if Intel starts to react to that one. Yeah, that one's doing really really good. Thessalonian, they're bouncing right back up there. Uh, let me check the Intel. Uber's on the low. Intel's down 1.5 now. Again, Peloton was another good one. WDC, that one might flush, but damn, they've already recovered that. Never mind. That's crazy. MO selling that pop. Yes, yeah, Snap down 12. I'm surprised Snap is still above 10, man. That, again, yesterday was supposed to be a, a very, very dirty day for social media, but it wasn't. I'm very, very surprised. Those Baidu's are running up here, too. Uh, it's the same levels from yesterday. So, uh, again, I, I don't know if I put them on the watch list, but so pretty much 4080, 4094, and 4100. There's actually a lot, a lot of room here to move here. So if that goes up, then there you go. There you have it. That Visa, we need that one to start moving. Baba's on the high. China names are going. Again, Boeing's on the high. Dow Jones is down 0.68 right now. It's actually quite wild. And then NASDAQ is doing the best. And then your bonds are on fire. Mm -mm -mm. Snap put negative when you're in the money. Welcome to, to the, the options. Even then, though, the sympathies, they worked, but not as much. I mean, Meta, I made money on that. But believe it or not, I'm still up a dollar per share on Google. Yeah, Snap is kind of recovering there. AMD's coming down. Watch out for that one. Uh, Peloton, I know Boston Scientific was here in the morning. Lulu Green. I almost said Lula. This is Brazil. Oh, yeah, where's EA? I'm in the game like EA. Yeah, EA still, the EA might continue down. Watch out for that. Uh, AMD selling off a little bit. Uh, Baidu is just running it right now. So there's the China. And again, it's already 9% or something like that. So I'm, I remember I want the 150 break on this, but it's already up 9%. It was very, very big. Meta's coming up. Yeah, Meta was barely down. A little bit of the snap effect. But again, they just had news right now, right at the bell. They won some sort of uh, court case. Again, T-Mobile is another one. Mm -mm. All right. Unfortunately, I'm going to do what I always do. I got to sell out early. I sold out of Baidu 315 net. So we made like 500 on the day making up the loss. But uh, I'm out of Baidu. That was a nice one. I, I think that one still has a lot of upside though. But again, it's already up a lot too. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping if I have the opportunity to clear a lot of stuff, I know, because again, I have a lot of just random plays I want to be able to go through here. Uh, and then we want to clear up some things. I would want, I want to close the visa. Again, I still have Arista working against me. We have the Google. I'm going to be holding that one. Uh, there's just a couple of random other ones. Oh, Baidu. Wow. Great timing. Great timing on this one. That's good. I'm, I'm crazy. Uh, Visa is still at the low. Spy's hitting a low. You're down 0 0.3. 4062. So again, 4060, 4058 is the level on the downside. And see where that leads. Microsoft selling. Yeah, Microsoft selling big. Mm -mm. Apple's even dropping. Boeing is just going straight up, actually. So is LMT, though. Some defensives. I think WDC. That one's in the middle. Tesla. A couple things are selling pretty big. Even the bonds. Bonds are giving up that early morning monster rally. Mm -hmm. Bro, why Visa be staying so pinned? What do you think? Google. I mean, Google, they had troubles last time. 
So again, that's the that was the problem. You see the report on January trifecta. I did, man. Uh, we went over it at like eight in the morning. Where where you at, bro? Where you where you posted me a seeking alpha? Where do you think they got it from? But yeah, we already went over that, and it was on the watch list yesterday. Come on, bro. Come on. You lag it, bro. You lag it. I'm. I'm I don't know. That's that. That's not wrench activity, sir. That's not wrench activity, sir. We're gonna. I don't know how I feel about that, sir. That's that's behind. That's behind. Uh, what is that? XOM on the high. I thought they were just selling off right there. Meta after hours. I I think they're gonna miss. Mm -mm. BP green. Oh, where's EA? EA starting to sell off. That one could go down. Tesla trying to bounce here at the bottom. The swing. I mean, this is the first time. I mean, cash open was a sell and not a buy. So from 4070, but this could be a reload candle. And now I'm just getting ready. I did. Oh, no, I did. I forgot to dress up for Powell. I'm wearing a Miami's heat sweater and sweatpants that I think I've worn like four days in a row. They're just very comfy. And the video is on the high now. AMD starting to break out here. So there it is. I think you just kind of unwound a little bit there. And everyone's going to start getting active. Google sold a little. Mm -mm -mm. Slept in my suit. It's good, man. It's good. Always good. Intel. I think Intel should go down, but they actually ended up holding up here. So they're they're around the same price we would have shorted it at yesterday. Mm -mm. Where else was there? There's EA. That one's still drum, drop in. There's Caterpillar. What was the other one from yesterday? Was it UPS? Baidu back on the high. Oh, man. Big drop in pop on there. So, again, China AI stocks, very, very hype today. Very, very hype. WDC now, they're selling off. So, there you go. They recovered. That would have been a 3%. Mm -mm -mm. Four zero six two. We got out of that one. I still got the Whirlpool. Still got the Google. Everything else we're going to be chilling on. What a beautiful, glorious day. I forgot. We have the Amazon as well. Amazon's down one. Plug pop in 90s.com AI. We'll see. Let's see. We'll see. We'll see. WDC Ford starting to run. Yeah, Ford is in the green by 1.3. Yeah, Baidu is killing it now. Again, I sold out at 9%. I think you got an extra dollar off of that. Mm -mm. Everyone locked in, man. Make sure you like the video. That's, don't play me. Don't play me on that, you know? 1,500 likes. We'll go over the homework. I'll, get, I'll give you a second secondary. I'm going to just give you the basic. I'm going to say it a lot, though, today. But we need 1,500 minimum. And y'all are, are holding it down anyways, though. It's game time. I don't even care. Just like the video. We got to play, baby. We got to play M.O. dumping. Good. Inshallah, Habibi. Inshallah, M.O. Go negative. M.O. is not the dumping. Why you lied to me? Oh, oh, no. I've read TLT dumping with M.O. ripping. Never mind. Dang it. All right. That was the reload candle. You're already right back up there. Ford is coming up. You sold off early. Now we're, what, 10 minutes in? First five minutes down. Second five minutes up. I believe we have data uh, right around the corner here, actually. In what, 20 minutes, you're going to get uh, manufacturing PMIs and then construction spending and then Jolt's jobs opening. So 20 minutes, we have more data coming. Bonds have just sold off a third. Quite fascinating. Mm. Tesla to the dirt. That sounds so aggressive. Google's at the low. AMD's now still hitting a high. EA's flushing there. So bad earnings has its price, it looks like. Where's Peloton? Peloton, why you no load? T-Mobile, too. Yeah, EA is really, really starting to dump. 
Man, bonds are red now. That's crazy. A lot, a lot of bond movement here. Ooh, this Fed day is going to be fun. Uh, Visa kind of bounced a little bit. AMD one more time. Boeing is just stupid, man. Boeing's actually getting a shit ton of volume there at the high. Uh, Talonom decided on direct share issues. It's not important. Again, Peloton on the cash flow, positive cash flow comments. They're still holding, but they're kind of coming down to the lows. Financials, uh, they are the worst on the day, down 0.49, then communications at 0.47, then materials at 0.46, and then health. Healthcare is actually the only thing green right now. Consumer staples and industrials and energy, they're barely red, but the only thing green right now is healthcare. Hey, young Dizzle. Mm -hmm. uh, JP Morgan, I thought they were doing good. They're holding up, though. Apple, Baidu still holding a 10% gain or just under it. Oh, yeah, we're Square and PayPal. And then Peloton still selling off a little bit more. I'm going to throw EA up here. The FOMC has not gone against the Fed futures in the last 60 years. So the only time the Fed has done what the Fed futures haven't priced in the day before the meeting or the day of the meeting uh, was 60 years ago. So if you think any of the other fun facts we bring up are interesting, uh, that one will make you uh, make you think for a little bit. Lebanon devalues official exchange by 90%. I know Boeing's on fire right now. Boeing is insane. Like, they're killing it. JD and more China names move in. Boeing even had big volume here into these. 215 is the level, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, you're starting to hit, like, the breakout point. Uh, Intel might be positive. Boeing is on a streak right now. Keep eyes on that. Intel is coming up. Intel's came up a lot now. It's still red on the day. Mm-mm. GE, it does kind of move with it. There's the INET. Mm -hmm. AMD, AMD's doing decent, but most of the gains are are constrained to the pre-market. XOM is starting to run up now. Powell, what time does he speak? That's one. Uh, 2.30 p.m. Eastern. Brought to you by Stock Market Live. Like the video. We love you. Tom Brady is retiring. What does that mean for Powell? The covered call on Redfin. Uh, we just shorted share. We shorted calls, so we had 500 shares. I sold five calls uh, at $18 or $15, and pretty much somebody paid me $400 to agree to sell my shares to them for $15. So just make sure you just you short a contract at a price higher, substantially higher than what you paid for the stock. McDonald's on the high. They had a nice upgrade in the morning. It's so weird. I feel like I see a lot of down names on the high here. I feel like it's like Johnson & Johnson and PG kind of keeping things down. Even Pfizer. Yeah, because the Dow is only... The Dow is the worst on the day right now. But Spy and NASDAQ have matched up on this. FBI searching Biden's home in Rehoboth, Delaware. Yeah, what do you mean? What do you, what do you know you're going to find? Nothing. What do you mean? Gotta search your home. What's, what's wrong with you? Come on. We got. We got to figure out a. We got to see the ceiling. We got to make a debt roof. Stop it. Come on. It's a bull waste of time. Mm. His second core. I listen, man. I'm not gonna lie, bro. Like that Corvette he got. That shit's fly. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it's easy. It's easy to, you know, call out the negatives. But nah, man, that like low key Biden got taste, man. Like I, I could uh, that Corvette go hard. You know, have you ever seen it, bro? That thing go hard. Uh, S&P PMI just came out 46.9 estimate 48, 6.8. So just in line, you might get a little dance there. But I don't think it's too much. I believe it's still in contraction. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's the first bounce on the PMI, so it's a bounce from the trend of last year. Mm. 
Liddy, everything Liddy, I love when it's hot. Boeing again, K Web again, Baidu again. Oh man, they're going, dude, Baidu is just squeezing. Apple's still at the bottom. Amazon's still at the bottom. Again, I think it's a lot of uh, middle names. Um, Google's selling off, and so is Meta now. Snapchat's probably going to sell off. Snap below $10 once again. Meta is starting to dump a little harder there. We're losing some of the game. I'm still up on the Google shares. AI's on the low. UNG rise. Uh, pretty much soft landing would make UNG rise. That's why we're we're going to see here. Depending on the Fed, today could be a potential day if you want to make an early decision to leave. Uh, but essentially, soft landing and, you know, the Fed kind of calming down and allowing, you know, room for inflation to go up or the economy better than expected uh, and not really having this drop in commodities and energy being caused by demand destruction. That's at least my take on it right now. Dude, is EA EA is still getting pummeled, man? EA, that's another two and a half on the day. WDC, WDC is trying to bounce here a little bit. Mm, I don't know how I feel about them. And then Spy's trying to work its way back up to the high. Forty sixty seven, forty seventy was where you were at on Friday, and then anything above forty seven again uh, really takes you to forty eighty. I would even ignore forty ninety four. I think forty eighty goes straight to forty one hundred. So we're going to find out. AMD's pumping right now. Meta, they're trying to bounce. Baidu, again, I top ticked again. I sold out too early. Baidu's killing it. All the China names keep moving. There you go. Amazon with the candle. Bob Boeing is still killing as well. Mm -mm, PG selling off. Tesla, I think Bob Baba's up even too, 2.8. Yeah, the Dow doesn't want to gamble for the Fed. SPY and NASDAQ are open to it. Mm. Yeah, waste management. That's earning. They're selling off. If that one keeps coming down, you might get an earnings flush. There's AMD. AMD at 80. Oh, I forgot even uh, Broadcom's coming up. We got work to do on that one. We got some of the chips. And then EA. I still in HKD, yeah. I think it's down like 30%, like 100, 200 bucks. Kept it small. Yeah, Intel's even doing really good too. That's why I wanted to short it. But I was like, I don't know. Everything just keeps getting eaten up. Intel's doing very good. So now you actually got a nice little uptrend there from that bounce until it changes. Apple on the low, though. Apple's starting to hit a new low as a lot of things are hitting highs here. Uber. Qualcomm. Qualcomm's up on the high, too. EA. EA just keeps dumping. Snap below 10. Yeah, he's fighting. But Meta, watch Meta and Google, and they're all kind of moving together. We still have some gains on the Google shares. Here's Amazonian. Capital One on the high. COF. Oh, it looked like a way bigger rally. And then DHR as well, too. U.S. stock rally falters as investors await Fed decision. How is this falter? This is not bad. This is not bad, Habibi. Again, watch it. The bonds. 10 years about to go negative again. Uh, Roblo, I don't know if they'll follow EA. Remember, Roblo already had its downside. You know, people were worried about the bookings that one time. But as long as they're not delaying Roblox, Star Wars. I just know, I think the Star Wars franchise was big. And then again, they, like, EA downgraded their, uh, damn it, Visa Pop. Uh, but EA downgraded their uh, their expectations by, like, a couple dollars a share uh, for next year. And then I think I think revenue came in, like, 20 30% lower. No, I sold out of the AMD play. NVIDIA is hitting a new high right now. BABA again. No, that's... Baidu hit above 152. 
Uber breaking out would be nice. Oh, 31 actually, yeah. That's why every time we keep looking at Uber, it's never above 31. I don't get hyped on it. But if you could run above 31 and hold it, that's actually golden. Mm. MO wants 47. I don't know. If, is that real? Oh, I just saw a big bond order. I don't know if that was actually there. Yeah, bro. What is what is MO? I don't know how. How do you feel about this MO move, Chad? I like it that it's going up. It's a big position, but I'm like, man, I really wanted it cheaper. I really wanted them high yields. I didn't even see how did they do. Nobody even believe it or an MO wasn't even up on any of our movers. Oh, they announced a billion dollar share buyback, and then they see full year guidance four nine eight to five one three. Consensus was five oh four. Uh, revenue was uh, six point one billion, uh, down two point three on the year, but the estimate was five point one billion. Damn, they killed it, and then adjusted EPS beat by one cent, and then the four. So they guided up and they killed it on revenue for the quarter, and they lowered capex on the year, and again they had the uh, uh, what's it called? They lowered their uh. There, they raised their buybacks. They actually did very good. Very good on very, very good guys. So it makes sense. Damn it. <laughs> so they did very good with that and a $1 billion buyback. One cent, Bob. One cent. Yeah, Baidu is nuts. 151 now. It's going 155. If it goes above there, it goes crazy. Meta, Spy, just edging up there. PDD, Baidu, a lot of China names going now. So now we're entering yesterday's high. You're three points away. It says 480 is the level. That's the one I really care about. But again, there's one more level above that, 4094, and then it goes from there. But I think 480, you're going to open up uh, 4100 ahead of Powell or not. Uber to 35. Powell willing, Habibi. Powell willing. Inshallah, Powell. You know, Inshallah, Powell is how that's today's say. You know, Inshallah, above all else, Habibi. But Inshallah, Powell, that is your new your new phrase today, because Habibi, it is up to the Powell man. You know, he worked very very hard. He is a very very good good guy. Inshallah, Powell, Habibi. Tesla took off. Boom. Yeah, that's a nice one. That's two dollars or a dollar on a candle. Damn. Intel's back up. Snap. Snap's fighting. It's either going to flush or just pop like Tesla. Mm -mm. AEMD. And Ultra is up four. I don't know. That one might be able to just slowly edge up. When's their X Divi? Damn it. Oh, you already missed it. 4075, you're going towards the 480. Airbnb above 110. Tesla, Tesla's new high right now. Yo, Tesla just went 1% in two minutes right there. Bro, it's 171 to 175. Two big candles in a row right now. NVIDIA's on the way up now. Couple things are... Yeah, Tesla's rocketing. Amazon's about to go up. Uh, Meta and Google still kind of behind here. Even Uber now, thirty-one twenty. Very, very unique, baby. I think even Broadcom starting to rip. So again, all the chip names are doing really good. You could thank AMD. Bro, even Intel's at twenty. It's higher than when I got my first short. WDC is about to slip, though, so watch out because all those chip names are getting a bid, but where were they last night? Uh, WDC could probably snag out a dollar if you really wanted. 
Again, bonds are right there at red on the day. Next levels are 4080, 4094, 4100. But I kind of doubt 4094, but we'll take it. But really, I think it's because at one point up until January 29th, it was just 4080 leading into 4100. And then the like levels, we need 200 likes. So if you hear my voice right now and you have a beautiful soul and you you know you don't have an ounce of hate, hatred in your bones right now, I, you, so you could have maybe an ounce. It's fine. But I just need you to like the video and say what's up, man. Good morning. Good morning. We sold out of Baidu, too. Uh, that was a nice 10 percenter. Uh, I sold out. I, I left like five more dollars on the table. Morning. What are the chances FOMC has been leaked? Uh, we get that every time. It's not. I mean, the statement, we're going to go. That's what I'm saying. If you could run me up, I only need like 50 more likes here. You know, if we get 50 more likes, you know, we could talk about the statement. And I'm going to bring it up here. But the statement is going to have one reaction. But there's no way to, you can't leak what Jerome Powell is going to say. Uh, because that's what we're going to have there. You know, Jerome Powell's comments will be the key. But uh, a part of today will be at the release. But even if it was leaked, it, it per se wouldn't matter. And I do have a theory for today of what I am expecting. Damn, but the ES is still down on the day. That's kind of crazy to think about. So right now, you're literally like you're back to where we were at yesterday. So you're actually you're in a pretty interesting spot. AMD. Caterpillar on the low. Remember, they had the bad earnings. They're coming down now. Even Deer. The Dow Jones ain't playing around with any of this. NASDAQ just went green. Uh, SPX is 0 0.07. But, dude, they don't, they don't want anything to do with it. All right, so I'm going to go over this more in depth. But since y'all have shown so much love and y'all have liked the video so efficiently this morning, uh, I'm going to tell you, here's the hack for today. There's two things that's, uh, again, the press conference is the big one. But right when the statement comes out, this I don't know the probability of this. A lot of people have brought it up and they're talking about it. But if you have been watching me with the Fed here lately, we brought this up last time. There's something very important. If they change the language in the statement, the phrase they see continuing or ongoing rate hikes, if they change that one little statement, I believe the market is going to run bullish off of it. So there's a couple of variations that they might change it to. They may say from ongoing or they may see small changes or they're going to say, ah, I forgot there's another there's another line there. But the idea would be just on the statement right at 2 p.m., not, not when Powell speaks, but the initial statement, if they change the language of ongoing rate hikes and they change it to any variation of, you know, slowing down, or, you know, being more gradual, they could change it to gradual. That could be another way to do it. But RPD halted for volatility. RPD explores possible sale, uh, Reuters. RPD rapids, they're halted there, possible sale. So, but that right there is going to be the key. So I, I have my, my theory here, and we'll go into this more in depth. Uh, don't worry. Uh, if you don't understand this now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, later in the day I'm gonna pull up the uh, uh, what's it called? I'm gonna pull up the the actual FOMC thing and we're gonna talk about it. But it's quite simple. I think we're gonna get the statement. I think the statement is gonna read bullish, and I think we're gonna pop on the statement. And then as the oh whoa 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 what just happened there? ISM jobs row. Oh my gosh, what the fuck? Bro, jobs just rose to 11 million. 11.0 million from 10.4. And then ISM manufacturing, 47.4. This is a, finally a reaction to the jobs. No, bro, that's a super hot. Dude, people were expecting uh, a 700,000 drop in jobs. This is That's the first, that's your first uh, miss between the data and what has came out, like the analyst and the data. So take a look. Oh, that's huge. That's very bearish. Or at least it means Powell has some... Look at, Bro, they were expecting jobs were going to be at 10 million. The job just came in. This is the highest the jobs have been in July. 
or or October of 2021. That's a that's that I wasn't even expecting that. That's a that's a big one. That's a that's a little bit of a flip. So I was gonna make today a little more difficult. Oh, RPD is unhalted. They're already up 16 percent. That's crazy. I don't know what it is. It don't matter. It just, this is uh, like, you know, again, it's one of those things. We always debate how delayed, how accurate the data is. But in general, that was just a fat miss. That was the first data set in a very long time, in this whole month, 30 days, 31 days, where we have seen the actual data come in very, very different than what was uh, the consensus. So that one wasn't there. Jobs report was that, I mean, it or just leads to more bearish Powell. But then again, I mean, like I was just saying, though, I'm, I'm expecting a bullish reaction right at the release. I think we're going to be bullish right when the FOMC statement comes out. And then I think Powell is going to beat it with a stick. Netflix tells advertisers sign up to ad tier doubled in January. Oh, that sounds like good news. Oh, wow. Netflix is running off of that. Mm. You know what time it is. Oh, come on. They're making me warm up. You know what time it is, bro. Why is everything lagging so much? Is that is that Netflix 20 share gang, bro? I grabbed 20 shares of Netflix, keeping it small. I like playing Netflix small. Uh, 355.64, not a recommendation. I like that news. Talk tip, Terry. Oh, yeah, I struck again. I did. It's okay. But that's why I keep it small. They already got me, 355.64. Damn, you're giving it up. I think that's a reaction to the jobs right there. Only 20 shares. Yeah, bro. Just got to keep it. 20 shares is not that much, believe it or not. Uh, especially as is compared to some other ones on shares. It's fine. It's fine. Meta's coming. Everything's flipping off that. Again, that jobs report was just surprising. That's the better way. You could call it whatever you want. There could be delays, this and that. yibbidi baba da boo You have Powell today. Fact of the matter is, this is your first reaction from the market getting surprised. That's it. You just came in well up a million jobs. That's every, that means the average estimate was uh was 10% off. Let me see if I could get you, uh, let me see what the highest estimate was. Yeah, bro. Not one est out of out of uh, seventeen estimates, not one person expected it to be high. That was like, dude, that's like, that's well above three standard deviations. That was a that was a statistical anomaly. That that is a major outlier. Mm, again, RPD. You had that one there. Buyout news. Boeing still on the high and Uber, bro. None of those are reacting. Oh, dude, they some names still don't give a shit right now. Mm. GBDC, what the hell's that? Globus Capital, they're up 2% running, big volume. GBDC, if you want some hype. Hasn't the decision been made as of yesterday? So it won't affect, well, yes and no. Remember, uh, it was even on yesterday's The List, you know, Powell even said they could change it all the way up until the meeting, but now that'll probably just be ammo for Powell to uh, talk the market down. That's at least what I would argue. And again, it's just, I think it's just surprising. That's all. Like, again, the last 31 days, 
you have every single data, macro data has just came in in line. So it hasn't even been like, you know, there wasn't, nobody was getting caught off guard. That one, that was surprising. And again, I remember even this morning we were going over it. There, there, RPD is exploring sale. I don't have any buyout numbers for it, but it got halted. I mean, we, we put it out, I even put a stream alert out for that one. Uh, I just don't know what's happening with it. Uber's running up. Yeah, but RPD exploring sale. AMD still running. Upstarts on the high. How can you check news as it comes out? I mean, I think your best bet uh, is being here. And if you ever hear something that's intriguing, you go and look it up yourself in that meantime. Because we do get it uh, quite quite fast. So it's uh, it's up to you. Otherwise, I, we got some videos on the main channel to learn. Memes there, bro. A little, little HBI moving here. But, like, the one that's what I'm saying, just to be efficient, though, like, straight up, if you see something in the chat, you hear something over over here, you know, you just, I would, I would just double check it. And that's the best way to verify, confirm. And by that, I'm pretty sure you'll be faster than even finding it in that sense. It's quite efficient. So Netflix is going. Spy is still coming down here, though. Again, Dow is already down, but Spy and NASDAQ are both there. Netflix is breaking out for that news now. Again, now it's just hitting there. Again, the Netflix says add to your signups doubled. Mele. Uranium on the low. Oh, Google's coming down. Bond's still low. So you're about to break down. Is this 4016? Yeah. You're about to hit 4060. The low of the day was like 4060 and a half. You're at 4061 right now. The news was the jobs report. That's just what really smashed everything. ISM prices paid went up too, but I genuinely think that jobs report just clappy. But ISM prices paid was a surpriser. Here was the jobs report. That was like a wicked jobs report, man. I'm telling you, but then even ISM prices paid bounced here and people thought it was going to go down here. Mm, value didn't get hit as hard. I think they were already down, but they didn't move as much. RPD again, buyout offer. You got that one early here too, but that one's already moving up. I didn't make a play on that one. Are financials green right now? I mean, the only thing green right now is healthcare. Tech is, believe it or not, trying to go green. Apple's at the low. Meta's trying to bounce. I got about $400 on the Redfin covered call. You could get a little bit more now. I think you could even you could go higher than what I sold it for, a higher strike price, and get the same amount. It's solid. But we pretty much got to we got 30% of our initial investment back. Or 20 something. So spy hitting a low, trying to come back up here. Again, 30, 60 or whatever is an interesting level. A lot of things bouncing. Redfin's even a Redfin and HBI. And is Uber still up? Dude, Uber is holding 31 finally. I ain't seen Uber hold 31 in a minute. Sprint or S is on the high. Netflix there again. Again, RPD. Buy a dude. Damn, maybe we should have played that one. I hope you guys benefit off of that. That one's going crazy. The buy do play I made two thousand. Yeah, yours. You say, what do you think by the end of the week? <laughs> I don't know, but I like the idea. You know, one fifty like we talk, very very good, Habibi. Yeah, Elmo's carrying a little bit today. Redfin two. 
Again, the covered calls, our net total on Redfin now is 150% because of the covered calls. Good for you, good for you. Get the little Uber playing along. Oh, yeah, we're almost break even on Uber, Uber now, too. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, there's Netflix now. Airbnb. RPD is going crazy. How much can they really sell for? So again, the market dropped there, but not everything went down with it. So even AMD is trying to make its way up again. It's just a lot of big tech and Apple ain't moving. And there's Netflix again on the high, 39.60. Am I the only one who doesn't believe the jobs report? Well, it just, it was decisively not what anybody expected. So I don't even know, but we'll find out. Either way, sadly, that's not the most important thing of the day. So he's still got Powell, and I mean, I wonder what Powell will say about it or if someone asks him a question. Uh, yeah, Snap, actually well above 10 now, kind of, 10.25. Decent. Meta's actually bouncing now, Google, Netflix. Come on, Amazon, play along. Oh, Peloton. Oh, yeah, Peloton shook off that. Dude, that's 7% right there. Mm. I'm at a high of the day. How do you feel about Gap? I think Gap is the scum of the earth. Same with Adidas. I'm actually glad. I think we sold out at a good price, too. You didn't see that answer coming, huh? I know. Welcome. Good morning. Like the video. I love you. Mm -hmm. VS. I need it. Where's Visa, man? I just want Visa to flush, but. I wait for that that uh credit card news. Meta's on the high, though. Again, Netflix as well. Damn, bro. I got four, but I should have went 100 shares on Netflix. Again, the 20 share strategy this month has done good. On no more than ever 20 shares this month. I think we've done at least like seven, 700, 800 bucks on Netflix. He's a dickhead. Small buy due at 153. Josh, gun to your head and you had to buy something for the LT today. If I had a gun to my head right now. I would do what they do in them TikTok videos because I watch them on how to defend yourself. And I'll put the seatbelt back. I'll grab the seatbelt. I'll put the chair back. I'll fly down and I would disarm them. And I'll make sure I unload the weapon. And then I would disassemble the Glock 17 right there. And then I would stare him in the eye. And then I would challenge him to a duel with my hands. And then I would start to throw diversification at him. And I would balance it out. You know what I'm saying? And I was sorry, I would hit him with patience. He was he would keep swinging at me, but I, I wouldn't hit him back. And I would wait till the right moment, mm -hmm. and then I'll kick him in the shins, and then I would run. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I would do if that situation was to occur. I think it makes a lot of sense. It's a great answer. Mm hmm. Remember, you do not have a gun to your head to buy anything. <laughs> Just don't ever forget. I'm telling you, I would wait till after Powell. I have a deposit today too, but, you know, it's kind of like a, it's like a short-term decision, you know, really, if you want to force an investment. Uh, again, if you have nothing out there, remember, if it's something you really like, you could always buy it and then average down into it. But, you know, if you really, if you're the type to really care about, performance and you want to see it do very good you know you want to be a little bit more patient rather than not uh, and that's definitely something I could I could say out here is that if uh you know it's just like right it it's easy to get the idea you're like okay I bought something you feel good it's a nice short-term decision you're like oh I got to buy something and you get it out there and you're like yeah even though I'm, I'm owning something it's long term but it's like you know make sure there's actually a logic behind it or at least this is what I would ask you like if if the stock is up now, like whatever company you want to buy, pick your favorite company right now. And if that shit is up 10, 15, 20 percent, 
I encourage you to a answer this question. Why do you want, what has changed between now and, and, and three months ago when it was 10, 20% cheaper? Is there a real reason as to why you are paying more money for it? That's what you have to ask yourself. And if you can't really justify that in a way that isn't just like, well, everybody else wants it, you know, uh, what, what I'll tell you is just uh, avoid being the greater fool is what it's called. This, this is the greater fool theory. So look it, look it up and, and you'll see it's just like you have to have a real tangible reason as to why you are going to justify your purchase, uh, especially because, again, when I make my purchases for the long term, I'm acting as if I cannot change my mind for 10 years. So with that being said, you got to you got to really kind of have a plan there. Like it's just like you got to think about a 10 year decision. So why why right now? Why here? Why now? If it's moved up a lot, what is like what is the reason to justify, you know, buying something? You know, usually you pay more for something. It's like, oh, I can't get it anywhere. It's not in stock. Maybe like so just give me a give me a solid reason as to what what you want right there. Reason is hype. Oh, damn, it already dropped. All right, I'm going to sell out of the Netflix. Never mind, my shit's too slow. All right, 80 bucks on that, like $4 a share just under. I don't want to be caught holding too much here. I'm hoping I could get some exits on some shit. Think about it. Take a second. And then AMD, the chips are still holding up good. I'm just, I would hope. If I get out of Broadcom and uh, Visa today, that's going to be pretty. Top tick Josh, definitely possible, sir. Definitely possible. Is that RPD still up? Mm. AMD still by do again. Now they're just slapping me in the face with that one. That TOS tutorial, it helped you reset the charts. Oh yeah. That changed my life, bro. I'm telling you, my TOS even then like now like in the morning, sometimes my TOS, I have to like warm it up like my old Honda. But, you know, it's for the most part, you make those small changes, you'll be good. I posted another, I think in the morning on the main channel, I posted another earnings thing as well. You got some good, I got some good TO, TOS, uh, TOS shorts. Many, many things you could do with it, my friend. TOS keeps you humble. I sold out of Netflix. All right, I don't want to wait for these. Oh, uh, well, actually, with my broader theory, I'll have time, but I want to just keep this simple. No, I'm going to wait. I want to just clear out a bunch of shit right before, but again, I'm expecting a pop on the release, so I guess I could be a little bit more patient. Bro, by do now, I thought I was like, oh, I only left a couple dollars off the table. That shit's almost up 10, 10 more dollars now. What is that, like 15%, 12%, 15%, yeah. Bro, Baidu is crazy now. The release is going to be at 2 p.m. Tesla came down a little bit. I do get a deposit today, or it may come in tomorrow, but I think it came in today. No, it hasn't hit yet. It should be coming in today or tomorrow.
Uh, Google's bouncing off the bottom. Snap is actually coming into the highs. Trip on the high. Yeah, Meta is just, Meta's been squeezing all day. No, I'm still in the Yang shares as well. By 2 p.m., it is. Market closes at 1. I mean, depends if, if you trade after hours and futures. 2 p.m. Eastern is the uh, is the release. Did I say Pacific? Eastern time. So it's like 11 a.m. my time. Uh, you're going to be getting uh, Young Pow Pow. Or you're going to be getting the release. And then 30 minutes later, uh, the press conference will begin. MasterCard's on the high. So we're going to see with Young Visa over there. Yeah, all the chip makers. AMD is still running up. Uh, I haven't checked WDC in a minute. You might have some. Even Intel went up. Peloton. Peloton, they pump. Bro, CEO was pumping it. He was just saying, we're going to have positive free cash flow. We are no longer going extinct. <gasps> no. No, it's real, bro. Chattadonia, oh, on Powell Day. How do you feel, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? You better get your ass up. Bradley Frizzle and the Peach is here. We waited for it. Oh, my gosh. Happy Powell Day. Happy February 1st. Like the video. Horna. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Stand up. Peach Nation, stand up right now. Are you kidding me? I'm up right now. I'm standing up. This is amazing. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Wow. You thought the jobs report was surprising? That caught me off guard. Oh, my gosh. Peach Nation. Wow. Okay. Okay. You can be seated. If you feel, feel free to continue the standing ovation. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. That's amazing. So oh, that's crazy. Spy coming down one more time. Hmm. Oh, man, I should have done it earlier. All right, I'm going to get out of it. I just want to clear. I'm going to clear out the Broadcom. I'm going to take a $120 loss on that. I held it for a while. It's down a lot more. That's why. But, again, pretty much I'll let a small Netflix trade balance out a bigger share position. So that's cool with me. But I'm out. I wanted some of those chips exposure, though. Visa's on the high. I mean, I bottom ticked it there for you. I hope I sell out in a rips if you hold so that you could get it because it was close to going green there. Yes, Tom Brady, Tom Brady is uh, is retired. Are you interested in shorting the market? I I have like a fucking NQ. <laughs> I, I am interested in shorting the market. Uh, I just, there's going to be timing. So I plan to drop off the ES. I might hold the ES till after the release. Because again, if, if my theory is right, uh, we get popped off of the statement. We've run up and then Powell comes in and then destroys everybody. So if I pull this off, it could end up being uh, extremely profitable. And then I have a couple of other plays, but then I'm making sure uh, I don't have too much. And then we're just going to start dancing around. Get the Baidu out the way. Still got the yen. How much time? We have 40 days on the yen. Got out of Broadcom with a loss, but make sure we uh, limited that one. So A net's down. I got that Dolby Digital. And then I need to get out of the Visa. AEL, GE, and then Google, and then Whirlpool. See, I just don't want all of these add up. Damn you, Broadcom. Stream alerts is working. You should be getting all of these today. We had a couple of early stream alerts on some big news there.
I'm up on the ES. Yeah, I'm up two thousand dollars on it. So that's why I'm like, if I get a huge pop on the release, if I can make like five G's off of that, get out. I'll be down twenty five, twenty six thousand on the Nasdaq, and then if Powell beats it down, if I whatever I make dollar for dollar, then we'll be uh we'll be golden. And then too, depending on what he says with the bonds, but the bonds are going to be at risk today uh, after Powell as well too. Was it AAL Whirlpool? That was the other one. Tim Rouse tweet. Uh uh, hot dog. I think we're going to go if, again. If they change the language, if they change the language on the uh, on the statement, it's going to be bullish. But it just all depends on Powell. But like like we said yesterday on the watch list, there's going to be a couple of things uh, that are there. So, yeah, Tim Rouse uh, commented on the jobs report. He said job openings rose to 11 million in December, sending the ratio of vacancies to unemployed to 1.92 from 1.74 and 1.81 a year ago. That's huge. That just that was the strongest job market <laughs> indicator in a while. Or at least it was way off from what people expected. But essentially, if Powell brings, if Powell addresses the odds of a soft landing, that's going to be extremely bullish. But if Powell doubles down on housing and core services being bad, or he uses today's jobs report, anything of that nature could be very bearish. Or in a weird way, if they don't change the language at all, that could be bearish as well too. But it, it really just depends on kind of his attitude more or less. Cause like last time he was pretty sanguine. I don't know if you if you like. I listened to it yesterday, uh, but like Powell was very uh, he was very nice last time. The last couple of meetings, Powell was kind of like giddy. He really wasn't a, as a, as aggressive at all. So in a weird way, you know, his tone and the in the choice of hawkish language uh, that could really really decide it. So bullish till Powell if is if they change the statement. If the statement doesn't change that's going to limit some of the bull after the release. But if they change the written statement and they change the, the literal all ongoing increases, if they change those three words and alter them in any way, it's going to be a fat bull candle. Uh, and then we're going to go from there. And then when once Powell talks, nine minutes, it'll take him nine to ten minutes uh, to go through pre-written statements and then give it another five minutes till the first couple candles and then then we'll we'll see which question sparks it off. But then again, if he brings up employment, he could bring up employment negatively. But if he discusses wages not going up, the market's going to love it. The pre-written statements will be released first, and that's why it's, that's why I'm saying if he changes the text, that'll move the market very positively, and then when he speaks, it'll do its own thing. But granted, if he doesn't change that text, the pre the statement shouldn't move us too much. The uh, only time we moved uh, huge on the statement was because there was the summary of economic projections. The employment was very bearish, and it was just a surprise too. I don't think any nobody again. It was it was multiple standard deviations above what anybody expected. Crude oil inventories rose four million barrels. That's a little less than expected. I thought it was going to be six million. Oh yeah, Humana's in melt up mode. Did they report this morning or did they do they have earnings tonight? <laughs> Excuse me. Meta is on the high now.
Why is there no employment news on CNBC? Because they hate you. Meta. Mavidia.com. There's Broadcom. Visa's coming back up. It's going easy. Some action at the 10 year. 4069. You're getting back to 470. Remember, this was the other day. 470 is literally right where we gapped down after Friday. This is where we began the week. It was a very, very big level. I know. Buy two is crazy. GG if you got that one, though. I'm glad. That was nice. It moves a lot. So to walk away with a nice profit, not too bad. Egypt cancels, cancels corn tender due to high offer prices. Crude stocks at highest level since July 21st. Amba's on the high. And then Spy's kind of working its way up here. We're kind of getting away from the uh, the thing. Uber tried. Don't give up 31. It needs 31, bro. That's a golden level for him. Tesla pop again. Yeah, right at the same level. Meta, man. He's going. Even Googly. Snaps holding 10 bucks. Oil moving. AMD and NVIDIA still. They're killing it. Revenge trade Rob is averaging down on 103 TLTs. I like that one. Revenge trade, Ron. Rob. Mm. Cardinal Health on the high. Oops, there it is. Eric, welcome, my friend. Yes, Intel is still climbing. All of them, man, all the chip makers. That's why it's like I wanted to hold the Broadcom. I probably should have there. I could have at least went positive. But, yeah, all the chip makers are just running. Again, even Intel. Intel's back above earnings. I shorted it at, like, 2830 or something. Yeah, the yen is doing very, very well here. That's what I was looking at. I want to, again, that's going to be very, very critical here uh, during today. Yen yen and bonds and dollar, just don't forget their importance. And, uh, you know, Powell might remind us of that. Good morning, Stack Trader. How you feeling, man? You feeling good? Even Snap, bro, I feel, you know, Snap could have been a lot worse. It was, it was, it was good. That was the smallest one. Mm -hmm. Qualcomm. I think with all these chip earnings, though, I mean, we should be able to get one. One bad one, but I'm gonna sh re I'm gonna average down at 150 on Qualcomm. Do it all day. They put you in work on power day. Giglet. Well, you need Meta to really miss if you want Google. I mean, again, today's uh, Meta, and that's it. You think the Fed will consider the jobs report? I do think they're aware of it, but I don't think it if it. It's not changing the Fed futures. I don't think they will adjust that fast. However, I think Powell will bring it up to uh, to hammer home a point, if that makes sense. So I don't think the jobs report would be enough to uh, change the Fed futures, even if the Fed was aware of it prior. But I think that the jobs report is going to come up during the speech or the questioning. AMD again. AMD. Yeah, Lebanon devalued their currency by 90%, I think, this morning. It's always a good sign. Are 
Where's even Pinterest? Pinterest dropped. Surprise. Amazon and Apple are the ones just pinned right now. That's the crazy part. Look at today. Apple has not done anything. AMD, 8%. Some Levna and Fool. Chile Bank sells 50 million in Forex swaps. Again, you're right at VWAP, man. We're actually quite calm here. It's only been an hour now so far, but dog, you staying pinned. You are just, I, I think the jitters are here. Volume's 12 million. Low volume. Oh, man. Oh, man. Like the video, Chad. Low volume on the day. So, again, I think here in like an hour or two, we're going to go over a lot more of the Powell stuff. But, damn, bro. That's crazy. 12 million. That means, and then watch, because today's going to be a 100 million volume day. So, that means all of that money be waiting there for Powell. Let me, can I, do I have any updates on the, uh, let me see if I could get you any of the uh, future positioning. I didn't save. I don't know if this is updated or not, but it looks like, again, more short covering today. This could be delayed. So we'll see. Yeah, all that pal money is getting ready, man. Neutral moves on low volume. We are going to see again. It just there's there's a little there's a couple of uncertainties. You know, just be careful not to make up your mind too soon. You know, like I have an idea and I have a theory, but just like last time too, uh, you know, like last I brought up them changing the language at the last meeting. They didn't. So we're really, really going to see here, you know, people might get surprised or disappointed and then we're, we're going to find out. But even like last meeting, a lot is up there. Microsoft to include chat GBT and in being in the coming weeks. Microsoft moving a little bit off of that. JP Morgan's Europe ETF sees record 3.6 billion flow in one month. Oh, man. Oh, wow. We're almost at 2,000 likes. Oh, let me see here. Hold on. I, w I would like 2,000 likes. That'd be great. But I got to let me check my uh, I, I got to check our inventory of what we have available for sale for you. Mm-mm-mm. Let me see what I got. Uh, I had one thing. I'm blanking on it, though. Asia looking green. Yeah, man, I, I really I don't I don't really have anything here today. All the inventory, I mean, unless you're interested in, like, China missing growth targets, which I doubt you, it's not It's not as exciting. Microsoft's popping off of that Bing news. Chat GBT Bing news again a couple minutes ago. Oh, y'all still like the video. I'll give you, don't worry, I'll give you a coupon. Then once we go, I'll give you a coupon for some free, some free, some free info. I got you, bro. Thank you. Thank you for liking it. I love you. God bless you. Spies here at the middle. Visa coming down. Microsoft up. Chips are still up there as well. And all right, I'm going to go to the bathroom real quick. Follow me on Instagram at the trading fraternity. I love you. Okay, you know that. I hope you're blessed. I hope you're ready for today. I hope you're ready today. Follow me on Instagram at the trading fraternity. Don't fall for the fake ones. Mine is the private one. You know, got to keep it private now. You know what I'm saying? I love you. All right, I'll be right back in March. And so he started with 25 base points in March a year ago, and that'll be 500 base points over the course of a year. And so it's all about Powell and Fed's credibility right now. I think you guys are spot on talking about this because the markets aren't listening to them. The forward curve is pricing in a 50 basis points easing by this fall. The markets are wrong. That's what we believe. The Fed will hold this line. So although they'll stop around five, maybe five and a quarter, our call's five, but that's all noise whether it's five or five and a quarter, 
The point is they're going to stay at five for an extended period of time, much longer than what markets expect yeah. because the market's expecting a pivot and there's no pivot coming, we believe. Bruce, is the Fed going to stay at that elevated rate because it's worried about its credibility or is the Fed going to stay at that elevated rate because it's worried about inflation? It's, it's both, but primarily because of inflation. And so here's the, here's the most interesting scenario. So let me give you two scenarios. Inflation stays, you know, it rolls over completely to two. Does the Fed ease? Not if the economy is still growing at a nice rate, and I believe the economy is still growing at a nice rate by year end, if it rolls to two. Now, that's not a base case that you roll to two. But that'll be a shock to the market if you roll to two and the Fed doesn't ease. Because if the Fed eases at two, it's just going to reignite inflation because the economy be too strong not to reignite inflation. But then if inflation rolls over to three to four percent, and we think that's where it's going to roll over to by year end and stay there for a bit, then there's no way the Fed is easing. So we think the market's got it wrong. That's why the market's so vulnerable. And you should use this January rally as a way to kind of reposition because when you have liquid markets on the way up, it's not, you don't have much liquid, liquidity on the way down. You should definitely be using this position to rebalance your portfolio. Hey Bruce, I, Bruce yes. what, when do you think the market's going to listen? Like you set up a scenario that the Fed is not going to do anything in terms of cuts Bruce, and why, what the but is going when is the on, market going to get? Huh. All right, here, I got one for you. I got one. Since y'all liked the video, y'all were amazing. I got one for you. Okay, ready? Historic bid for credit leaves spreads unsatiably low. Mm -hmm. Here, let me get you the picture here. I'll give you some uh, some feedback to work with here. Please hold. I gotta get all of my, my graphics ready for you. So here it is. This is the uh, market breadth of bonds. So literally... This is a historic low in terms of bond spread. So I don't know if you know what that means, but the rally in credit has been remarkable, leaving spreads on investment grades bonds tighter than when they were in March when the Fed started raising interest rates, further supporting the strength in the market. U.S. high-grade bond sales surged to a record on Tuesday and data going back to 2005. IG total spreads uh, totaled 4%, the best start to the year. Since 1975, junk bonds have also fared impressively, with returns increasing, uh, exceeding 3.8. Only three other times since 1994, spreads have tightened to 47 basis points, sitting well below levels seen in previous economic slowdowns, let alone recession. As the Fed nears the end of tightening later this year, the bid for investment grade made sense, particularly in earnings trade deteriorate as the economy is poised to slow, something that makes junk bonds less appealing. Nonetheless, the moves have been front run aggressively and have been confounding in the junk space. Uh, the Fed will likely have say things to say about the market's confidence about easier policy ahead. Credit is the one that will be riskier today. AKA bonds might move more than stocks today. Believe it or not. Bruce? Bruce? Gold should be, if they cut rates, uh, I don't know about 3K, but gold will have a nice rally. It may take it some time. I don't think it's a bad idea uh, for bonds. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. You're moving now. Hold up. No news on this one, but we are still dealing. Again, you're getting to the lows of the uh, the jobs data there. A lot of things are dropping now. See if big tech starts to go down. All you really need is the chips. If the chips start dropping, then there you go. Yeah, Microsoft had the pot. I mean, it makes sense on the chat GBT. I was thinking about it there. I guess now, because if you could use Bing and you don't have to, like, sign up for open AI and all of that, it could be quite interesting. Boeing, I think, is going to come down eventually, but right now it's looking like he's partnered up with Ronald McDonald's to beat be, be my face off. That sounds kind of weird, but, yeah, I'm, I'm just I'm traumatized. My dog's name is Bruce. What a human name for a dog. <laughs> my dog's name is Bruce. He files his taxes every year. Uh, he just got a job recently, and Bruce is also saving for his 401k. That's a human-ass dog you got there, sir. Bruce. <laughs> Bruce. What a name. My dog's name is Leonard. What is he, your butler? That's crazy. Your dog's name is Justin? That's a very human name. I've never met a dog named Justin. I feel like your dog has a Tinder profile or something. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, Rob
Rocky. That's a good dog name. Yeah, Rocky. That's like a dog name. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. You're like my dog's name, Bruce and Justin. Was it? Do they go and get beers? Like I, I'm sure they hang out. Cornelius. <laughs> mm hmm. You want to name your kids that? I'm gonna just name my kids something ridiculous so that they, so that they have to work hard in life. You know, I'm gonna name my kid like Ashwagandha or something. Ashwagandha. I'm gonna name him after just some random shit. I'm gonna name him like Chorizo. They're like, your dad names you Chorizo. Chorizo. I say, yeah, I'm a great breakfast alternative in the morning. You know, make him work hard. What it works, it works. He ain't gonna slip up. <laughs> Name him Huevos Rancheros. <laughs> if Ed stays aggressive, do you think stocks are overvalued? It depends how aggressive for how long. If they have the ability to, that's the problem here because. A lot of this is also in the future. You know, again, that's where it's like, bro, they're they're doing it. China and Hong Kong to scrap COVID testing and quota system for border. So you think that would be good news. That just hit a couple minutes ago or a couple seconds ago. But that's the problem is that people are going to factor in the future. Now we'll see if Jerome gives us any, you know, uh, what's it called? And, and if we get any... Uh, forward guidance out of him and then we're going to see if anything changed just remember last meeting that's one thing I picked up on after listening yesterday was that like he kept talking about being confident being confident being confident and he said we'll have to wait and see so the question is has their confidence changed I mean you've had a lot of reasons to be confident on the data front now that jobs report this morning that was not confidence inducing but you know, we'll see there, but there's a lot of, it's about what's happening now, but then a lot of people, the prices are based on the future. You know, it's if Powell is really going to actually stay there. And if the, even if the, the macro environment makes it possible for him to even stay there. Hmm. My dog's name is Drop Netflix. Bro, you've been in here all day against Netflix. How, how big is the short? What do you got? Just just let me know, man. What did Netflix do to you? Come here. Show me on the, on the next streaming service where he touched you. It's okay, bro. Just tell him what's the short, bro. Just let me know, man. That's crazy. I thought, I thought it was a funny joke. I was like, if you named your kid Netflix, that'd be funny. But then, like, I realized you were just trying to pump the short. But that's cool. I'm down with it, man. Like, I got you. Wait, what's up? I sold out of my Netflix. I made a quick flip, but I didn't think uh, that's it, man. It's okay. Another cheek lay there. Brand new low. 40.60 now. So new low of the day. Watch 40.58. But, I mean, technically speaking, you go all the way down to 40.49. No one's going to even panic. So you could drop a lot here. Uh, without any any real reaction, so it might just widen up the range for pow pow. Hmm. Whoa whoa whoa! Low ticker is going insane. Real estate stocks nail. Hold on, you're not seeing it on this spy, but the low ticker is moving fast. Yo, something's, something's hitting right now. I don't know if it'll be news more so than emotion, but you got some, bro, the low ticker just spazzed out there. A little Dumpington. So 40.58, literally, you already dropped like, what, five, six points here in the last minute or two, but the low ticker is getting pretty, pretty nuts there. PayPal flipped. Jobs data. This really does look like continuation from the jobs data. Again, prices paid 
on the ISM also went up. But other than that, we'll see. I don't think your Fed futures are moving, man. Let's see that jobs data. No, nah, Fed futures are solid, though. So that would be like the only anomaly if that actually moved it. But you haven't really got anything. 40, 50. Yeah, there, dude, the dump's getting bigger there again. I saw it on the on the on the what's it called? I saw it on the low ticker before the equities. A lot of things just took individual dumps right there. Even Apple now, Amazon, and the rest of the club. Netflix is still holding. Again, if those chip makers give up, that's gonna hurt a lot. Is it oil? I saw nail and real estate stocks also getting dumped on. Again, lowest on the day right now is energy, consumer discretionary materials, and then uh, real estate. Healthcare is the best, and tech is number two, believe it or not. Good glad. Where's Meta? Another low, bro. You're getting that dump. So low ticker started tweaking, and you're down about almost 10 points now on the SPX. In the last four minutes, that's a very, very large move. Like I said, you could go to like 40, 48 before anybody freaks out, but still 40, 58 to 40, 49. Yeah, give or take. But that's pretty big. You're down already a half a percent. The Dow's already down to 1%. And then again, volume is still very, very low. Even Boeing's finally giving up. McDonald's is selling off. They had to upgrade, though. TGTX on the high. Amazon's a little bit more steady than Apple. And again, chip makers are still solidly green, but we got to watch those come down. There's Young Visa finally dropping. All right, I closed out of Visa, $15 profit. That was just supposed to be a quick flip yesterday. I didn't want to. There's going to be credit card news, though, later today from the White House. Yeah, Young Visa, man, he's out. It's good. I was waiting for that one. He's got a couple more. I already closed Broadcom. No more Baidu's. No more Visas. It'll be... I need the Whirlpool. And if GE came down, that'd be nice. Jim Cramer said buy. Burry said sell. Everybody hates us. The White House, they announced, they said plans of it, but they didn't announce it, announce it, if that makes sense. So they said there's talks of it, but we're going to get the official breakdown of it all. So you got a little mini bounce there, though. This could continue quite the violent downtrend. That was almost 10 points there just under in about four minutes. A little bounce here. Again, you're near the highs of yesterday. You would really neutralize yesterday at like 40-44. Oh, dude, the bonds, the bonds actually held up too. Bonds are right at break even. And remember, they started off very, very big. Uh, talks about the, they're going to like lower the amount credit card companies can charge on late fees. All right, you're tipping over there a little bit. 40.53, watch what I haven't even opened up book map today. Let's take a gander. 
data was weird, bro. Again, I mean, I was I was fully expecting 10.3 million jobs. Or I was I thought it would be like 10.5 maybe. But dude, 11, dude, this is the highest jobs report in a long time. That means the job market is stronger than 2021 and 2022 based on uh, at least available vacancies and or how many jobs are available. You have almost, you are just under on average. Like, yeah, ADP dropped though too. That's why I was like, okay, boom. I thought the ADP, I was like, there you go. But it's, it's weird. Uh, but you have, you have 1.96 or something. You're, you're almost two jobs available for every individual uh, in the job market. See, that's the thing, though. Exactly. Very, very great contribution, Jay Alt, because that's what Powell brought up. Even if the jobs do good, well, not necessarily. The jobs don't piss off Powell as much as you think, because that's what he brought up on the last meeting. As long as the wages don't go up, he doesn't really care. That's the that's the caveat to all of this. So it's like if they could restrict the market a little bit and if they could accomplish their if inflation comes down, you don't necessarily need unemployment to skyrocket. He yeah, Powell is more concerned with the wages. Though they're not the day, the last set of data we've gotten the jobs wages haven't haven't gone up a lot. So in a weird way, the number is bad, but as long as wages don't rise, then Powell, he, he might not be as negative towards it. So, like, that's what I said. Uh, I think it was, um, I forgot which minute it came in. So, again, I hope you watch yesterday's watch list to be fully prepared. But, like, right here, this is where he started bringing it up. Or, no, it was this candle right here. So, when we started dancing on the last Fed meeting, and then you instantly started this 20-minute rally, that's that Goldilocks I was talking about. He didn't. Powell didn't say Goldilocks, but Powell pretty much acknowledged that as long as wages don't go up, yes, we want we you know we're expecting jobs and unemployment to come up, but as long as wages don't go up, they don't have a problem. That's it. So and wages have already increased a little bit, but not to the point where it's making you know the Fed shit bricks. Unit labor costs will be important, yeah. But again, it just depends what Powell says, though. Powell's going to kind of set the landscape today. Who is holding up Snap and why? I wish I could tell you, man, but I just, I don't think, I didn't think Snap was like that bad. And then we're going to find out here, too, with earnings. I mean, if Meta does bad, Snap will get another, you know, shot at the knees there again, too. But overall, I mean, Snap could have been a lot worse. I hate, I hate saying that, but. You know, it, tell me that's not the answer for everything this quarter. Uh, very simply, it's just, it's there, you know, and that's the best part. I mean, we are holding up Snap a little bit because now Snap's not a big part of our portfolio anymore. Like, you know, you lose some money on it, but it's not, it's not changing our, our performance substantially. So, you know, it's kind of, it's no longer a leader. So it's our, I mean, most of the damage has been done. But it's also just like everybody on all these earnings is just it's not as bad as feared. Tesla is flushing here a little bit. Yeah, 170 now. Google's coming down here. Hmm. Meta. Now, Meta's barely down, though. Snap is starting to dump, though. Google's even dropping from yesterday where we got it. I still have Proverbs. The jolts was super bearish, I would say. it was, And it was both the data itself and the fact that it surprised. That was your first real analyst miss in a while or expectational miss in a while. I would I would buy more snap if it went down to like six or seven dollars. I, I wouldn't, you know, again, if it assuming these earnings and that growth where pretty much if they could cut expensive expenses and still make a billion dollars, 
I'll buy Snapchat at five bucks, six bucks, seven dollars, anything really below. But it's not. It also depends on what is up, though. So, like, if Meta and all these other names come down, if Amazon comes down to eighty bucks and Snap is at six dollars, I'm gonna buy Amazon instead of Snap. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So it's just like that's really uh what 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 matters there. It's all about its relative value, uh, more or less. So Snap, I you know, again, it's it's just not. It's not as important as it once was. It's not as even important in our portfolio, uh, given the size of it. But it's just like it really depends where everything is at. Redfin's dropping. A lot of names are starting to come down now. HBI holding. Good guy. Good guy. Amazon started to slip there. Is it better to clap the market for future economy? I, I would argue it is, but also... It just kind of safer. Uh, you could limit damage because, like, let's let's say things are good, right? Let's say things actually got better, that the market rallies up another 10, 15 percent, and then something else bad happens. People will be very vulnerable in that sense. So it just it just depends. Uh, it's hard to say, but for the most part, I I do think Powell is doing a good job at biding his time. Because in a weird way, the longer you could keep this shit chugging along, I mean, the better. You know, it's like if you know your car is about to break down, if you could get as far as you can without, you know, blowing a gasket, I mean, you want to go as far as you can. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like running out of gas pretty much, like push it till it really turns empty. And I think Powell's doing a good job at that. But, you know, just hopefully people don't add too much weight in the vehicle. ETH is relatively stable today. Bonds are tweaking. The yen. The yen could be leading the bond market, though. That's the thing. If after the Fed meeting, bro, if, if after the Fed meeting, if it somehow creates a bullish reaction for the bonds there, they're going to rip. I'm definitely feeling that more. Not necessarily the rip, but the fact that the bonds are going to probably be, uh, they might move double the market today. I have a bunch of shorts on like random companies. I also have a couple of upside on value plays that are underperforming. Uh, I got the yen long, ES long, uh, very negative on an NQ short, and then bonds long. Stocks hurting. It depends on how Powell is, because uh, if Powell is bad, I'm going to give it some time. But if Powell is good, and you know, depending on what we see with the rates, I'm I'm leaning more tech, tech or upside. If Powell could kind of bless it and give the green light, you know. So just don't underestimate. You know, there's always good. Uh, my idea is go for quality all day, uh, but you know, we can't underestimate the impact uh, young Pow Pow is going to have over here. Look for the magenta dot. My thoughts on Kathy Wood. Uh, just, I mean, I've never, I was never a fan. I mean, it's cool that she prays and all. Uh, <laughs> that's like, that's, I don't know. Like, that's the part I like about her. But other than that, even in 2020, 2021, everybody was like, should I go buy ARC? I had people asking me to put ARC in a 401k and to put it into their IRAs. And I just said, that's not really a good idea. Uh, that's it. Does she? Yeah, she pray. Apparently, her and Billy Huang would have Bible meetings in the morning. I don't. I don't say that proudly, but you know. Th but then again, I've I've often been you know very aware of the hypocrisy. So you know, hence my my individual kind of different beliefs that I hold. Uh, but yeah, her and Billy Huang, the guy who blew up like fifty billion dollars.
<laughs> he said, you talking about Noah's Ark, Josh? <laughs> That's about you talking Noah's Ark, right? <laughs> That's a good one. Deepak, let's go, baby. One stock market live membership. Hey, man, Billy, I think he's living out in New Jersey now. He's living out in New Jersey now. He's living life. A JPM, why, whoa, whoa, why are banks going green? I don't see what you, you see what you mean. She's kind of uncertain. Well, here's the thing I'll tell you about Kathy. I, I think her general idea is there, but she just, there's too much shit. I think if you cherry pick Kathy's portfolio, you'll do good. I think you should go like, there's some, like there's some quote unquote disruptive names that she is invested in. And I think if you pick those out, You'll be great. Those are great additions for a small portion of your portfolio, but I wouldn't rely on all of those, and I wouldn't buy that many unprofitable names that are just, you know, hit or miss. Like, she's like a, a private equity investor, more or less. So, like, you know, just like a PE fund where they're trying to, you know, throw out 100 bets if one of them hits in a 1,000 Xs, you know, that's where they make their money on it. So, but I think if you if you cherry pick her portfolio... I, I think she has some good hits in there, but all of it as one and putting that much money and all that, I'm not I'm not a fan of that. I'm reading over the Fed thing right now. Wait for the low CAJ on the high. Did I hear a thousand X? Yeah. Like that's the that's what private equity is. Like when you go and try to invest in these tech companies. Like the general theory is that 90% of them, if not more, are going to fail. Yeah, that's it. You're just giving money away to these disruptive technologies. You're you're assuming they're going to lose. But the one that hits, you're going to get the sickest return of your life. That's why SoftBank is still around. Like SoftBank, again, like they just do with their money out. You know, SoftBank invests in hundreds and thousands of companies. They only got like 20 or so that have hit really, really big. But... The ones that hit have made billions of dollars. Oh, yeah, I'm thinking venture capital. Excuse me. Yeah, venture capital, not necessarily private equity. But there is some PE firms are, are like that. All right. I got the Fed statement up here too. I'm gonna we're gonna I guess we have what? We have two hours? Two hours fifty minutes still. Hershey's on the high. Oh, that recession proof stock. Why is Hershey's ripping like that? I don't see any news, but Hershey's is going up. That's a value name, surprisingly. I mean Dow's the one leading the way down. S P and Nasdaq are there. Tiger Cub Bible Club. <laughs> no news on banks, but they are running up here right now. I mean, financials are still down half a percent, but there's a couple banks like JPM was just just green. Is Buffett buy? I don't know. Hershey's doing very good. I guess they're kind of low, but they still got mad premium. Hershey's best recession stock.
AMD raised to buy a new street research price target 38. What? <laughs> Hold on. They raised their price target, but it's $38. Okay. Mondelez reported good numbers. $38. Yes, I read that right. OPEC decides to keep output levels unchanged. Iraq oil ministry. No, it says price target 38 implies a 53% decrease from last price. Yeah, but I mean, again, I've, that's that one's weird because usually the analysts just bandwagon the move. Yeah, I would buy it 38. People stuff their faces when chocolates when they're depressed. Well... That's part of it. It's like kind of like, you know, people will buy $1 chocolate. You know what I'm saying? But the real thing why Hershey's is such a great uh, recession company is because they actually return capital. So Hershey's is actually managed very, very well if you're an investor. They don't have like they still have stock based compensation, but like they're an old company. They don't dump on investors as much. They don't spend $400 million on R&D. They, have, they don't have research and development for candy. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, so a lot of the money either goes straight to dividends, uh, it's buybacks, but it's like you have a higher percentage chance of watching profits return to shareholders rather than not. Because that's the problem with stocks. You got to realize there's a lot of companies, they make a shit ton of money, even the companies that are shitty, they make money, but then they, they spend it or it doesn't go back to the shareholders uh, rather than not. So... That is the key. He said, I'll do R&D for them for free. Google it. Google it at the low. Meta's even coming back down. Snap, just hanging below 10 bucks. Netflixonian coming back up. Euro close. We got 15 more minutes till Euro close. Thomas Greenfield working with partners to provide food amid war. Watch Spider Man No Way Home. You recommend I haven't seen it. Actually, I think I see. I don't know. I don't know if I've seen it. A mid fury. <laughs> yeah, it's Kirsten Dunst in it. I feel you, bro. I feel you. Mm hmm. Kirsten Dunst back in the day, man. That was that was the best Spider Man. That's the one with all the Spider Mans. Yo, how many spiders did this dude bite? I thought. Hold on. I thought it was Peter Parker, and I thought with great power comes great responsibility. You mean he wasn't the only one who got that speech? That's, I feel cheated. I know, RIP Uncle Ben. Good guy, man. Good guy. I do not like Uber at this price, uh, just until we get the earnings. I only would buy it below in the lower ranges. I mean, I've bought it higher before, but that's when their earnings were a lot better. I mean, it's decent at 2020, but I'd wait. It's had a trouble. It has to get above $34, and 31 is the first test. We're about to go green on it, so... I mean, it's decent, but I'm not like, again, I'm, I'm very, very picky right now in the market, uh, especially moving forward. It just, my question is, what do you have to lose if you don't buy it? That's with anybody like, oh, you got, you got a gun to your head. You got to buy something today. You know, the real question is like, what do you have to lose if you pass up on something? And, you know, I, and, and like I said, you need a real reason to justify. I mean, we brought Uber in 2022 at 24 bucks. So. 
that was a nice average down and, you know, being patient with it. But I'm I'm very, very patient in this market and it's just it's not going to hurt us. And if you use patience and you get all it takes is one era of being patient, scooping up, you know, some nice one or two nice pickups and then that will balance out everything for you and, and you can't wait. But you have to really ask yourself what has changed to justify paying a higher price than just uh, a couple days or, or weeks ago. Uber, I, this earnings is supposed to be good for Uber. So that's, that's, a, that's why people are getting hyped on it. I mean, some people are saying profitability and all that. The meta pickup, it was a lot of them though. That, that's the beauty of it. We, that's all we did. You know, we started getting washed in the first half of the year. And I just said, there's no, I'm not going to fight it. I'm going to be very, very picky. We saved up our cash and, and, you know, we picked up like, dude, the average gain on our 2020, like go look at the long-term alerts. If you have them, it's free. The average gain was 55% in 2022 off like six, six or seven out of eight picks. That's insane. And that was just by getting washed in the beginning, waiting, letting the prices come down, stacking up the cash and buying. But that saved us in a way now where even if we drop another 10, 20 percent from now, we still have our cash and then we're just going to be building there. And if it runs, it's going to do its thing. So they they all did great. Again, even like Redfin, we are up 150 percent, 120 on equity covered calls has given us an additional 30 percent. You know, we got a dividend on a growth stock. HBI, Meta, Netflix is another 50% as well. And then even a little dividend at 20, we'll take it. And JPM 116, it's, it's beautiful. But that's that's all you got to do is just wait. That's why I'm like, I get it. It's moving up right now. You want to do something, but you, you really got to ask yourself, what has changed? You know, and why do you want to, like, what are you going to lose if you don't buy something right now versus what will you gain if you wait? So that's kind of the mentality. And it just depends on your balance. Like if you've never invested, I mean, you got to start somewhere, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, if you already have a decently mature portfolio, you've built up a little bit. It's like, you might as well, you know, be a little bit more strategic about it. Cognizant reports today. I like cash secure puts, but I, I like, I'm, I'm a bigger fan of my, my flexibility, uh, freedom. You see what I'm saying? So that's like whether it's covered calls, cash secured puts. I just I like the ability to be free, you know, and that's like that's what because I would have sold covered. I would have sold cash secured puts on Netflix and I wouldn't have gotten the, the price that I got on it or meta. I would have probably sold, you know, when meta first came down to 130, you know what I'm saying? I probably would have sold cash secure puts at like 100 or 110, made a couple bucks, but then I wouldn't have had the freedom to really like scoop it up and watch the situation play out and then really, really get it at a deep discount. So I like the freedom more than the yield. If anything, I'm, I'm, I'm more of a fan of selling covered calls than, than selling covered or cash secured puts. Uh, just cause like, even with Redfin, you know, we made 30% of our money on one covered call that that's phenomenal. And then even Snapchat, we've made most of our money back on that. We've made half of our current market value off of a covered call on it. So, and then you get to own the equity, you get to wait, you burn enough time, you could keep doing it over and over again. But it does require some patience. The FOMO is embedded deep. Well, that's why I tell you the best way to get rid of FOMO is have your balance and making sure you actually get little exposure, but do it at the right time. But that's the whole point. Like that's it. FOMO is very controllable when you have the long term in the background. It's very controllable when all you if you make just one good purchase that you're, you're not going to feel like you're missing out as much, but you definitely, you know, the biggest mistake people have is they sell when it's low and they buy when it's high. That's, that's it. It's just the age old, age old stock market shit, you know, sounds easy. Right. But that, that is the real question. Mm. 
Mm-mm. FOMO. I think FOMO strikes in many ways. I don't think anybody is above FOMO. They just it's natural. Like that's it. It's just natural to think something is good when it's doing good, and it's natural to think something is bad if the price is going down. And un- un- unfortunately, unless you're shopping for clothes, <laughs> that's the that's the ironic part, right? You see a jacket, you're like, oh wow, four hundred dollars for a jacket. Oh no, but if you see a sticker that says seventy five percent off, and the jacket's going for twenty five dollars or ninety percent off, whatever, and you're like, wow, that's a good deal. So it's like that's. That's the the irony of all of it. Yes, the hot hand fallacy, more or less. I FOMO here and there. I mean, where do you think top tick Josh comes from? That's a little bit of FOMO naturally, but uh, in general, you know, I I don't. Again, I don't think I'm immune to it. I I don't act like I'm immune to it because that's that's where you usually falter. longer you're in the game the more you realize what's cheap and what's overpriced and the longer you plan to be in the game you know it'll come down eventually that's the irony of all of it it's just like i always you know eventually you know meta was going to come down but you know you'll be able to get it at a certain price but it may take one month it may take five years that that's all it comes down to These moves, man. We have we have a lot to digest today. You have low volume, Powell ahead. You got a shocking jobs report, and you have chip makers up, Snapchat down. We we got a lot we're dealing with. Even chips already came back up here. You buy back any stocks? No, since they all went up. That's why I'm like I'm not gonna take the tax loss and then buy back in at a higher price and then if it comes back down it'll it'll kind of erase any benefit it sucks because if it keeps shooting up i'll miss out but i'm not gonna uh, it just doesn't it doesn't seem logical to me uh it seems at that point like i'm like why would i like why would i do that frugal invest as unite i i shared it with you guys the other day it's very very good someone tagged me on it couple weeks ago I, I love it this is a uh, it's uh where was it oh there was a simple one someone tagged me on it let me see if I can find it there it is shout out be like Mike he tweeted me this how can you be sure you are not the greater fool? Number one, do not blindly follow the herd paying higher and higher prices for something without any good reason. Two, do your research and follow a plan. I think a lot of people underestimate this one because a plan goes a very, very long way. A very, very, very long way. Like part of it. Three, adopt a long-term strategy for investments to avoid bubbles. And four, diversify your portfolio. I love this one. Which is very, very simple. You have a plan. You have a longer-term strategy. The up You get to benefit off of bubbles. And then you don't break your plan to chase it. And you diversify. You get a little bit of everything. When one does good, some will do bad. When the others do bad, some will do good. And that's it. Just logged in. Shout out by dude. GG, baby. GG. But I even like the first one just without you could buy stuff. You could chase it on the high, but like you need a good reason. You can't just do it because that's the price just went up. But like I said, you know, nature is is hard when it's all said and done. But, you know, I think get a little bit, have a plan. If you can make up your plan today that you will promise yourself you will follow through to the end of the year, go buy whatever you want. You know what I'm saying? But like you need a plan of a plan to purchase, a plan to deposit a plan of the names you want and follow through with it. Cause that no matter what, if you have a plan, that's what I was saying. You got to start somewhere, but let's say you have a plan. Even if you want to buy anything now, even if it's up 10, 20% on the last month, fact of the matter is if you have a plan to be purchasing it or whatever, you're going to be, you, you've got to follow through with it. 
and then that could help balance it out there too. And then along the way, you know, you will, you can just average into it. But then again, I mean, what is the point of making, you have to have a reason for your purchase. And, you know, the thing I add for the long term is just simply, you know, what act as if you can't change your mind for 10 years. Have you really thought about that? Because that should make you make different decisions. If I told you every decision in your life, you couldn't change your mind for 10 years. So whatever video game console you pick, whatever car you drive, whatever, I, I, anything, man. I'm Again, this is, it's, it's kind of more relatable to marriage, more or less. But maybe, maybe that's why people get divorced a lot. Who knows? But that's a question you got to ask yourself. Like a softy and yalla on the high. AMD still doing it. Wallahi, true. Shkora Kabibi. Yalla. Yalla. Meta is pricing in 10%, which I believe is about $14. And then Google is pricing in 5%. And then Meta is today, Apple, Amazon, Google, all tomorrow. These silly swings else. This is slowly working its way down. Unless it bounces from here, you neutralize the move around 405.78, but... Until if it comes down again, I think it's just, and today's very, very low volume. Ah, I got an Amazon preview. Would you guys like an Amazon preview? Can I interest you in, in into an Amazon preview? I would love to, to have a preview for you. You guys are did, did amazing on the likes. You know, if, if, if we got like, can I just get like 50 likes, 20? I'll do it for 10, bro. You know what I'm saying? Inflation out there. I feel I'll do it for 10 likes, bro. I ain't even that expensive like that. You got 10 likes left, man. Hit that like button. I would love to give you an Amazon earnings preview right now. Oh, yeah. I think I don't know if we went over the Facebook one already. You got 10 likes, man. You got 10 likes on, on, the, on the table. Just throw it up on the table, man. That'll get you a nice, nice set of info right now. And we're glad you're here. Make sure you're subscribed, too. Otherwise, it won't let you chat because we get harassed on the daily. But we still love you. I'm not being bougie today. Yeah, not being. I just, I just want ten, man. Okay, look, we got. Wow, I got more than ten. I appreciate it. Thank you. Wow, thank you. You didn't need to tip me like that. Thank you. I pre Wow, you guys. Wow, we. Lo it looks like we have a very joyful bunch today. Wow, that's amazing. Very generous bunch over here. I, I appreciate it. So, uh, where is it? Oh wait, that's serious. I click serious instead of Amazon. Who cares about serious? Maybe it's serious. All righty. So for Amazon, they report tomorrow net sales expected to be 145 billion, online store sales 65 billion, physical stores 4.9, third party services net 32 billion, and then AWS 21 billion and subscriptions 9 billion. Uh first quarter operating income 3.5 billion, net sales estimate 125 billion. Dude, that's these are crazy numbers. Uh <laughs> So uh, they have 55 buy targets, three holds, and one sells. Uh, they're clouded by AWS, and online gains are set to improve. Average price target is $134.70, 32% upside from the current price. Implied one-day move following earnings is 8.6%. Gap EPS has beaten in seven of the last 12 quarters, and shares are down 32.7% in the last year versus the SPX, which is down 10.6. So here's the mini breakdown. Amazon's fourth quarter sales may rise just 6% as slowing AWS gains from lower enterprise demand offsets better online advertising and prime video sales. 
The Tech Giants 2023 view could be marred by weaker AWS given Microsoft's results, but we expect online to return to growth on an easier year-over-year -year comparison. AWS constant currency sales in fourth quarter might slow to about 24%. Initial 2023 trends would include cloud sales tracking below 20%. Missing consensus, uh, we'll be watching for Amazon's cost-saving efforts in the face of inflation after missing their goal of shaving $1.5 billion in the prior quarter as well as demand during peak holiday. Amazon's operating margin may remain under pressure until cloud momentum reaccelerates, pressuring overall earnings given their high contribution to overall profitability. Fourth quarter sales may rise 6% based on consensus in line with guidance for a 2 to 8% gain. Third party services up 7 and online sales could fall 1.7. AWS might post 22.6% increase with operating margin falling 390 basis points to 25.9. Retail subscriptions could advance 10% and advertising revenue 17%. Holiday discounts and elevated costs may limit retail margin expansion and consensus fourth quarter EPS is 17 cents. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. So there you go. There's your Amazonian. Uh, I need to get you the Google one too. Mm -mm -mm. We'll go over the Google one. Oh, I got a Google one. You know, since I've been I've been charging them cheap here, even though you tip me, uh, it's company policy. I have to charge for these. Uh, but if you got if you got ten more likes, you know, if we we got ten lone likers out there, I could give you the Google report as well. The one we just covered was Amazon, which is tomorrow. Uh, Meta is today. I think we already went over Meta, uh, but we could do it again. If anything, so if you got ten more, just sit in there. You know, ten ten likes. You know, again, it's company policy. Even though your generous tips there, uh, it was always accepted. So. So we appreciate your guys' business here at the Stock Market Live. Thank you for participating. I hope you're ready for Jerome Powell. We're going to have all of that ready for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, get it moving. They're getting it moving there. I, I really appreciate it. It's good. It's very, very good. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, we got it. We got it just like that. FedEx. I saw it on the high ticker. I didn't click on it, though. Oh, yeah. FedEx going crazy. FedEx eliminating number of positions across across global enterprises. They're reducing size of officer and director team by more than 10%. That's pretty big. And then remember, you're coming off of UPS uh, earnings. Mm hmm. That's good. Again, it's already kind of went up 1% and you're coming off of the, the earnings there. Again, they don't report till March. So keep that in mind. FedEx has already had earnings. You're just feeding off of UPS there. Let's see. I don't know the total size. Some segments look to be 10%. So they're cutting jobs by more than 10%. Sumerian staff cuts in employee memo, eliminating number of positions. They said it was necessary to look closer at the size of their leadership team and functions that could be. Mm, this is already up a lot. Yeah, another set of news is hitting on it. Mm. Damn it, I'm gonna try to do it quick. Top tick, Josh, back in full effect. All right, did 20, 25 shares, 197.12. So we'll take a little bit. I just don't like the premium, 197.12. Not a recommendation. You will lose money, my friends. I'm going to try to quick flip it. I don't want to hold too much. Yeah, it's hitting a couple other places. Again, 10% is huge for a company like FedEx. That's why I'm hoping it has a little bit more juice, but we did miss out three bucks right there. Uh, FedEx, FDX. Suskiana raises uh, UPS's price target. Mm-hmm. 
okay are for the long term all right uh so here's google's uh we have google's um earnings there you go fetty uh, Google advertising revenue is expected to be 60 billion. YouTube ads, 8.2. Other revenue, 8.1. Services, 68.9. Google Cloud, 7 billion. Other bets, 207 million. Uh, EPS estimate is 1.2. Operating, inco uh, operating income estimate, 18.58 uh, billion. And then uh, Alphabet operating profit views remain challenged. 46 buy targets on Google four holds and zero sells average price target 123.92 26 percent upside from current price implied one day move is 6.3 percent uh, gap eps has beaten on google nine of the last 12 quarters shares are down 28 percent in the past year versus spx which is down 10.6 and here is the breakdown alphabet's ad pricing Likely held up better than digital ad rivals, but operating profit may remain pressured amid decelerating top line growth. Cloud segment profitability could reach an inflection point in 2023 with the company likely to show improved cost discipline. YouTube sales gains may improve with new exclusive rights to live sports, including the recent addition of NFL Sunday ticket package. An uptick in YouTube premium and TV subscribers could top expectations in Google's other segment. And even as growth may decline to low single digits in YouTube's ad segment, uh, consensus may come down for Alphabet's core search ad business in first half. Uh, the company may reduce capital spending intensity to about the mid to high single digits from 12 to 15 percent the past three years to bolster free cash flow. Core ad business deceleration could pressure operating margin. YouTube sales may grow with NFL Sunday ticket. Cloud segment could reach inflection point and then capital spending intensity may decrease boister to free cash flow. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, God bless you, Grizzly. Thank you, my friend. Thank you for staying with the coat for so long. I hope you're ready. I hope you save 10%. I hope you got the long term, man. Let's make the most of it. Rumble. I mean, Rumble's still early on, but I don't know, man. Rumble Rumble updated their user interface, man. That's huge. <laughs> it no longer looks like I want a free iPhone. I said I was very impressed by that. I said, wow, good for you. Good for you, Rumble. So I still say, you know, Rumble, it's always something I'm just, you know, it's interesting, keep it in line, but I'm not ready for it yet. Oh, it's not too bad. Not too bad. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about, man. It used to look like you were about to win a free iPhone. They like click here. I'm like, what? This is very sketchy. I don't so it looked pretty now. Who's winning the Super Bowl? Word on the street, it's the Eagles. I'm not even an Eagles fan, but I think it's gonna be the Eagles based on some time traveler. It's a long story. Rum is where it at. I, I think it has potential, but I've just, we should definitely learn from the last couple of years. You don't want to invest in these companies too early until they prove themselves. And if, even if there's a lot of hype behind it and everything else, you know, you just got to you, you just got to be wise about it. You can put a little bit in, but it's just like, remember, it's your money. So I think they're definitely a compelling concept and I see the value. But like I said, it, it just I think it still has a long way to go to confirm that it's going to have that upside and safety that that really you want in an investment. I love FedEx. This is the high of the week for FedEx. Actually, FedEx hasn't been here in a while, huh? Maybe. Can Rumble still go under? Any yeah, I mean, any new company. I mean, that's. I mean, at the at this point, you're paying to fund Rumble. Like I'm saying, I, I really think it's a. You know, I think it's a compelling company with with definite, you know an advantage that people would want to go there and you already have a lot of adoption, but it's still just too early. Like I'm just not ready to win. I like the company. I don't like the investment. 
if that makes sense. It's just still too early. And again, I mean, I've I've already seen way too many. You know, think about how many things we thought. You know, just don't pull a Mark Zuckerberg is what I'm trying to tell you. Don't throw your money into an idea until it proves itself. That's that's all it's going to come down to. I'd rather buy Rumble at fifty dollars after confirmation than six dollars with no confirmation. That's that's the way I look at it. TikTok test cutting backlog library to limit sound library in Australia. Spotify popping off of that. TikTok is limiting libraries overseas. Australia there again. And then Spotify is coming off good earnings. Would you stream on Rumble if I didn't have any uh, any other choice to? Library. Yeah, bro, it's a library. It's great for farming. It's good for you. Make sure you get your vegetables in libraries. Does Rumble pay? I don't know. I don't know. I just, the only benefit of Rumble is that you could just say whatever you want and not get, you know, there. Whereas, like, YouTube, you have a lot of constraints. And then, you know, just other stuff with algorithms and all of that. So there's a reason for Rumble to be around, but... And I'm surprised they got their own web hosting and they've they've survived as long as they have, but there's just there's a lot to it. Mm. But YouTube, the only thing is, is just like you, TikTok proved something in the last couple of years. TikTok proved that legacy social media can actually be threatened. That's it. But again, it's going to be a long journey. And I mean, just don't forget, bro, Google and Apple and like Meta, bro, it's that's your damn government. <laughs> like it's not like they got they got real cozy relationships there. So they're going to be around for a minute. But TikTok definitely showed uh, it ain't safe. It ain't safe. Carvana, maybe. I think some people might want to just buy Carvana, but they, they have a lot of debt. Again, Spotify's up on the TikTok news. FedEx job cut still holding up. Got a slight gain on it. And then Spy might come down here. Twitter will buy Rumble? No. I think Elon will just make Rumble Twitter in the sense of all he has to do is just make a video side and then not ban people. I mean, you see what Elon posts. So that actually Twitter is a threat to Rumble, believe it or not. Rivian cutting workforce by 6%. Rivian, Bob, no. Rivian's down a lot, 4.9. Again, 40.65, right below the 40.70, man. That's crazy. We stayed here all day. What time is it? You are, oh, yeah, we're past Euro close, too. Dude, 21, bro, volume is nothing. They're waiting for Powell. What time is Jerome? Is that number three? Uh, Powell's 2.30 Eastern. Uh, statement comes out at 2. Is it too early? We have two, we have what? Two hours, 15 minutes till the release. Yeah, Rivian cutting workforce by six, not including hourly jobs. Boston Scientific Coronary Stents Infringed Patent. BTX Patent Infringement. Or wait, was it BSX? Yo, watch Boston Scientific. Again, they're coming off earnings. They said that there's coronary, coronary stents infringed patent. Jury says. Mm. 
Rivian has not reduced prices. I don't think so. Actually, they did a couple months ago. Remember after they raised it, but then people got mad. DR, dude, another real estate dump here. Or no, that's Darden. I thought it was DHI. Like that's weird. Wolf on the high. Oil selling quick. Yeah, XOM gutter and right now. Ox oil is dumping right here. Good call on that. Good RX doesn't agree with FTC's allegation. Apparently, there's a problem with them. Supply coming down a little bit. Dude, chipmakers still holding. FedEx is coming up here now. Airbus Qatar Airways reach agreement on paint dispute. The Fed will not raise by 50. If they do, you'll the stock market will be down 7%. <laughs> I I think you'll get a circuit breaker if they go by 50. I think but if you're I think 50 is just the talking point right now. Uh if you want to like if you want to feel dramatic, but there's there's no way. I I guess I'm just going off of Fed futures and and the history of it. They could do 50 at the next meeting. That's something I think where Powell gets bearish is that if Powell uh if Powell doesn't say if he kind of leaves the door open for 50 at the next meeting, I think that will uh will will scare some people. Airbus mutually agreeable settlement with Qatar. They says they'll repair project underway for A350s. Uh oh, Bowen, no reaction. Today is a announcement and press conference. Today's the day. Today is the big one. This is the this pro I don't want to say it's the biggest one, but it's the first one of the year. And, you know, honestly, I think March is going to be the biggest Fed meeting of the year because that will include summary of economic projections. But this is going to be important uh, just for the, I guess, the health of the rally and really the rest of the trajectory uh, moving into March and the, and the end of the first quarter. But I'd say March is probably going to be the most important Fed meeting uh, this year, um, March and June. But this one is definitely uh, this is a it's a powder keg here. You know, bonds can move a lot. There's a lot of expectations. You're you're going to get your your 25 basis point rate hike, you know, uh, which is remember, 25 is this is a normal rate hike for the last year. You've borderline had uh, outsized rate hikes, 50 basis points, 75, all of that. So this will be the first quarter rate hike, I would argue, in a year. I think I think this is the first 25 basis points. This is another step down. And now, you know, a lot of some the the you know, here's the real thing, because some people are talking about 50 basis points, you know, get 50 basis points out of your mind for today. But if you believe like the next thing to keep in mind, like the crazy thing that people are thinking of today is that this could be the final rate hike. So Goldman has talked about it, a couple of other analysts and banks. So that's kind of the more important part about today. Uh, if there's any signals that this could be the last rate hike, people are going to eat that up. So until then, we're going to see. But this is our, our first quarter. I mean, we already know a quarter is going to happen. That's why I'm telling you it's already priced in. Most people are expecting it. So it's really there's a couple of things I'm going to show you. We've already talked about it. There's a couple of things that could change that will be important uh, that could really make us bullish or bearish. But at the end of the day, it's it's what Powell is going to be saying. The final rate hike. Yeah, that's what's that's that's the like that's the edgy comment here. That's like the contrarian move, right? If you want to be a contrarian and borderline bullish right now, you're you're saying this is the final rate hike. Final rate hike brought to you by Carl's Jr. The anomaly is if he doesn't do anything today. I think he has to raise rates by a quarter, but if he doesn't change his uh, speech at all, or or again they they might not even ch again. This is what I brought up last time, and I, I it could it could occur. He may not change the speech, or they may not he may not change the the written text. Yeah, and just says we're gonna do a quarter, and then he pretty much answers exactly the same. I did. Fed futures are still pricing in the same, I believe.
They're still pricing in 99% uh, for today. At least that's what ZQ, yeah, you're at, there's a 0.3% chance they do 50 basis points. And that's probably just the remaining hedges that, that are on the board right now. I don't I I think there's virtually no possible ability he does 50 basis points. Again, if he does, I mean, is it possible? Yes. Is it probable? Not at all. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's possible I could make it to the NBA. You know what I'm saying? I got a wicked jump shot. I know the fundamentals. I'm I'm all about defensive slides, you know? It's possible I could make it to the NBA. You know, I, I'm, a, I'm a very positive individual. I might be five foot six and I may be old with a receding hairline, but shit, LeBron did it. But it's possible. But how probable is that? It's it's virtually not probable at all. It's possible, but it's it's not probable. You know, maybe if I teamed up with Airbud, you know what I'm saying? So there, but that's that's how 50 basis points can happen. If Powell really just wants to beat everybody with a stick and says, fuck this, man. This is not how financial conditions should be. And he comes out and he breaks 60 years of Fed history, then yeah, it's that's, but I doubt it. I, I don't think this would be the moment to do it. So we're coming back down here. Young Fetty is still holding. Young Fetty swap. But uh, I, can I get 20 more likes? We're almost at 2,600. Adani said to near decision to withdraw share sale. Share sale. So here's the deal. 20 more likes. Let's be, let me just, I'm going to get to the Fed a little bit. This is the mini part of the homework. I already told you it in words, uh, but now I have it for you in writing. And it, I think it, it bodes well with uh, this conversation that we have been having. So I'm I'm just like 20 likes short if y'all can run it up there. Uh, and again, uh, pretty much it's about two hours until this occurs. So uh, believe it or not, we're, we're actually closer to the event than you would think. And again, you just got a Donnie News there out of, uh, out of what's it called? Out of India. So run up those likes. I appreciate. Oh, wow. You already did it. Dang, you're already there. You guys. Wow. Thank you again. Thank you for thank you for that. I love you. So here it is. This is going to be the statement. So this is what happened last time. And I, I brought this up last meeting. This was something I said instantly. I'm telling you, this is what will make it be bullish. It's this line right here. So the line that says the committee anticipates that ongoing increases in the target range will be appropriate to maintain the stance of monetary policy. If this line changes, that is going to be immediately read as bullish. So here's something they could change it to. The committee anticipates gradual increases in the target range moving forward. That right there, that wording, that language, the, the algos are going to read that as bullish because that right there is saying Powell is going to begin to slow the rate hikes. That means they are confident enough and they have some confidence to change the language. No, that change is not priced in. Not at all because Powell could uphold a lot of flexibility. This is where we're saying if Powell wants to do nothing, just lower it to a quarter and still kind of keep the market guessing and not be boxed into a corner, they're going to keep this the same. Because realistically, some people were thinking he was going to change that at the last meeting and he didn't. But that is the real, that's the money, that's the money shot on this one right here. If that hits, you're, it's going to rip. It is going to rip until Powell brings it down. So that is really what you want to be looking at here is that just the committee anticipates ongoing increases. Any changes to that, it's going to be great uh, for the market or the bulls out there. Uh, if not, that would actually, in a weird way, I would argue it's going to be kind of bearish just because it's going to kind of highlight that Powell is most likely going to be, be saying stuff there. Now, if they say anything about being confident, I want to see what he says about uh, unemployment, and we're going to see what he says about elevated risks and all of that. But that's really going to be the the main change that, that we're going to be looking at. Everything else should be the same, but that right there will be a simple release comes out if your you, your money on that one. They're still going to pester him, but uh, right off the bat, though, if, if they say, if they change ongoing rate increases to gradual rate hikes, 
uh, that will it would definitely be a, a big big change. Total energy. Mm. So no changes bearish until conference. I in a weird way I would I would say it's more bearish than not a little bit. I would just say neutral, but then you got to factor in the bullish factor will be 25 basis points. So if we're going to get that, it's already priced in. How are people going to take it? But it's it's going to be weird if he doesn't change it. I definitely think if he doesn't change it, it's going to ca cause a little bit more hesitancy. Whereas if he changes it, it's going to be a green light. But then I think it's so that's my plan. My plan is bullish statement. Let it rip up and then sell out as we get into the press conference on my ES and then hold the NQ, but then I'll be naked. I, I might I might hesitate. I do have a backup plan of just holding until he starts talking because if I go too I, in a weird way, I feel like going too early, Might I might be penalized. Whereas if I wait, worst case scenario, I just lose out on some gains of the ES, but then I'm, I'm going to make bank if it goes down or I'll get my money back, uh, and then I could easily navigate out of any upside. He is going to he addressed eased financial conditions last time. So last time at the meeting, that was the question. Uh, but then it, it turned into soft landing. That's what you got to be careful of. So that's where it gets bullish because he's going to say something about financial. This was Michael McKee on Bloomberg last time. Right in here. This was the rally. So if you guys don't know what happened, this was the statement. But what we didn't we're not going to move this big unless the statement changes. That's what you got to realize about today is that this is a. Uh, you know, this right here was because of the summary of economic projections. And remember what happened last time, the Fed surprisingly raised their terminal rate as well as guiding the GDP lower. So that you're not going to get this move off of the off of the release unless the statement does change. But then you dropped when it started as, again, any employ, uh, employment being strong metrics, you got a red candle on any of those on the last meeting and then anytime he said it was welcome, a welcome inflation, he was good. And then he would say, but we're not ready to move until we're confident. But now right here was Michael McKee of Bloomberg. And what he brought up was this question. He said, listen, I, he said, I know you see the financial conditions. Is this what you wanted with easing financial conditions? And he pretty much said he, the way he was talking about it was just like it, it turned into a question about a soft landing. He said they're aware of it, and he says the markets are pricing in ahead, and he's going to avoid that question. Unless, and, and But if he doesn't avoid it, that's where he's going to fucking bring out the stick tonight. You know what I'm saying? Where he's just going to start, if he's like, if he starts clapping back at that, that's where we're going to have the problem. But uh, why it turned in bullish, because that question about financial conditions, it's kind of a trap. Do you realize why? Because in trying to answer financial question, financial conditions, you open up the door to Powell saying, oh, well, I actually think the odds of a soft landing are, are very are markedly increased. Or if Powell says, I don't disagree that we could have a soft landing still. So that, that's, a, that's it's, it's really a double edged sword on that question. So financial conditions, it, you know, we know it's bad, but unless he takes a very, you know, uh, Jackson Hole approach to it. It's most likely going to turn into soft landing is, is my opinion on it. So that's what we have to watch out for. But then that's what got you up here. And then by the end of it, you just you fluctuated just natural. This was all the, the speech ended right around here. And again, you just move so big. So if we don't move too much on the, the release, bigger moves during the speech and then vice versa. But again, like I brought up earlier, the Goldilocks right here. This is what started the rally leading it. Michael McKee brought in the biggest one, soft landing. This brought in the biggest sort of run up there, right? But right here off this, because again, you were about to dump from here. You got to look at that, right? You were about to dump into another low there. But right here, he. this is where Powell addressed employment being strong, but he, he acknowledged as a positive that wages haven't continued to go up. So that that is going to be a a factor of today. Yeah, Rachel, and that was Rachel Siegel. The 
Tim Arouse, he says the Fed is getting more of the data they've wanted, but wants to ensure disinflationary isn't transitory. That's why their outlook for the labor market and the role they think it plays in sustaining could be the big focus. So Tim Morales is already leaking it. Powell's going to be bearish on on employment. But I don't know if the market will take will, will the market could ignore it. He has to bring out something big. He didn't Powell didn't say Goldilocks. That's but my interpretation and I think the market's interpretation is that is a Goldilocks scenario. When I know some of you hate that concept, uh, but it's just very simple. If Powell says employment is strong, but, you know, wages aren't going up. It's not it's not posing a problem yet because inflation is coming down. Employment is, is bad regardless of wages if inflation keeps skyrocketing. But if he's saying inflation's coming down and we're actually, you know, seeing that happen and we like it, but we want to be confident... But then he says, as long as wages aren't up, you know, he, he's going to have to address that because, again, wages have not. You had one little signal of wage price spiral and it instantly disappeared in, in three, two more months of data. So until he's, he's most likely going to have to address that. Uh, but that is the Goldilocks scenario, I would argue. Yes, with that, because in theory, employment being stronger should raise wages. But if it's not, and there you go. Goldilocks is like, you know, not too hot, not too cold. That's where it's like, you know, because we're like bearish, bullish, bearish, bullish. In a weird way, it's acknowledging the bad. It's acknowledging the hot soup. But then he's acknowledging the cold soup, making it just right by saying, yes, em employment is going to make me very, very hawkish. However, the other thing that would make me very hawkish that I'm not worried about right now or is a little better is wages. So that would create a And again, the market Technically speaking, that is where we began the rally at the last Fed meeting. That that one kind of slipped in, and it was very, very good. So Timmy tweet little bounce and drop right here. Tim Tim Arouse pretty much. I, I'm telling you, Tim Arouse saying that right before the meeting. He's telling you what's going to happen. Powell is going to be extremely bearish on unemployment. It looks like. And he's going to keep the whole confident, confident speech. Basically, if we're poor, we have to work two jobs because one doesn't cut it. That's Goldilocks. Listen, man, if you want to, this is economics. We're speaking about data, all of that. If you want to make it all political, just go tweet at AOC and you'll be good. Uh, but other than that, it's very we're, we're talking about the state of how it affects interest rates and the Federal Reserve and what he would see as a situation that is positive or negative that will influence anything else. Tim, Timmy's very credible, especially coming down to giving you something right before the, the theory on Wall Street is that the Fed uses Tim Rouse to give an early leak of what they want to happen. But for real, if there are more people than jobs working two jobs, that would reflect the statement that wages are not enough. We're not, we're not, what we're discussing is if the wages go up or down to influence policy or unemployment going up or down to influence policy, right? So even if you're, like you're saying, even if people are getting two jobs in economic theory, if there is that much employment, the higher the demand of employment, the price should go up, right? The, regardless, even if supply stays the same, if there's massive amount of, of employment, the more employment, whether it's one job, 10 jobs, how many jobs people want to get, the fact is it should make wages go up. And that is what Powell is worried about. So if those wages do not go up, that is not panicking them as much because inflation is coming down. Because now if the price of your goods come down and they continue to stay down, then those wages that have already moved up a little bit but are not increasing rapidly, it should make the situation better. But 
pa it's this is all in terms of w looking at economics of what should happen. That's why Powell is saying if unemployment is this low, the Fed is expecting that wages are going to skyrocket. And then if inflation is very high, is very high, then that that will cause stagflation or wage price spiral, which would be a very big problem for them. So that's where they're kind of balancing this out. That's why he's the Goldilocks scenario or AKA the problem has not materialized is simply the problem of employment not going down where it could help bring down inflation. You know, it's not, this isn't about people's lives in that sense. And it's not meant to be targeted like that. It's just saying if employment keeps staying, unemployment stays low, it's going to make inflation skyrocket. But if that's not occurring, then that means the wages should go up. So what Powell is pretty much acknowledging would be saying, listen, unemployment's still very low and that's good. We don't we want people to have jobs, but that's not a good sign for inflation. But then the good part is that wages aren't going up because of this low level of unemployment that is making, you know, further gains on inflation. So that that's the whole concept. And that's what makes it Goldilocks bearish bullish or not. But, you know, anything reading deeper, everybody has their own political views, all of that. But it's just, you know, we're, we're here for the economy and how it's going to influence, influence policy so we can make some money. And we're all trading here, I assume. Otherwise, so that means we all fall into the greedy capitalistic bastard section. So, you know, we're all in the same boat. You're kind of near the low of the day, too. Apple did have a little mini dump there. Well, China, he answered the China question. The China question is that if China reopens, it could cause more inflation. BZ. What's BZ? Brent crude. Yeah, oil has been dumping earlier. Four oh five four, you're coming into the low. Low of the day is four oh five two nine four. OPEC, yeah, we had it earlier. They said they're not changing supply. U.S. says it planned uh, embassy in Solomon Islands, or it opened it. So watch out here if we end up dumping. I don't know if the other countries did. I mean, most countries are at 20 or at 50. So in a weird way, America will be the only one at 25 in the last week or so. make trays uh yeah i plan to do some stuff i told you you know my initial plan uh would be to sell my my what's it called i want to uh i want to sell my es but i'm assuming we're going to get a positive release initially i could be wrong but if i i, I might not want to sell it too early and then we're depending on bonds and yen that's going to be our our kicker it's going to be fun Remember, Apple has earnings tomorrow. Natural gas, we're going to get a little bit more insight here today. Uh, but that depends on the whole demand destruction, recession or not. All those other factors there will be very, very key. Jerome Powell, that's number four. Uh, he speaks at 2.30 p.m. Eastern, so in about two hours and 20 minutes. And then an hour and 50 minutes from now, we're going to get the release. Mm, this 
another one. Striker gains on beat. That was earlier. Psych. This YK. Again, we've been dropping since the Timorous tweet. A lot of tech, and I know FedEx is here. FedEx needs to make that 200 run. Amazon's coming up. Whirlpool getting volume at the bottom. Anet came out of nowhere. Okay, so Spy making a move towards the low of the day. Oil is getting smashed. That's been going on for, honestly, this, this like second half of the drop kind of correlates with oil. Markets are holding up a little better. Again, 4.052. I think next level is what? 4.058? We're already below that. It's going to be 4.049. 4.049, 4.048. That's kind of the midpoint of yesterday or the higher midpoint. Okay, a couple of red cheek glaze. Again, apples dump dumping. XOM, all oil and energy is actually getting murked right here. Mm. SMCI's on the high. They're running. Super Micro. Intel, I'm going to check the other ones. AM, dude, AMD's still holding up. They're doing great. Airbus reinstated Qatar orders. Bro, Boeing was ripping in the morning. I wonder. Airbus, we see. Anet's running on me. That's going into the highs. So not everything's coming down, but a lot of energy, I believe, is affecting that. Some energy's down 3.1 right now. Shit. Energy materials are just actually hurting everything. So, like, not everything's that down. Tech is actually up right now coming into the Fed meeting. I'm surprised Burry didn't delete his tweet. I thought that one was interesting. BTX Divi 2.6. Oh, is Altria still up? Yeah, they're just riding out. He said sell. I know he usually uh he deletes it. HBI and wait, is H HBI tomorrow morning, right? It wasn't today. That'd be crazy. PPC flexible packing by Steepak Map Fresh Holdings. The oil the tech, we'll find out. Bonds are even climbing back up here too on part of this sell off from they sell they sold off earlier. Oh, I got an earnings preview for Haynes, huh? Oh, Chad, where are my Haynes holders at? That, 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 that sounds kind of weird if you don't understand the context. <laughs> I mean, we, we we bought the stock is what I'm... I mean, it sounds... It don't sound that... I mean, who, who's holding Haynes stock? Okay, can I just get 20 more likes? I got 20 likes out there. I, got, I need only 20 more, man. 20 more. We're going to be at 28, baby. I said, I don't, you know what I'm saying? I didn't mean to call you a Hanes holder. That that sounds like you grab underwear. You know what I'm saying? I meant like the, the stock is just, is just getting weird. I mean, we're up 50%. Okay, stop it. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. Wow. Thank you for the likes. All right. Here it is. Uh, so Haynes brand, they're expecting uh, operating profit from operations, 86.8 million adjusted gross margin, 34.4% net sales from continuing estimate, 1.46 billion billion innerware net sales, 547 million active wear, 373.8 million international net sales, 450 million. And then other net sales, 81 adjusted operating margin, 6%. Um, let's see. Do they have one? I don't even think there's a, a they don't even have anything on this. There's not even like a analyst aren't even like crazy on it. Uh, but there's one buy target, eight holds and two sells. Average price target is 832% downside from current price. Implied one day move following earnings is 7.6%. Adjusted EPS is uh has beaten in 10 of the last 12 quarters. Oh, wow. Are you ready for this statistic, though? This one's crazy. Haynes shares still at this price. They are down 47.4% in the past year versus the S&P down 10%. And then the dividend is expected to stay the same. Wow. Do you hear what I just said? I don't know if you feel me on that. So even in the last 12 months, even after we are up 50%, compared to the S&P 500 on the last 12 months, Haynes is still down 47% comparatively. Wow, wow, we wow. So they're tomorrow morning. So shout out to Law Terp. Shout out to Donia. Victory. Yeah, where is it? Yeah, we got 47%. We have, I wish there was good cover calls to sell on it, but that would be nice. I don't none of the I don't like any of the covered calls. They're all cheap. You can't really get much. Yeah, it doesn't pay like Redfin. I see the gunlock tweet. Yeah, he was saying the bonds are Going to get crazy. And then SPY coming through another low right now. And the FedEx is still holding up. Where's Apple and all that? Again, I think this is a mix of oil. Unless tech bounces, you might just start, or unless oil bounces. Now that's a new low on the day. Four oh five oh. So again, there's a little bit more we are going to see. Again, you have a forty forty eight, forty forty nine. You've chilled over. That's where you kind of broke out to, and that's where you've kind of bounced off of. You bounced off of that yesterday, leading into the three thirty ramp. I do like bond exposure, but bonds are going to be crazy today. Again, a lot could change. That's it, depending on what Powell says. Everything else, man, it could be wild. TLT is just a ETF that holds treasury bonds of certain durations. So like, and then it pretty much when, t when bonds are doing good, when yields go down, TLT goes up and then uh, vice versa. But like I showed you guys this back in the day, it's an ETF. So you have to understand it's designed 
to hold bonds. Like that's all it does. It automat it has holdings that should replicate the value. That's what all ETFs are designed for. So here's TLT. So you see this, they have 30 year, that's a third, 10% of the, they're holding 10% 10 year or 30 year bonds, 10% of the fund. Then they have another 30 year bond. Most of them are 30 years. I think the lowest duration is like 20 years right here, maybe not even just under. So it's like, that's the whole idea. They just buy the ETF buys bonds. And as the bonds move, they own all those bonds. So the ETF is supposed to replicate or reflect that value to a pretty good one. I think, uh, I don't know what the difference is between NAV. Let me see. I think it's, it should stay within like point point oh eight percent or something. Yeah. So it's about like 0.08%. So it's meant to track all those values dollar, like within less than 1% of a difference. Hey, you got a little bounce. Was that off of 49? A little higher, 40, 50. It's right at the center point, huh? Man, earnings, HBI in the morning, and everything else. It's going to be exciting. Man, get ready. Dude, we have an hour and a half. That's it, Chad. We're getting close. Bro, I don't know if you feel me on this, man. We are getting close. Wow. So about 15 minutes ahead, I'm going to start. We're going to have analyst comments and everything else. Uh, but get ready, man. Let's do We're getting close to the event. you getting close to the event. It's already 930. Volume is extremely low right now. It doesn't mean it's going to end like that, but holy. Yeah, you're at 25 million by hour number three. <laughs> Yo, no, that's crazy. That's like 8 million an hour from open. And that's in ha, ha, three quarters of that was in two, two thirds of that was in the uh, in the first hour. Hmm. money selling anybody who buys uvxy is gonna make bank my question is who do you guys work for you know everyone's like it's rigged i feel like y'all work for them why y'all y'all just just take it as it comes take it as it comes relax today's gonna prove a lot of right and wrong and it's gonna look a certain way by the end of the day and by tomorrow it's all gonna change so who do y'all work for you guys work for somebody. Yeah, you got to work for pro shit. I don't like, who do y'all work for? Mm -hmm, I'm suspicious. I see, I saw people, they were like, I saw like memes and they were like laughing at, they're like, oh, it's all rigged. They told everyone it's selling a balance. And I'm like, I feel like it's everybody promulgating it that makes it more rigged. I'm like, y'all rigging it against each other. Y'all just straight been pumping each other up for the last like three years. Just take it as it comes, man. Take it as it comes. We know we got, we got to react to it. And we're going to go from there, man. This is, oof, it's emotions. That's it. It's all emotions. Snap AI product tease. What? Oh, no. Don't tell me this shit's going to be an AI. What if they got Snap GBT, bro? Oh, come on, Evan Spiegel. I don't see it. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Snap hints at future AR glasses. 
Uh, that's old, though. That's old. That came out not too long ago. Why is it just getting picked up now? Snap hints at future AR glasses powered by generative AI. It's years to find itself as a camera despite its failures. It's decision to kill off camera equipment drone, but that hasn't stopped the company from envisioning a future AR that will eventually be powered by AI. Seems like hype. Hmm. Why don't they just make their own AI where you just go into Snapchat and then you talk to it like smarter child? <laughs> no, it's, it's a it's a it's a fluff piece. I thought they were actually about to just drop some AI on us. Like what? They said they're gonna get into like AI glasses and like it could increase engagement if people can make AI images, which I could understand, but I don't think that's not like like give me some real Chat GBT. You know what I'm saying? The dog filter. See, dog filter went, bro, that was an era. You know what I'm saying? That's how we used to know if they were catfishing. You'd be like, get that dog filter off, bro. I'm not going to lie, bro. I got a selfie or two on my phone with me with the dog filter. I'm not, you know, it's okay. I'm not going to act all cool. You know, I'll be, I'd rather be honest with you, man. I got selfies of myself with the dog filter from like six years ago. I did it. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I Clearly, I didn't post it, but like, you know. I definitely, no, I had, I had it, I had it, man. I had it. I definitely, you know, it worked for a little bit. I thought I was cute. What, what do you want me to say? What do you want me to say? Mm -hmm. I did, man. I'm not, <laughs> you know. FTV Fortiv group they're kind of dumping AMD on the high Fortiv is dumping right now yeah that was when I still had a hairline 100% Fortiv it looks I think it's gaming right no They had earnings the other day, or this morning, I think. No idea what Ford is. Sounds familiar. Jerome Powell Day, let's go. Hey, man, welcome. Let's go. Yeah, there's no high low ticker on on TOS. It's okay. We you get it pretty actively here. It's a good feature. And watch out if we sell off this one, if that's your baby bounce, that's not going to you're going to go below the 4050. But if this could hold up, you might be able to edge up till VWAP. Third hour is right around here. There's definitely pal today. Good luck, my friends. Good luck. Redfin's still holding up. I'm really excited. The volume's tiny, man. This volume is, like, so low, I'm surprised. Power day stock trading's back. Oh, he's ready to go. You can't you snap couldn't keep a good man down. Oh no, nah, let's go. <laughs> you know, no, stock trade. You gotta chill for me though today. You don't don't let me get too hyped too early. Cause yeah, honestly, I saw that I just saw your name and I got really hyped, bro. Okay, so don't don't get me too hyped out here, man. You know we are we still I think we actually went over everything. I think, uh, again, I hope you watch the gameplay for a gameplay video on the watch list. If you haven't checked that out, you might want to. But it's, it's game time, bro. It's game time. It is game time.
Mm-mm-mm-mm. Oh, yeah, we could do some push-ups. Can we get some push-ups in, Chad? How y'all feeling about push-ups? Are you feeling like getting the body moving? Put your chest to the sun, flex the core, tuck the hips in. Does that sound like a good idea? Can you guys just do 10 push-ups? You know, you can't do 10, do 5. Do whatever you need to do, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's all you got to do, bro. That's all you got to do. That's all we got to do, man. Can we Can we do that? Can, you know, legs in front of you, not right behind your computer chair. Can you stare at an object 10, 20, 30 feet away, blink a little bit? Rivian to cut off six. We had that earlier. It didn't really react. Blink, 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 Yeah, Wall Street Journal is hitting that now. Oh, we pushing up. I need to stand up. Bop, 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 stand up. Bop, 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 stand up. And I move, you move, just like pal. I move, you move. Hey, yo, pal, raise them race. Uh. All right, I'm doing my resistance. Eh? Oh. Burpees commence. Bro, FTV is still dumping. Mm-hmm. If pal slingshots us to the mood, I mean, I don't think he would do it purposefully, but he might do it inadvertently. That's the problem. That's the only thing I'm worried about. That's why, because I know if we get any sort of big pop, I'm going to be very tempted to sell that ES, but then assuming he's going to try to bat it down but you got to realize if Powell if Powell uses attack and it's not effective that's it you lose the he loses the dojo I don't know if you understand that reference but it's very important and yeah, we're doing push-ups right now I'm doing my resistance you know making sure I got a strong back got to be ready for all of this Powell is Mewtwo. All right. Add some dips and sc- oh, I need to do the uh, the hip stretches. I did that yesterday, and that's a good one. Once I put the desk down, because now I got to stand for a little bit. It's 930. Again, volume is very low here. Uh, We've gone over it. We're looking for changes in the statement and soft landing comments versus unemployment. Nick Timmerous, that's when we started dumping here into the second leg. Pretty much told us that we have to be on the lookout for the Employment being strong. New York, welcome to the chat. Hey, New York, what a name. You think Powell watches the chart while talking? I don't think he does. That'd be kind of crazy. Yellen uses sing. It's super effective. <laughs> oh. oh, man. So does the news that matters comes out? Yes, today. So literally in an hour and a half, there is a potential piece of news. with their, They're going to announce if they raised rates or not, which they most likely will by a quarter percent. And then once that news comes out, depending on if they make any noticeable changes, 
that can move the market around a lot. Uh, and then 30 minutes following that, we are going to get Jerome Powell and he will begin his speech. And then that's it. The bond yield inverts now as the chances for recession decreased. Well, the bonds are already inverted. Every, Actually, every single part of the curve is inverted now. So the three, except for maybe the five year and 10 year, but the uh, three month is time is the three month is inverted, and then the two year is inverted with the ten year. So if it uninverts, that would be both. It would be kind of bearish and bullish at the same time. It depends how it uninverts, uh, and then we'll go from there. Powell has not spoken in public since getting COVID. Yeah, it was a Fed blackout. I forgot about that, dude. I totally forgot about that. Was that two weeks ago? Wait, hold on. That's crazy. The vol number, the volume, I'm just right here on the SPY, 25 million. And it's hour number three, uh, which is very low. But we're it's going to be 100 million a day. I, I know it for a fact. Uh, well, technically, it's not a fact because it hasn't happened yet. But uh, it seems like it will. It depends because like the the yield curve can naturally invert. But if they cut rates by cutting rates and lowering the short end of the curve through policy, that would uninvert the curve. But that would be based off of another reason, a.k.a. they want to spur demand. If naturally their interest rates rise up above there, then you could argue that's kind of a natural uninversion. And then there you go. Yeah, let's see. I don't know, man. I, for, I totally forgot Powell got COVID. I totally forgot. So uh, technically we haven't uh, seen it. UAL already reported. I still have that old play there. Did all the airlines come up? They're doing decent. AMD still running. I appreciate you too, Andre. God bless you, my friend. I hope you're ready. Uh, there's no project. The projected move is a quarter basis points, but there's no expectation for the market. Uh, you could go to the options chain and like, we'll see the SPX. I mean, right now they're pricing in $50. Is that right? So that's like 1% for today. Actually, they're not even, the options aren't even pricing in a big move, believe it or not. It's kind of weird. You're pricing in about 1%, maybe 1 1.2, which I guess is kind of big, but that's not really uh no, nah, that's 50 bucks on the SPX. I mean, we've done that almost every day. So by the end of the week, maybe that's a better metric. By the end of the week, you're pricing in like 2.5%, but uh, actually the options seem kind of, uh, kind of chill. They went with 50 if they went with a 50 basis point hike which is not possible today or it shouldn't be I, th I think the market would drop five to seven percent in a day Activision dropping. Activision never drops. These guys scam. Why is 50 not possible? Uh, because of the Fed futures. So the Fed futures, there's uh, the Fed has a, uh, the Fed has a history of following the Fed futures for the last 60 years. They have never broken that trend. So, like we said, they can do it today, but it would be, uh, uh, you know, I don't know if a 10% increase, same price level as December, would warrant them wanting to uh, break 60 years of history and credibility. Long time. This is Archon, bro. I've been with the Jettas since 2019. 
Hey, man. In New York. Let's go, man. Stay with it for the long. I hope y'all got the long term, man. I hope, as if, again, if you're just tuning in, too, but you've been with the call, man, make sure you get the long term alerts. I don't want y'all missing out on five, six, 50 percenters last year. Let's go. We got big years ahead of us, and the long term is here. And today's going to be a shit show. FTV still dumping. FedEx is climbing, but it won't go above, bro. Long term alerts are first link in the description. I have a deposit today or tomorrow, but I'm not adding anything to it. Not yet. I'm waiting, dude. I'm waiting. I'm we gotta be patient. Redfin. Someone said this is the 200 day moving average for Redfin. Yeah. You know, nothing good happens below the 200 day. This is its first time in two years, roughly, that it's been above the moving average. <laughs> wow. And then bonds have si silently climbed up here today. Got my first. Oh, yeah, this is the first one. Oh, no, no. I got one at the beginning of the year. I thought I, for some reason I you just took me back to January. I was like, is it January 1st? It's February 1st. Tesla. SI. Powell likes to pour cold water. But like I'm saying, Powell, there's a chance today, I definitely believe it that Powell is going to bring out the guns and then we're just immune to it. And, you know, Powell tries to cold, pour cold water and they're like, you can't do anything more to me. I've already been having water cold poured on me. I don't even know what I'm saying now. But yeah, so that's the that's the risk. That's the risk for the bears there is that Powell gives you exactly what you want and Powell comes in swinging and then the bulls are just completely unfazed and then turn this now into the most wicked game of chicken we've ever seen. Forcing Powell to do things he doesn't want to do. Still getting nothing. Well, make sure you filled out everything and make sure you've activated uh, short codes. I've been having water cold poured on me. I just, I'm glitching out, bro. I'm just, I'm getting excited, man. An hour, 15 minutes, baby. <laughs> SBNY on the high. Signature Bank. Whoa, 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 whoa. SBNY kind of popping big. Mm, I don't see anything. GE doing stuff for the environment. Environmentally friendly air travel. Cause a lot to buy it for the long term over the decades. Looking to high tech engine technology. Oh, GE. From the NASA boys. That's. I have a small short on it from the earnings, so, but it might be. And then they spun off. I think their healthcare group had a good one too. How likely do you think he says 25 bulls go crazy? Then sometime before the next meeting, he implies 50. He can. That's that's the bear. That's the that's the kicker right there. Where even today, if as long as Powell just leaves 50 basis on the table again. That I don't know how much it will bring people down, but it will definitely cool off the bulls. I definitely think that is that's something Powell can do today, where it's not necessarily. But the problem is that's not a new statement, right? But if he wants to drive that home, and he wants to play that game, you know, Powell could very well say, "Listen, we're doing a quarter, but it doesn't rule off going 50 basis points at the next meeting." And if he does that, that could I think that could shock people for a little bit. But like I'm saying in the in the grand scope of things, it, it doesn't change much. SBNY is still running. No classified documents found in Biden's home, says attorney. He said all they found was a, a life alert button, and that's it. And they said they took some papers from Biden's beach home for review. He got a beach home? Dang, son. I'm sorry. Yeah, that wasn't part of the news. I just threw that in there with my imagination. 
And they're like, damn, I didn't know the president used Life Alert. This must be a very effective product. I've seen this on the late night before. You know, I always wondered who purchased it. But little did you know, the president of the United States would be in that target market. That's amazing. Well, why do you need Life Alert when you got Secret Service? That seems like a waste of $25 a month, sir. I don't know. Hmm. SBNY, I don't have anything on it. Keeps going. Fortive earnings call. That's why they started dropping. FTV, this is because of their earnings call. It just started. The main earnings are going to be Facebook. I don't care about anybody else. <laughs> okay fedex is running fedex 199 you need to get to 200 you know you need to get to 200 be good for him habibi be good for you sir I mean, do you guys want Fe do you want FedEx to rip? Are you guys still in that? I'll do it for you guys. I got you. Y'all need y'all deserve more than this. I'm gonna sell out. I'm gonna take my two dollars a share. And just know I love you. All right, I sold out. I sold out of Fed. That's it. It's gonna run now. Now you're gonna go to two hundred. I got y'all need that. Y'all, I got you. I'm done. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be so selfish and stop you guys from making money. I'll just get my ass out of there. I took the sell. I'll take the bullet for you. You know, it's good. I did it with Baidu this morning, so I just, I had to. I got you, man. I got you. Now I'm doing hip stretches. Still in Amazon. I might want to get out of it, uh, but I don't know. I don't like how he's performing today. But And then I'm going to hold the Google because of Facebook. And that's it. Did they scam you on the film? Not too bad. Only like a couple dollars. Well, couple like a couple cents. India, kid, India ETF for kids? Like for your kids or are you, are you looking for like an ETF design for children like rated G? But I, I like INDA. I, don't, I want India ETF for kids. Is that like Nick at night? They got ETFs for kids. That'd be crazy. Yeah, for your kid. INDA. Uh, I think that would probably be the, the best one. Uh, I'm wait though. There's still there's fat premium on it. That's a good one though. I honestly, it's a great investment for long term like that. I definitely like where your head's at. Executive still in discussion over 2022 compensation. Barclays. Adani in India. I don't care about it. I think, like, I'm telling you, this is like why Bill Ackman, if you're an American... All you care about with the Adani thing is hoping that this shit brings down Indian equities so you could fucking buy it at a discount for the next decade. That's all I care. I don't care. I want I want it to I don't have an opinion on it. I just want it to be bad so I could go buy India at a 30% discount and then that's it. <laughs> like that's all that's all that comes down like it's what regardless of what it is, but it's just like we don't give a shit. It's it's really like it's weird, uh, American short. How is he even? I wonder how he's even shorting it. But then again, I'm sure I don't know what's going on with Adani. All I care about though is just a discount on Indian equities. Like that's all. That's all you need. It's been big news. It's, it's again. It's they've wiped out like ninety billion dollars. It's already brought down the India ETF. 
a solid like 10 12 percent so far which is great but india bro india has literally been the hardest uh country to get into without paying a premium like go look at bro they shit on everybody so now india is looking like amazon but like they look like they're in their 2021 phase still so you still got a fat premium on indian stock so it's just like yo we get that break of 38 get it back to 2022 levels it's a steal. That's all I care about with it. So I wouldn't look too much into it, but all you got to do is just, I, I would buy India when, once it gets cheap enough. It's still kind of getting there. You get a nice quick discount. Yeah, they're pretty much saying that he's a scam. They're saying the richest man is a scam. He has all of these companies that feed off of each other and that it's just not real. So it's just pretty much saying that a lot of his wealth and business and the business of some of these, you know, companies is overinflated. Uh, and that's what they're saying. But at the same time, like, I'm pretty sure he owns every single utility line that goes into any Indian home right now, or at least here in the modern world, if they have access to it. Yeah, but they're borderline saying that he's valiant, that he's, he's one company feeds the other and they don't really make that much money. And then he goes and borrows money and gets loans and does all this. I'm not reading no Bible for this man. You know, they, this guy puts out 86 questions and then a Donnie responds with a 415 page report. Like, what are you? What the? It's not, nah, man. I this ain't why it's so biblical, man. That's how you know it's bullshit. All I don't even care. I just want a cheap price on India. <laughs> like give me cheap Indian assets. I'm not going to read any of those all the way through. That's a lot, man. Did they got an MLA formatted? I would just wait and buy India at a low and call it a day. You'll find out the truth and who's right or not. But when it's all said and done, I mean, it's, it's a pretty difficult one to already play too. You could go after the Indian ETF to play, but at that point you've already missed a, a good amount of the move unless it really craters. But I think the real money's on the buy side. I don't have any Indian exposure. That's why I'm I'm kind of excited about it all. So like I don't even know DraftKings to cut 140 jobs, three and a half percent of workforce. Bro, every damn day we've gotten some job cuts here. But that's why I'm hoping I'm just if if India stocks get cheap, the ETF I would love to buy. That's all I'm hoping out of this. But I don't really I'm I'm agnostic towards whether or not it's true. I don't I don't really care. I don't think it has any uh, material impact on the long term of India, but it will allow a, a nice long term entry on on India if if people get worried and scared or the market impact of it starts to get bigger. Pretty much it shouldn't spill over into United States assets is what I'm saying. So it's like I don't think you have a I don't think you have a problem to deal with. Like with, it's not going to affect your stocks. It's just going to create a buying opportunity. Consensus is 25. It's 99.7% odds. I told you. I got y'all, FedEx boys. I got y'all. You take it home for me, okay? You just remember me. You just remember me when you go through the finish line. You know what I'm saying? I got you, man. I got you. Everyone waiting on the Fed. Only for a little bit. Only one more hour now. One hour and five minutes. Could you sell some boil for me? I should. You know, just get a little bit, sell a little bit, let it let it go up. Or I could just short a future, but then that'd destroy me. They don't play around on that. Bonds are hitting a new high on this too now. So bonds look like they're catching up with the yen now. What a day. What a glorious day. XBI's X dividend, I think it's already passed. Eleven twenty one twelve. But then they they should have a new one here. Eleven twelve one two. 
Their ex dividend should be February like twenty first or something. I think. Well, I guess that's weird. Or we missed the first. I don't know. I think we may may have missed the first payout. What time is the Fed? That's number five. 2 p.m. for the release, Eastern time, and then 2.30 for Jerome Powell's press conference. Mm. Um... Bro, and shorts are so much more expensive, I've noticed. It's a lot more easier to buy long than short on this market. Everything from futures to stocks. But let's get it. There's your bounce. There's your FedEx 2. And then, yeah, UWMC earnings, or not UWMC, HBI tomorrow. When is UWMC report, though? Again, it was a fire month here for mortgages. It was actually surprising. For validating the BS on options, I'm sticking with shares. Amen, man. Again, everybody has their own thing. I don't think you should, uh, you know, don't throw out options from your repertoire. But at the same time, you know, make sure you maximize your opportunities there. And especially in a slow market that speeds up, slows down, gets crazy, you know, it's been good. Even then, I mean, I've been dealing with these other future positions. I've been waiting for this event, but all those little small share flips you've seen me do, they've killed it this month. Like it's actually been like fire. I haven't even checked. I think it's it's like between like eight or 12,000 depending on because I even realized some of the old losses, but it was definitely uh Small shares, bro. It, it goes a long way. You're negative on snap puts when, when they went up. They will do that to you. But hopefully, I don't know what. Check the value on the uh, other other stuff. Trade electricity. You can. You know, that's what they do at utility companies. Play that on. I need to go pee. Dang, you're flipping that already, though. Watch out. Even bonds bonds hit a high of the day now, and then they're coming down with the market. We have one hour. That's it. I need to go. I need to carbo up, bro. I got to carbo up. I got to go to the bathroom. This is it. This is so whatever. You're going to get one more final move. That sucks, though. You're going to be down half a percent coming into it. So get ready. I think usually we've been up on these Fed meetings. Get ready. Get ready, Chattadonia. Get ready. Okay, I'll BRB. I love you. Follow me on Instagram at the trading fraternity. And just know you're blessed, okay? You're blessed. Good. All right. All right. Please hold. Please hold. All right. 
It's the countdown to the Fed rate decision. 25 basis points on the docket, just as the latest data signals a slowdown. I'm Kriti Gupta. Bloomberg Markets starts right now. Well, let's get a quick check in the markets again. A massive rate decision here. Is this the step down that the markets are anticipating? Well, maybe. We're going to find out at the top of the hour. The S&P 500 down about six tenths of one percent. The Nasdaq also down, but not by as much of a margin. Really tells you that tech is outperforming just a little bit today. The bond market, however, it is catching a bit, unlike the stock market. 345 on the 10-year yield. We are looking at a move about four basis points lower. Put that in the context of volatility, though. It's actually nothing to write home about. Let's see what happens, though, at 2 p.m. New York time, how much has the bond market actually been pricing in? Of course, that is going to have a ripple effect across the dollar. Some weakness in the greenback today. Uh, 1220 on the Bloomberg dollar index, weaker by only two tenths of 1%. Once again, nothing to write home about just yet, but hold on to your hats because everything could change in just an hour. NYMEX crude, 76 handle. What is the commodity market telling us about the risk rally that we've been so used to for the stock market in the last couple of weeks? At the core of the story, though, is what is the roadmap? Is there a point of history that that we can compare it to, or are we going in blind? Morgan Stanley's Mike Wilson said there might just be a parallel. Take a listen. The move we had this month is very typical in the month of January, particularly coming off of a difficult year. And we've been very focused in on January of 2001. It's a very similar period. We had a you know re-rating of the big tech stocks and you know the former leaders, and uh, that was due to kind of the tech bubble itself. Joining us now with more on what to expect is Anna Wong, chief U.S. economist for Bloomberg Economics and former Fed uh, economist, I might add, as well as Bloomberg's macro man, Cameron Christ, and Markets Live strategist over on our traders blog. Cam, I want to start with you specifically because I want to ask about the financials condition index, the sensitivity to it at a time when the biggest move is coming from a forward-looking mechanism, the stock market. So why is the Fed so worried? Uh, well, I mean, the, the stock market uh, does I imply a sort of a, a wealth effect um, for for households. Um, I, I would push back a little bit. Uh, uh, a lot of the easing of the financial conditions index, particularly the Bloomberg iteration, is also a function of well-behaved credit spreads and the narrowing of, of, of credit spreads, um, which obviously makes borrowing conditions for companies um, that much easier leverage um, that, much, uh, that much that much easier. But I like this you know, broadly Let's speaking, the purpose of you. interest rate hikes is to tighten conditions um, across the economy, make it more difficult to access credit, uh, make households feel uh, fewer animal spirits, fewer less marginal propensity to consume, um, and all of those recently have been been pushing the wrong way. Um, in a sense. Kind of front loading the uh, the expectation that the Fed is going to uh, is going to come to a halt relatively quickly. Well, it's speaking of that halt, that Anna, it brings me to your report out this morning. It's not just financial conditions that are getting uh, really actively considered. It's the labor market at the core of it. You highlight this morning, there are now two job openings per unemployed person. We're almost back to that pandemic high, pushing that Fed pivot further mm -hmm. away. What kind of timeline are we looking at when it comes to when we're going to get that pivot? Timeline. So there it is. You got your FedEx pop too. GG test. GG. I hope you're ready. That's it, man. 55 minutes left. 55 minutes. Uh, we're going to go over all the analyst stuff ahead of time. I've already given you guys the keys for it. Hopefully you've checked out the watch list. Hopefully you understand uh, how powerful the statement ongoing rate increases are and how uh, change to gradual will also be very positive. And we have to be on the lookout for Powell to uh, bat us down with uh, employment being strong. So we got a lot on our plate here. And bonds have moved up here. They kind of came down. The SPY is very, very low volume here this morning. Uh, energy is the real decliner on the day. So is real estate. So you're actually not like today's not as bad as it looks. You believe it or not, tech is the best performing on the day. Tech stocks are only down 0.04. But I'm sure you could thank uh, young AMD and NVIDIA for that one because they're still killing it. Mm -mm -mm. But yeah, get ready. 
Looking forward to specific questions. I am t I'm gonna do this is this is game time. That's it. I got my carbo. I'm loading up now. I got we gotta stretch a little bit. And it's gonna be here, but uh, even then, depending on where we even are at by the release, that will do a lot. And then we're gonna find out about that. You heard the most volatile asset, electricity. Yeah, it's because the pr how the pricing uh, moves. So like uh, electricity and how it gets delivered, it, that's what causes the volatility. Because like it's it's all de dependent upon immediate delivery. So that's why the prices swings like super crazy. So if like you have electricity on hand and then electricity, you need a source. I don't, I'm not, I'm not an electricity trader uh, and I don't plan on ever doing it, but it's pretty crazy. If you're, if you're into that shit, you know what I'm saying? You could, you could do it, but uh, it is very, very volatile. That's a nice little pop. I think there are futures, but. It's very, very difficult. You know they have futures on housing? Like, what is it? I don't even know how that fucking works. They have literally CME Metro Area Housing Index Futures. It's like CUS, I think. I don't know if it loads up. I don't even think you could trade it. Oh, wait, you might be able to. Is cuz CUS. You can't trade it on TD. No, they literally have a housing housing metro area housing index futures. I don't even understand how you even play it. No, it exists. Like literally. It's on the CME. Metro area housing index futures. There's no volume on it, but they have a future price for it. Yeah, it's very I don't I have no idea how it works. Let's go long, long on the ten year. Amen. Amen. I've been telling them that for a long time. Mm. There's a big electricity trader out there called Enron. You should read into them. They're good guys. Yeah, MO is buying back $1 billion in shares, and MO had a solid earnings. Like, bro, MO, their earnings beat by, like, they had, like, a billion more dollars in revenue, a little bit higher. Miss you a I, I missed you a little bit. I miss everybody, man. It's always good to see people. The only thing I really miss, though, is the shots I don't take. <laughs> okay. I know I'm mad MO did good. I don't know how to feel about it because it flipped. Uh, it, it, it did some good work on the long term, you know, and get your dividends up there. But I'm like, dude, I really wanted it cheaper. And that's why I was kind of sad, but whatever. I'll take it, I guess. Where is MO? Yeah, man. You know, but I would have loved that 10% yield. That would have been cool. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, where did uh, where did Uber go? Did Uber calm down? Oh, I told I got you on FedEx, Chad. Bro, I'm telling you, five minutes, five minutes. I got you. I might. You guys just hold. All right, you hold UNG, and I'll just sell a little bit, if that's what you need next. Cause that's it. I got you, bro. I got you. That's what I'm saying. You better think about me through the finish line. All right. And then pray for HBI earnings. Hopefully we make another 50%. That'd be cool. MSOS, weed. Did we get the PG Divi? Did that come through? That's nice. It's not. It's still down the same. I think they're going to be able to come back up. <laughs> Can I remove my NQ? Uh, maybe here shortly. We'll find out. Depends on what Powell says. Yeah, weed stocks are big pop right there. WBD's on the high as well, too. WD pop in here. 
Spotify's still holding the TikTok news from earlier. Open AI introduces chat GBT plus subscription of $20 a month. Microsoft might react to that. Microsoft just hasn't done anything here though. Expected rate hike is 25 and it's a 99.7% probability. Devon Energy says service company investor returns is bullish for energy. The Last of Us. I heard about it. I want to see it. But WBD's on been on fire. Well, we may pop after Powell. Yeah, again, I mean, anything could happen. I'm telling you, we've seen a lot of different Fed meetings. The last Fed meeting was a pure shit show, and it moved very, very odd. So, you know, the, get ready and keep in mind every 15, 15 to 17 minutes is kind of where the trends form. And it can tell you a lot. This is kind of like a pseudoscience I apply to it. But so if it if it starts to like look a little bit of a tight range or it starts to like hold, then then there it is. Then you'll know kind of it just be cautious. But I wouldn't be surprised to see a huge drop and then a huge pop and then you know, kind of stay a couple for 10 minutes and then it'll eventually hit a point where it can't really do something and then it'll be re waiting to react to, to everything else. I played SQQ. I want SQQ below $39. So it's almost there, but I would grab SQQ at like 39 flat or 38. That's when we last flipped it. We made some good money on it with shares. If Powell blesses the market, well, if Powell, if the market goes up based on Powell saying soft landing or Powell believes that the economy isn't doing that bad and, and says good things, that will benefit uh, UNG. Again, the whole idea is if there is any chance of a, a resurgence in inflation, UNG should be the, the primary candidate. Otherwise, if there's anything negative about it, anything negative about the economy or even more rate hikes and, and, you know, leaving that door open, it should be negative again. Did you say you made 12K? I thought it was a 9,000. So 9,000 just on shares this month in January. And then I made like another like one or 3,000 uh, realized on futures. But then I've, I've been dealing with these other futures here for a while. So I have a lot of unrealized there and I still have live unrealized share losses. So I probably have another like three, four grand in share losses that I could realize just I LMT and Boeing uh, and then the Facebook. But uh, I could, you know, again, I have the time on them, but like realize all these little flips you've seen on here, they've added up to like 9,000 bucks on the month. Arcad in flex mode. Well, I'm just showing you what's possible with shares. I mean, at the end of the day. I don't, I don't really care about it. Uh, I don't even like, I mean, $9,000 doesn't seem like it's a, it's a good amount, but it's not anything like, you know, you've, you've watched me make that in a day on futures, but it's just the whole point I've been trying to say is that if you have a decent account, even if you have a small account, uh, you know, it's, uh, it could go a long way and that's what you could do. You're kidding. You sound, did you go to high school with me? You sound like you went to high school with me. Like you one of them high school, you're like, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. You going to make fun of my Honda now? you be like, oh, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Oh, you kidding now? Oh, you kidding now, huh? Oh, we got it funny, man. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> ah. Selling NQ on good reaction? No, I'm, well, I'm not going to. NQ will not make a move until I hear from Powell. Flipping and it's a mix of both. A mix of both. A mix of both. That's all. Like usually, if I could get quick flips, I flip them out. If it goes against me, I usually just ride it out till it comes back. But I took losses today. Like I took a loss on Broadcom. I might be down to take my GE losses because again, I have these realized profits. But I just want to make sure I don't have too much fluctuation now as the event comes in. So, like, there's, like, small ones I could just close out right now. They're not too big. And then, again, some even have paid me dividends, too. But 
Uh, I'm just waiting. I want to see. I got a kind of a plan here, but the point is, bro, small shares works. Like, that's all you got to do. Like, for real, if if you're not, if you can't stack up constantly and consistently with the options or your the premiums get high and they keep screwing you over, you you know, with a couple thousand bucks, man, you get way more flexibility with shares and, you know, you could build something up. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a lot harder to lose. So that's a thing, too, is that pretty much it makes my margin of error a lot bigger. So like I can make mistakes. I could be too early. I could be too late. And it doesn't cost me as much as certain, you know, plays. And then the best part is as long as I'm, I'm keeping this balance in check and I'm able to play through it and, you know, ride with it, it, it could always come back. And, and that's happened uh, several times. So that's the key. I think Meta is going to go down, but, you know, I'm betting on it. Yeah, shares has zero fees. No fees at all. No commissions. That's why it's like, it's great. And then you do, I mean, bro, even if you hit 20 bucks a day, you go 50 bucks a day, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's it add, that shit adds up. It's, it's a weird concept. Not really, but I think a lot of people underestimate it. And you would be surprised. All right, coming right back down, a couple of red candles across the board. Is oil dropping again? I think so. Mm. EG and C monthly dividend. Uh, isn't is this a bond ETF though, or is it a mortgage? I think AG and C is a mortgage rate, right, or something like that. I'm just sketched out. I'd rather buy UWMC, but I've I've heard if it's one of the if it's a high yield in mortgage one, I know about it. Redfin, Redfin was a killer play, man. I mean, we just stole it three dollars. <laughs> yalla, Habibi, yalla. I think it's above its 200 day moving average now. First time in two years. You know they have earnings in two weeks. You better hope they hit. Otherwise. Gonna be like, why did I buy Redfin? I don't know why I bought it. I don't know why I bought it. Why did that happen? I didn't mean to. Mm. Where can I watch the live F Fed FOMC? I think they might have it on Rumble somewhere. Or you have HBO Plus. Is that what it's called? Or HBO Max? I don't know which one it is. I don't know. It might come to Netflix. I'm not too sure. So that's, you could look around any of those places. They might have it, you know. Uh, I don't know if it's on cable. I'm just going to use my antenna to figure it out. But you got a couple of places there. I think, I don't know, if it might be before or after the UFC fight. I'm not too sure. So if you have pay-per-view, it might be like a pregame. It's on Disney Plus, really? Wow, they're expanding their content. Nice, Disney. It's on Disney Channel. That'd be dope, bro. Selena Gomez come out and said, hey, here's Fed Chair Jerome Powell. <laughs> just kidding. I'm Selena Gomez. I'm old now. I'm just kidding. I can't call her old. I have no hairline. <laughs> I'm bearish on Meta because they've gone up 57% Uh off of like one comment of them saying that they're going to cut spending. So I just don't think it's as tangible. And I mean, even Snapchat wasn't that great. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, I could get, I could get washed on it, but that's all I'm, I just don't think they had a material impact. Like when you compare Netflix's 50% run up, like Netflix had a material change in their earnings and it was, a, it took time to get there. Whereas Meta, <laughs> it's just like Meadow is like, okay, Mark Zuckerberg's not going to spend as much money. And they're like, okay, good, good. But we have no evidence of it. And I mean, God knows what some of the sales were looking like. I did. I did. I have seen a recent trend, though. Them Oculuses have been selling kind of heavy, bro. It's pretty crazy. The Oculus, they've been they've been getting more of those sold. I, I, I'm actually surprised by that, though. That one, I think, might be a little bit. That could be a surpriser for them. And I don't know if people are, are bidding into that, but I think uh I think it's they've they've been selling, bro. 
They've been like I think in the last two or three months, some of the trends of the Oculus, it's gone up a lot. Like people are buying that shit all of a sudden. Service now pop in. They cut prices. Well, it's good though. I mean, if it leads to adopt, but they've sold. I I just remember it was dry. Like not too many people were buying them. But then like, I think it was because of the holidays. Uh, but they I think they had a good holiday season on the Oculus. I believe in Meta for the long run, but I just thought it would be a good short there comparing it to Netflix. I mean, we picked up some, we, you know, we have 60%. That was a solid pick. I like everything we added, man. I, li I like it uh, just, you know, going for short-term flips. If they do good, I'll just cover it and then go home and that's it. <laughs> I'm feel, I'm holding short shares. I have a hundred shares short. FedEx again. I love you, Chad. Two hundred on FedEx. That's the money. So if it goes above here, I don't know. It could start to get real jumpy. You might have seven more dollars if it fills that gap. Real, yeah. You actually might have that. FedEx is big at two hundred. After hours, I don't really care about anybody but Meta. But since I love you, I will. I'll get you a list. That's, I'm just focused on Meta. I don't care about anyone else. Cause then and then Apple, Apple, Amazon, and all that tomorrow. So today, after hours, you're gonna get Elf, PTC, MSTR, Quavo, or QRVO. I'll call it Quavo. McKesson, Meta, Met, Musa. I, I think that's my Ummu's name, and then CTVA. My mic is cut. What do you mean? Now you hear me now. I mean, my mic is clapped. How is it clapped? How about, do you hear me now? Hello. Refresh. Oh, they don't want you to get the info. Dang, bro, we only have 30 minutes. Do you hear me now? Refresh. I sound beautiful in my own ears. Uh, <laughs> Okay, well, I told you, uh, again, you got MSTR, ELF, PTC, Quavo, QRVO, RRX, Holex, CHRW, McKesson, Meta, Musa, CTVA, and then Align Technologies. <laughs> Bro, FedEx again. Mm -mm -mm. I think it's getting better. FedEx break it 200. I got you, bro. I I had to do, thank you for th saying thank you, man. You know, I had to sacrifice. I got 40 bucks. I think I would have made like 100. So that's cool. Kept it small. But that was a good one, man. Proud of you. I can hear you on my phone. I think if you refresh, you'll be good. I don't know. Twitch, you have problems on Twitch? I think Twitch is good. Remember, we have a backup too. That's it, man. We're getting game time for we're game time for Pal, man. Best in the world. You know, YouTube, you got to like the video. You got to like the video and subscribe. That's it. Cuz you know, YouTube trying to keep us down out here, man. You got to show some love. Mm. -hmm. Refresh on mobile, fixed it. Got to stretch out a little bit. I'm reloaded. Twitch is the main channel in my heart. Yeah, man, you don't even watch the watch list. And then you send me a Seeking Alpha link. But I feel I feel like the Twitch is like a true stepchild. Now I know what it's like to be a stepfather. Like I think I think the Twitch is uh I think the Twitch is like
He's a good kid. You know what I'm saying? But he's a little little dickhead sometimes with, with no respect. I'm not talking about you, Fed. I'm just saying some of y'all on Twitch, y'all get crazy sometimes. So that's why. But I'm like, it's like I think he's a good kid, but I'll, I'll never I'll never love him like my own. Uh, <laughs> like, but, you know, maybe one day, one day, you know, if my if my if my blood born YouTube child gets like addicted to drug and start hanging out with Hunter, you know, I might I might start to invest. I might start to, to start to start going in there. You know, I mean, like I gave up on my own blood. Here you go. You do, you know, you're a good kid, man. And then maybe, maybe we reconnect in five, 10 years. And I'm like, you know, maybe I should have gave you more attention. Maybe honestly, you were actually the good kid. So I don't know that hurt. No cap. Is it because you're a stepchild or is it because you're on Twitch? I'm still not, I don't know why, but it's okay. You know, it's all, it's all love. It's all love. This is all. I've never, I do. We've been good on the Twitch. We've kept the Twitch alive for like a year, bro. Just straight burning my CPU Having it up there, bro. It's great. It's great. Mm-hmm. The prodigal Twitch. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Maybe that. Maybe that's it. Maybe like prodigal son and stepchild. Maybe that's a better one. Mm-mm. -mm. I invest in my friends' kids that seem they'll be winners. I want all the backup in twenty years, bro. That's my plan. That's my. That's how I invested. I invest in anybody. I'm like, you guys got potential, just in case, man. I have crazy tendencies, so I do you day man, I feel. Mm -mm -mm. We don't take you for granted. You don't. You got you got, got we got some good people. The Twitch the Twitch runs it sometimes. That's what I'm saying. You know, it just I naturally I was just born into YouTube. Like that's that's why. So I have I give YouTube the unfair blood advantage, you know? But that's it, you know, it's just good. Mm mm. I left YouTube to be on Twitch. You're just trying to be edgy. It's okay. I understand. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so I know people love Twitch, so they're going to get mad. Like, we I do sound way better on Twitch. I do. Yeah, nep is straight nepotism, 100%. 100%. Three minutes. Uh, I'm going to have it at 45. Analysts are going to come in 15 minutes before the release. But it's game time, baby. <laughs> We're here. Yeah, and better video quality on Twitch. Mm -mm. I don't think Josh's girlfriend would like it if we called him daddy. Nah, you can, but it's just weird. I said a comment one time in the chat. And I think I responded. It was a girl who said something. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. But I made a joke about calling me daddy. And my girlfriend got mad for like a week and a half. Why are you telling girls to call you dead? I'm like, it was a joke. It's not even, I didn't mean it like that. I was trying to address that. So, you know, but you could call. That's fine. I don't, I don't think it's cool though. I think it's weird. If you're a grown man calling me daddy, I just, I think it's a little bit, uh, it's a little weird. You know what I'm saying? It's a little, you know, I think it's uh, like, Hey, I'm not going to judge you, but. I'm uh, just, you know, I, I, I don't know where that comes from, <laughs> you know, I'm just, I'm, I need, I guess I need more answers. I guess I need more answers. We'll go to Puerto Rico. What's up, papi? Uh, excuse me. Hmm? You got to know the rules. Nah. I said, if you're going to get mad on what I say on the internet, you might not be cut out for this. That's what I told her. And then she slapped me. And then I cried. But still, I said it. I said it. <laughs> you know, that's it. I, had, I stood by it. You know, I didn't follow through as well, but I still, you know, I said it. You know? I got a lot of positions. Uh, I want to cut out a couple, but I'm hoping I could use the release to get rid of stuff, get some slight positivity on some names, and then we're going to start moving the ES and NQ possibly, and then just go from there, man, and then just go from there. Buzzer beater candle. We're, we're building it up. Again, it was it did it here. You could have died from there. 
but you're starting to form the uptrend. And this whole time, VWAP's been coming down, but volume is lower. So that's what you got to watch out for. Again, news is kind of slowing down. We're going to get analysts in about 15, 15 minutes, and we're going to be good. Ah. A lot of things bouncing. And again, the chips, dude, 9% on AMD. 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 There it is. There's your pop now to VWAP. That's it. You're getting close to the event now. <laughs> again, this is all very low volume of the day right now. This is hideous. 29 million by hour number four. Bruh. That's very, very bad. That's like 7 million an hour. 7.2 million volume an hour for the last four hours. That's very, very low. And 15 million came in in the first hour, I believe, or 12 million. So just get ready, whatever. Everything's going to change once this shit comes out. I'm ready. You ready? Let's get in my bag on heavy. I zoom, zoom, zoom to the fatty. Speaking for all supercomputers, we love Lisa. Lisa Sue's a G, bro. I do like her a lot. I think that's a good CEO right there. Again, the options market's only pricing in like a 1% move on the day. So we have 30, 27 minutes. 27 minutes, the release is going to come out. And again, we know what to look for pretty easy. Uh, we're going to be watching the... Uh, we're going to be looking at the, um, the statement and if they make any of those changes. And then uh, at 30, we're going to be getting the uh, press conference. And then that's it. And it's game time. Mm -hmm. So you're back up to VWAP. Your audience, remember the jobs report. This is like low candle of the jobs report earlier in the morning. And that was the, the that was the only negative of the day. Big jobs report. It's funny. The jobs report was so bad. It was so strong. Everybody ignored the prices paid went up on the ISM. Been here on stream for the last 15 meetings. Amen, man. Amen. <laughs> We're all nerds because we actually we watch all of these meetings intently. So it's good. It's good, man. It's an honor to be able to share it with y'all. I hope you're ready for it. And like I said, man, control the emotions because, uh, you know, just don't forget. I mean, I brought this up last time. Every other one of the Fed meetings, man, you know, throughout the last year, this, this isn't going to be as easy. Uh, just you've had different reactions to different Fed meetings all along the way. So... Just keep in mind what could happen here. I think April, and this was a June meeting too. So uh, I think six or seven times it's gone up. Uh, and, you know, there there could be a lot. Actually, let me even get you a ECMI right now. Market impact monitor. Mm -mm. So we're going to go based off of the futures. So here are the last couple of times. This is the first hour. I'll switch it to six hours. But uh, the purple line, this is last June. So literally right when the release came out, uh, you were up almost 1% by the press conference. And then the press conference shot you up. Uh, July, that is the green line, a very similar move, a little less, it's about three quarters of a percent and then you continued up after the press conference 30 minutes in uh the baby blue line you see the baby blue one right here uh that one was in september and you dropped and then right when the press conference started you rallied up to half a percent you dropped one percent 
and then came back up. And I ah, uh, July might have been SCP. July, and then November is the red line. November, you were up, and then you dropped one. You went up 1%, and then you dropped 1%. And then December, that one, what color is December? Yellow. So last Fed meeting, we dropped, and then you stayed down. That's the first hour. So let's see the last six hours. This one's interesting because you have to factor in. Uh, it's only two. You only have two hours afterwards. So really, one hour is more decisive. But you're either going to – you had one – uh, last June, you ended up uh, positive 2%. The green one again, July, you ended up 1%. Or really by end of the day is like right here at two hours in. The red one, that was November. You were down 2%. And then the yellow one, that was last December. We were at 2%. And then remember the next day or 1% down. Then the next day you got absolutely abolished. So believe it or not, the average move by close is a negative half a percent reaction. And then if it's a positive, like if it ends up being taken positive, average move is 1.3. And then if it's negative, the average move is 2% down. So quite interesting. Carvana's on the high too, if you're into that. So we got about six minutes here and analyst comments are going to be popping in. Or no, nine minutes. Hey, love the breakdown. Negative questioners. Howard Snyder, Rachel Siegel, Steve Matthews, Neil Irwin, Grady Trimble, Brian Chung, Nicole Goodkind, and Gene Young. Positive questionnaires. Gianna Smilet, Colby Smith, Nick Timmerhouse, Nancy Genzer, Michael Aki, uh, Chris Rugabar, and Victoria Guido of the New York Post. I love I love her name. I always remember it because I think of Jersey Shore. I'm like, they got Sammy up. Oh, wait, never mind. Oh, man. Oh man, I need to go pee. I'm getting excited. <laughs> I just, I just down this car, but I gotta go pee again, man. Mm -hmm. Yep, we gotta go, mom. We gotta go. All right, follow me on Instagram at the Trading Fraternity. This is the private one. Don't fall for the fakes out there. I love you. I'll be right back. Into the neighborhood that they need to be, according you know to traditional policy rules, including the policy rules. Uh, I, I've worked on rates are in restrictive territory. If you look at real rates, I do think you need to do both. You need to move rates into a somewhat restrictive territory and you need to keep them uh, there. So I don't think of it so much of as a trade off as I think they need to do both. And I think uh, later this year that that's where we're going to end up. I'm taken by the belief out there that the economy will fall apart as we migrate towards a legitimate real rate. What is your reading of the history of monetary policy and what it means for the greater economy? If we do raise rates, what happens to the broad economy? Well, we, got, we went through a remarkable period, really, from 08 uh, and, and through the pandemic, uh, when rates were historically uh, low. That was the right call, given that we had disinflation. Uh, right now, it is also the right call for the Powell Fed to be into uh, restrictive territory. You know, Tom, if they get the funds rate to five and a quarter by May, which the December dots indicated that they, they might do, that would be the funds rate that we had back in 2006 under then-chair uh, Bernanke. So it's not ancient history, but it's long enough ago that it, it may take time for markets to get used to rates at this level for some time. Rich, fantastic to have you with us on the program again. Yeah. Thanks for being with us. If you the bet. Fed chair is asked, and we imagine he will be asked this in about an hour from now, whether we've seen an unwarranted easing of financial conditions. How would you expect him to approach that question? Well, you know, John, it's a little trickier now that than it was in the trap. summer, because in the summer conditions were easing when the inflation data was terrible. Now we've had three landing. good months of inflation data, of, of wage inflation uh, decelerating. And so I, th I think it would, it would not be right for him to push back entirely on the fact that the policy in place is starting to uh, succeed. You know, you don't want to walk away from, from progress. But I think he'll emphasize there's still a ways to go. They're going to keep at it till the job is, is done. And remember, even with 
these good recent uh, inflation prints, inflation's still running about a point higher at least point higher, point uh, higher, than, at than least. they want it to. So I think that's how he'll try to balance it at the press conference. They've also got to communicate that in the statement as well. Now, Rich, I know we're getting in the weeds here, but you've been around yeah. the table. You've put these things together time and time again. In that statement, there is this phrase, is ongoing Pinko's increases. It's getting a lot of advisor. attention by from economists on Wall Street. How do you think they'll approach that particular phrase today in the statement? Well, you've zeroed in, I think, on, on, on the money question, John, for, Tom, John, for the statement it, itself, because increases is plural. Um, and uh, and I, my gut feeling tells me that, that that phrase will stay in, because I think if they take it out, um, then it really does begin to constrain what they can do in subsequent meetings. They may add an adverb or a qualifier in the sentence. I've been known to recommend such things, but I do think, and we'll know in, in, in 20 minutes, I think ongoing increases, plural, will will stay in. Ah, when we talk about the Fed and how much it pushes said. back against an easing in financial conditions, do you think, like your colleague uh, Abby Joseph Cohen at uh, Columbia, formerly <laughs> of Goldman Sachs, was saying earlier today, do you believe that equity valuations... All right, well, so again, some people think it's going to stay there. It shouldn't change. If it does change, then there you go. And there you go. So about three minutes. Get ready, Chattadonia. Uh, we're going to start going over a lot of stuff here. I'm going to send out a stream alert. No, not three minutes for pal. Three minutes for analyst. I'm going to just start going over everything. We're going to see what people are saying. We're going to read a lot of different opinions from across the board. Uh, and then 15 minutes after that, we will uh, then have the release. And then we're, we're going to go from there. It will be quite exciting. Again, my first move is going to be going straight. Uh, again, we're going to go straight to here. I'm going to go to the meeting itself. Uh, and I'm going to read the statement and look for an immediate change uh, when it comes out, and then we're going to read everything else from there. But that will pretty much be the uh, the game changer when it's all said and done. So get ready for it. It's going to be hype. Make sure you like the video. Show some love. We, we need like 10 likes. Y'all got 10 likes left? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm keeping it small today. Y'all doing good. But two minutes, we will begin. And uh, this is it. This is the this is the final the final tunnel. Then it happens. Oh, what's up, Fardy? God bless you. Oh, we got, was that, who was that, Luis? Happy birthday to my only son, Luis Garcia. He's been listening since I have. He's a future business leader. Let's go, Luis. It's game time, baby. It's game time, Luis. Hey, man, future leader. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> game time, man. Game time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Get ready, man. Yeah, happy birthday, baby. Happy birthday. It's game time. I keep working hard, get that long term too. And let's see what happens today, man. I hope you all respect the market. I hope you're ready for both sides. Mm -mm -mm. There, yeah, you actually haven't heard a lot from the Fed. There was a blackout period and they kind of stuck to it. A little bit of a cheek lay here again. Volume is still very, very low. And get ready for everything. That's it. This is going to be the final. The final setup. Let's see. The, these are your five. Speak now or forever hold your peace. We're going to see what every analyst, uh, all the Fed watchers are about to come out now. I'm still, I'm holding the bonds. Yeah, I think the bonds could get killed. I'll just tell you now. If you're in that bond play, you have a real nice gift right now. You could either be walking away with a small profit or break even. The bonds might move more than the futures today. So just keep that in mind. The bonds could get very, very wicked. Uh, so, you know, for real, you better know what you want with it. Figure it out. Maybe make sure you have enough money for the next move. And it's going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy. The bonds are real. Again, because whatever Powell says, the release... Everybody is going to be there. So here it is. 
uh, the economics reporter for Bloomberg. He's saying they're going to be guiding through the FOMC. It is widely expected on Wall Street and has been pretty clear and signaled by the Fed that we will get a quarter point hike to an upper bound of 4.75. While that will be the smallest hike after 650 basis points or 75 basis point hike, it is still lifting the target rate to the highest point since 2007. The key news from the meeting will be guidance on rates and Powell's press conference. So that is our first comment right there. Again, after today, you will be at the highest rate since 2007 and all eyes are firmly on the guidance for rates. So the key word to watch for the FOMC statement is ongoing, as we've already shared with you. In recent meetings, the Fed has pledged ongoing interest rates, which implies at least over the next couple of meetings. Some on Wall Street see that it being toned down to allow for the possibility of a pause in May. Thus, ongoing could be replaced with further tightening, which would be re read as dovish. If ongoing stays, the presumption is the base case is for hikes at the next two meetings as well as today. So that's a very, very good one. If it doesn't change, base case is a quarter basis point from here on out until March or March and June uh, or March and April or May. The main question today will be the Fed signaling with regards to monetary tightening to come. The December policy statement said policymakers anticipate ongoing increases and rates will be appropriate. Futures pricing going into today's announcement shows that investors see two quarter point hikes after today's expected move. That leaves just one. If the statement still says ongoing, that suggests a noticeably more hawkish outlook than markets expect. So that's what I was telling you earlier there. It seems like it's there. Some people are saying now, if it is hawkish or if they don't change the ongoing, that could be read as initially hawkish. Uh, this will be a tricky meeting for Fed Powell with inflation near 40-year high. It's still been appropriate to be hawkish in 2022 meetings, but the inflation outlook has substantially improved in recent weeks. Powell will have to acknowledge that the progress and welcome it, but at the same time, he is likely to say that the job is not done to get price increases down to the 2% target. Powell's press conference have sometimes been misread on Wall Street as in July when markets saw an early pivot. Powell is likely to emphasize that there will be no premature end to high interest rates. Uh-oh, hot dog. The FOMC has an annual rotation of voters among Fed presidents coming in at the FOMC voters will be Chicago Fed's new president, Austin Goolsby, believed to be dovish, Philadelphia's Patrick Harker and Dallas's Lori Logan, both seen as centrist and Minneapolis's Neil Kishkari, who is currently an arch hawk. So again, you have not had any, you only had two dissents on the last one. So as far as Powell has been in chair from 2018 or so, You've had about six dissenting ones, so that will be something to watch here. Uh, that's something I've even noticed myself is that any time there has been a, a dissent, it's usually a 2% a plus day. So while the Fed's voting panel has changed since the start of the year, communication from officials before the blackout period didn't seem to suggest the possibility of any dissent. But surely we must be approaching this point where there will be divided votes on how much further the Fed ought to raise rates. I wonder if Powell will hint at anything along those lines in the press briefing. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Ten minutes remaining. The FOMC was worried in December that financial conditions, stocks, bonds, and dollar and mortgage and lending rates might become too easy, countering their effort to bring back a below-trend growth to cool prices. Since then, conditions have eased further to the extent easier conditions reflect the market's conviction that the Fed may cut rates prematurely later this year. Fed officials will want to push back against that. The easing in financial conditions sets up the potential for a hawkish meeting or press conference by Powell. I wonder whether Powell will weigh in at all on the recent rally in markets, which has the potential to undo some of the Fed's tightening. We saw in the minutes of December's Fed meeting that officials were concerned about this, but Powell has been very circumspect in addressing this in public comments. Obviously, if he makes very direct comments, it's going to be controversial. He wouldn't want to be saying, I want equities to fall, but at the same time, he is unlikely to want to stoke a rally today. <laughs> oh, man. Understandably, there's plenty of focus on financial conditions and it's likely to be raised at the press conference given the solid rally in risk assets and weakening of the dollar as of late. 
What's less talked about is the inflation-adjusted or real Treasury yields remaining solidly positive. With the Fed's balance sheet running down to autopilot, true, the 10-year yields have rallied some 50 basis points since. It peaked in November around 1.75, but at 1.2, it remains well above the 2022 lows of negative 1.2% real rates, and it has now peaked above that of late 2018. Now you got to wait for the color tie. That could say a lot. That could say a lot. So Gregory Farinello, head of U.S. rates at Amervet Securities, he says, quote, QT is a big part of the real yield story, and it will continue even once the Fed pauses. They are very committed to letting that balance sheet run off, and that paper needs to find a home and pushes up real yields. Yalla. Bloomberg Economics expects the FOMC to raise 4.5 to 4.7 with the potential for dissent from one or more regional presidents who might prefer a 50 basis point hike. Our estimate of the FOMC suggests that median votes still see a terminal rate of 5.25. The key will be whether the policy statement keeps the following. The committee anticipates ongoing increases. If so, then 5.25 remains the baseline. Emissions would signal that a sizable group likely favors pausing at 5%. Powell will likely acknowledge some progress in the Fed's battle, but stress there is still some ways to go before inflation is reliably back to target. Nine minutes till the release, Chad. I feel like time is slowing down, huh? Don't you feel it? Uh, Chief Economist Anna Wong, she says, we expect the FOMC to downshift to 25. Fed Chair Powell will likely signal the Fed is still on track to raise rates to a peak of 5.25 and that policymakers don't foresee cutting rates at all this year. FOMC members need to see more convincing signs of disinflation, particularly in the labor market, before they can be confident inflation is moving durably downward towards the 2% target. Hmm. Uh, Ira Jersey, I uh, love this guy, says the Fed's post-meeting statement may acknowledge the slowing economic landscape requiring Powell to emphasize that central bank plans to hold rates steady for a longer time than the market is pricing in. He says we think job losses will be key for the Fed to consider cutting rates. Otherwise, on hold will remain the base case. So since November 3rd highs, the market implied projections for the upper bound of the terminal rate came down from over 5.25 to just over 5, while the expectations for December 20, 2023 have came down by 50 basis points, around to 4.5 from 5. The results is there is now 75 basis point difference between the Fed's year-end projection and the markets as shown. So that is the, uh, the game of chicken that we have brought up a couple of times. So here's an accompanying graphic. But we've talked, That's I've showed you this in a different way, but there is three rate hikes difference or one big one. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, we get, getting a couple more. Uh, rate traders think that the odds favor stopping by March with less than 50 basis points for the next two meetings while the Fed thinks policy will break over 5.1. Rate traders have been fading that call fairly consistently since December, and they see a top around 4.9 for the June meeting. January strong bond market performance leaves a two-year note yielding between 4.2 and 10-year under 3.5, reinforcing a, a stark divide between investors and Fed policy. A weaker tone in the dollar also reflects the sense that the Fed is closer to taking a pause. Ian Ligon at BMO Capital sums this up. Investors will be viewing today's event through dove-colored glasses. Any comment from Powell that is not explicitly pushing back against the market narrative will be viewed as a tactic endorsement of an assumption that the long-awaited pivot is at hand. What helps Powell push a hawkish line is the labor market on cue. The latest jobs jol jolts job openings released on Wednesday were the highest since last July. A big upside January number on Friday is what the bond market requires to alter its view. Uh, Blarini Arucci, chief economist at T. Rowe Price, says, without data to back this rhetoric, I expect Powell to tone, uh, tone to be challenged by the market. The first step to believing Powell's hawkish message should start pricing the terminal rate in December statement of economic projections, which is yet to happen. Oh, man. Oh, man. Audrey Child Freeman, uh, Bloomberg Intelligence G10 Forex strategist, says a 25 basis point bump in hawkish tone aren't likely to substantially revive a dollar. Uh, the bottom line at the ECB relative policy rate differential will narrow and becoming increasingly euro bullish this year. And at that time, when growth becomes more of a currency driver, risk reward has clearly turned positive for the euro dollar. 
Uh, market watchers have come to a consensus that they think the Fed will do this year in terms of numbers of additional rate hikes. Deutsche Bank says its strategy see two more 25 hikes after this week, partly as the Fed won't want to see financial con conditions ease too much as a result of being too dovish. Meanwhile, Sam Stovall, chief investment at CFRA Research, says that the central bank hike this week might be its final one before it pauses. Uh-oh, hot dog. Pauses for the remainder of the year, he wrote in a note. Uh, we see this Fed contemplating the start of another rate-lowering cycle as the inflation rate edges downward to the desired target. Uh, looking at the last three FOMC meetings here, uh, this is the volatility. Uh, we certainly expect some volatility over the coming hours and day. The risk appears to be to the downside, especially with the NASDAQ up around 10%. Over the last three FOMC meetings, the NASDAQ has declined 47 on average in the week after the announcement. So let's see if Powell weighs in at all on the press conference on the Federal Reserve debt limit standoff. Many economists and formal officials are predicting, uh, where is it, uh, at least a tumultuous showdown as occurred in 2011 when stocks tumble, consumer confidence weaken, and the economy, economic recovery hurt. Wall Street analyst sees the Treasury running out of cash sometime after June. Does the Fed chair weigh in at all in urging everyone to take the default as off the table as soon as possible? Uh-oh, hot dog. Mm-hmm. All right. Four minutes. Terminal rate. He's not supposed to bring it up, though. That's the thing. We don't have summary of economic projections. So it will be interesting to see if Powell hints at it or not. But people are going to be looking for clues there. Fed sentiment is currently at peak hawkishness. At levels last seen in 2019, 2006, and 2000, according to Torsten Locke, chief economist at Apollo Global, who ran Fed minutes through a natural language processing model. With inflation trending lower and growth slowing, we should expect the Fed to turn more dovish after their meeting on Wednesday, he wrote. And the Fed pause is good for credit and equities because then markets know that we are at the end of a rate hiking cycle. So literally, this is based off of a natural language analysis of the minutes. You have the last, you have, you're almost at peak hawkishness. Anything above zero is hawkish, and you have actually gone to 2018 levels and 2006 and 2000. That's a very, very fun one. Uh, Lisa Shallot, uh, chief investment at Morgan Stanley, says easy financial conditions, not validation of the Goldilocks soft landing, have driven the rally, and we believe some of these temporary factors will reverse, causing a mid-year liquidity squeeze. Goldman Sachs says how many hikes will be needed to stay on this path is less clear. They expect two additional hikes at 25, but fewer might be needed if weak business confidence depresses hiring and investment or might need it if the economy reaccelerates re as the impact of past policy tightening fades. Fed officials appear to also expect two more hikes and will likely tone down the reference to ongoing. Chad, it's game time, baby. <laughs> All right, we're cutting analyst comments. I hope you got enough there. The I'm going straight straight to the number, man. Straight to the number is all we need. If it says ongoing or not, you have about one minute until it is out. I'm waiting. Someone's like, is it leaked? Is it going? No, no. Don't worry. We'll find out. Unless the bond market. If the bond market's not moved, nothing's leaked. Promise you that one. All right. 50 seconds. We just got, I'm just going to keep refreshing. Good luck, Chad. I wish you the best. I wish you the best, my friends. Let's go. Keep the emotions in check. Make sure you like the video, man. Make sure, make sure you subscribe too, man. Every day. We got you. 30 seconds. Mm -mm. See you on the other side. 20 seconds. You're scared. No, it's going to be exciting. Let's see what we got. 10 seconds until the release. Again, stocks are moving. Bonds are staying frozen. Bonds are frozen right now. Two, one, ding. Bonds down on first move. Spy is down. Uh-oh, what did they do? There it is. I got the statement. Committee and uh, the committee anticipates ongoing increases. So initially hawkish right there. They took out the statement of an uh, they didn't take out the statement. That's all. That's all that matters. 
They say inflation has eased somewhat but remains elevated. Ongoing rate hikes will be appropriate. So that's it. That's the base case. So bonds are dumping on it, but we're going to have to see how Powell is. I don't think you're going to die off of that just yet. But like we said, that will have an initially hawkish tone right there. They didn't change the statement. So that means Powell is still kind of kind of doing his thing there. The Qs are on the high, but first candle down. That's first candle down by, oh, two points, two and a half. Very, very small move compared to last meeting. So I wouldn't get too tripped out about that one. Yeah, we got to wait till the speech. But right now you have a slightly bearish tilt. Uh, again, it could be borderline neutral, but nothing else has changed. Let's see what else we got. The initial read is slightly hawkish with reference to increases, plural. Stock futures are a little bit lower. You're bouncing back up there. He's going to be hot. Again, they just didn't change that. So that's where people were hoping it would change. But that would have definitely green-lighted that he's going to slow down. But I think Powell's going to play the mid card. But you're bouncing off of that now. Rate expectations and treasury yields rise after the they deliver expected quarter point. Terminal rate projections for June meeting swaps rise to 4.95 from 4.94. Two yield extends losses to 4.26 versus 4.21. So drop. Well, just give it a second though. But as of now, you have a slightly bearish tilt, uh, but that could easily be eaten up. That's it. We talked about this all day here. They kept on going increases. Uh, some people thought they would take it out, but it's just like it now. It re now Powell is going to be a wild card. So now, even if you want to try to read Powell as bullish, it's going to be hard because even then in writing, they're saying they're not changing anything. You know, the language is implying now at least two or three more rate hikes where some people thought the latest trends would have led to maybe one or two more. So it just makes your hard landing or your, uh, excuse me, your early rate cut makes it a little bit more difficult. So not much change in the take on the economy. They're emphasizing that the job is yet not done. They say inflation has eased, but somewhat remains elevated. So nothing has really changed. I don't know if you can see it as good. They said all they changed, they said inflation has eased somewhat. They took out reflecting price pressures. So they took out price pressures. I think that's kind of bullish. They took out the war. They took out related events. Uh, and they also said, what is that? They said upward. They said elevated global uncertainty. They changed the percentage amounts. And then they said they took out the plans for reducing balance sheet. They said previously announced plans. Oh, wait a minute. And then they just changed the voters. No dissents. So that's at least decent. So S&P is down 0.5 after the first two minutes. NASDAQ is off by 0.4. So back to normality. That's the 37th 25 basis point rate hike in the last 30 years. Hmm. No, this is just, bro, this is going to be this is going to be fuel for the press conference. Like I was saying, this shouldn't move as big as it did last time. You have uh, once you hear terminal rate, once we hear that, that's what we're going to need to see now, but it seems like ongoing rate increases is kind of getting people there. There's no change in guidance of quantitative tightening. The committee will continue to reduce holdings of treasury securities and agency mortgage-backed debts as described in its previously announced plans. There's a couple names going up. Yeah, the presser is where it's going to be at. Again, Apple, Amazon, those are all over the place. I watch like AMD too. See if any of those, AMD's going up. Anything doing what it was doing before is continuing. So if it was waiting for Powell, it's following the spy. If it was going up ahead of this, it's still going up. If it was going down ahead of this, it's still going down. We don't know about the terminal rate yet. You won't, he might allude to it, but technically speaking, there's no announcement of terminal rate. So based on the language he uses, it could factor it in, but that's about it. So keeping the ongoing increases in the statement, Chris points out is hawkish. It applies more than one. So you could look for another hike in March and May if they follow through with guidance. Uh, that has been a big debate on Wall Street about the wording, and it's not changing, saying they are committed 
to raising rates here. Uh, the key takeaways, they raise benchmark by 25 basis points. Statement repeats prior language of ongoing increasing. Language suggests, uh, suggests Fed inclined towards quarter point hikes at the next two meetings in March and May. And they say inflation has eased somewhat, but remains elevated. That was a change. And they removed prior references to causes of inflation, including pandemic. They also omit prior references to public health as a factor in decision making. And right now they say the decision is unanimous. So no dissents. So pretty much a very unified front at the beginning. But like I said, everything that's going up is still going up. AMD's on the high. You're back at the level where this came out. This isn't the real move. That's it. If you were looking for just a bullish firework, it didn't come in now. And people are interpreting that as hawkish. I say it's slightly hawkish for now, but Powell has the whole world in his hands right now. And then a comment, not all surprised, KPMG's Diane Swank. They say the Fed really has been pushing back on the easing of financial conditions. That's probably why they didn't change the language. Mm -hmm. That's the music they chose. <laughs> okay. We'll set up the video for you. I gotta gotta work it out here in real time, you know. All right. So get ready. That's the next thing we're waiting on. Every, you're back up to where you started. Again, just a lot of emotions here. Everybody doing their thing. The bubbles, I don't think they matter now. You're getting a little bit of a launch here. Yeah, AMD, a lot of things are moving up with it. Mm -mm. I'd watch crypto. You haven't watched. You need like a real risk asset move more or less. Okay, futures are starting to rip here now. So that's what we wanted, but we'll see how long until Powell bats it down. But then the bonds, too, that's that's the real answer. Nothing's really changed right now. Until that bond, until that 10-year, and everybody starts factoring things in. But clearly, watch for any signals of terminal rates. So hiking into a recession. Here is a look at the change leading hiking rates into a recession. That's where February 2020 is. Uh, where else? December 2007, they were cutting into it. Oh, months from recession start. So right here is where the recession begins. So they've hiked into every recession is what this chart is showing you. Uh, we don't care what Powell says. So again, Fed hikes benchmark rate by 25 as expected. Central bank signal further increases are coming. Inflation is somewhat but remains elevated. That was a change. Treasury yields climb. Stock yields hit lows, but bonds are bouncing with it. It could be well FOMC decided that removing ongoing would be too strongly indicative that there's going to be a most only more than one rate hike coming. Even if uh, policymakers, ah, where is it? Uh, think that it's likely they have plenty of time between now and mid-March to shape expectations and react to oncoming data. Dennis debauchery of 22V, as always, wait for the press conference, and in particular, how much Powell focuses on pain. Uh, the need for the economy to take some pain or not. At the last meeting, he was very pain-focused. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I wonder if this is going to give me... Okay, now I think Ethereum's moving. Let's see if this gives us an out on anything that I want to remove. Google's doing decent. No, nope, the Dolby ain't move. PE. Yeah, it's not changing much. Uh, Apple would be nice if it could move up. Not too bad. If I could get how much time we have? Oh, we got 20 more minutes, dog. <laughs> So now you're moving. Now the volume is here on the market. I hope you guys realize that. And then just watch for the bonds to move a little bit more. 
Yeah, I'm way. I like it. I'm just if this could launch anything up that I could exit before, I'm gonna do it. But I'm still writing. I need I need a comment from Powell. That's all you need right here. Amazon starting to launch. Everything's actually moving pretty well. Even FedEx is starting to go. Again, there's Apple. AMD is already up there. See, but some stuff that was already not moving ahead of time isn't. A lot more risk stuff is moving, though. Like, look at Redfin. This is all the volume we didn't get today. Meta's moving. Snapchat's kind of moving. Uh, where's Google? I think Googly Woogly went up for us. What's happening? Uh, kind of what was expected, but you had an initial disappointment for the bulls, but you're just trading within the same range. I, I would wait till the press conference. That's all. It just seems like if if you're a bull or bear, it just seems like Powell is playing the middle right now again. Powell, even though it's this is all going to be dependent on what he says, Powell is just leaving the door wide open now to to do whatever he wants. So who knows what he's going to say, but this this move doesn't even matter right now. That's why I just tell you, if you want to exit something or if you got some plays, you could write it how it is. But as of now, there was nothing in writing to say bullish or bearish. It was a slight hawkish tilt because they could have changed the language and they didn't. They did remove other risk factors uh, as to what is affecting their decisions. They acknowledged inflation coming down, but nothing really too new here. And now all of the volume that wasn't non-existent today, it's coming in now, but uh, just chill for a little bit. Yeah, he's playing zone defense, 100%. It's smart. I, that's it. He's not changing. He's not. He's not boxed in. He still says it, but the like we said, we want to see what he says about terminal rate. If he brings up anything of that nature, watch for soft landing odds question. Watch what he says about core services and real estate. And then the final thing too, if he meant whatever he's going to say on employment will be probably the most important as he will probably touch on wages. But if he, if he comments negative on employment, positive on wages, the market will go up. Uh, if not, but if he, if he kind of bats all of that down, it'll be negative. No, we will see. We will see how we be. Again, you're really not even up. At mo you're really at the high of the day from the morning, but you're getting some of that momentum. He's not playing Goldilocks. He's just buying, again, like we said, it would be hawkish in the sense that Powell, in a weird way, he might start talking like he could do another 50 basis points at the next meeting, and that will scare people, but why put yourself in the box? He's just he's not putting it in writing to clap him pretty much. So he's just doing his thing for now. It's not – I wouldn't take it about I'm on anything. All it is is slight changes – Everything we discussed, you didn't watch any. There's nothing changed. So everything's coming in as expected. What could have been a surprise did not occur. And now you're trading within the same range, but now you just have a lot more volume and just wait for now. Uh, wait for the press conference. I mean, we got 15 more minutes here. No, I'm not averaging down nor selling anything yet. I'm telling you, this conference is going to be fire. So we're going to, if you think this is a big move, you haven't seen anything yet. Just get ready for it. It's going to come in. You know, there's there's going to be some questions here. And, you know, we're prepared for it. We know what to be watching for. So if he says the right or wrong things, then we're going to go from there. And, and honestly, what I'll even tell you, the fact that they didn't change the language too much, I would be on the lookout for any other Fed speakers following today. So there's going to be, you know, they, they're, they could, they're keeping the writing the same if they could find other ways to change expectations. So that's that's what I'd be worried about. Uh, the press conference should be a, a powder keg, but also the next coming days, again, with the language the same, this just is going to make the next few days here a little bit more uh, sketchier. Hmm. There's Apple. Google chilled out a little bit. A couple things are chilling here now. 10K watching. We'll hit that like button, man. We appreciate y'all. We got updates every single day. Free 99. It actually, it costs you a like. That's all we charge you. And get ready, man. We ain't even. We got 15 more minutes. 15 more minutes of dancing. The bonds haven't moved, honestly. I, I would kind of watch out for them. I can't tell which one's lagging or leading. And actually, you know who we haven't looked at today? The dollar. Yeah, dollar's practically unchanged. Mm -mm.
So A.V. Steinhill, Chief Economist, CIBC. She says, uh, nothing to see here, folks, but he, uh, but he adds that, uh, uh, where is it? He adds that the retention of ongoing increases could essentially be an effort to address the easing in financial conditions. That could be an effort to push the bond market towards higher yields in the long run. The language of the Fed statement sets the tone for what is to come from Powell shortly. There is little doubt that the Fed is approaching the last lap of tightening, and it could have easily altered the language around that. For instance, it could have changed ongoing to measured or gradual. The fact that they didn't suggests that we should expect Powell to be hawkish and not cut the markets any slack here. The committee anticipates the ongoing increases in the target will be appropriate in order to maintain a stance of monetary policy that is sufficiently restrictive to return inflation to 2% over time. So looking for the dollar, Child Friedman, BI's chief strategist, says the dollar's up marginally, confirmed hawkish bias, but that is proving short-lived on this bounce as there's nothing particularly new here and nothing to alter what remains a dollar-negative narrative this year. Mm. Yeah, pal. Well, again, he just what he should have done, he didn't. But I think he's just buying him, buying some wiggle room in terms of uh, in terms of just talking here. That's all. But he's gonna come out hawkish. The question is though, like you see it already. I, this is what I was telling you. The market could clearly ignore it. That's all. If he doesn't, I think the only way the market sells off is if Powell wants to be an asshole and say that 50 basis points is still on the table. So, or again, depending on what he says with uh, the soft landing odds, or if he just wants to hammer home the employment, but it's not the, in a weird way, you know, hawkish bias was confirmed off of the language. It's showing Powell's stance, but you know, you're seeing it. The market is not, you know, you're barely moving off of this. I know it sounds weird because you're watching all this volume, but this isn't really as a, uh, as drastic as you would have expected here. Yeah, back to VWAP. And again, take notice, Chad. What did I tell you? Every 15 minutes. So now you're pretty much 15-minute trend is neutral. Half of the time you went up, or a little more than half, and then three minutes after that, four minutes, you've given it back up. But 15 minutes is straight neutralized. Amazon red dollar starting to climb here a little bit. So this one's interesting. That might be our silent leader here on the day. That's the only thing slightly above neutral since it came out where bonds are still a little lower and spy is just at the point. Powell, you have 12 minutes till Powell. Uh, that's great excitement. I'm on it. I'm just, I care about what, this move doesn't even, uh, I feel like a, I feel like a spoiled child. I'm not even excited about this. I, I, that we should have got more. I knew it wasn't going to be as big as last meeting, but this is all still kind of light work. We need, uh, we need that. I, I, what he's going to say, I'm telling you, he might have a trick up his sleeve or if he drops the ball. But what I see is that the bulls are still alive and the bears haven't gotten any surprisers to bring everything down. That's what I'm saying. You need a surpriser. Just like the employment, you see how that surprised people? That shit brought you down instantly. You need a surprise. So if there's no surprise, the bulls are still, they still got their 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 horns up there and they're ready to go. But we got to be able to find that one out. But right now, they're, the only surprise was that the bulls didn't get what they wanted with the change in ongoing increases. So yeah, someone has to ask the right question or he has to say something about liking wages not being down or he has to, again, I'm t I think the easy way is if Powell just really wants to smoke out the, the bulls and just say 50 basis points still exists. If he says that, someone's going to ask him about 25 basis points, and then he's probably going to say, well, we could do 25 in the next couple of meetings, or we could do 50. That's why we said on, but we don't know, and he said we're going to need to be confident. So we're going to find out there, but it's, it's all, it all depends on this presser right here. That's what you really, really need. And then where's the yen? Um, it's going to be reactive to the dollar, but keep that one in mind. Yeah, it looks just like the dollar. 40, 60. Yeah, this, dude, this is uh, it's negative tilt slightly, but like we're saying, you're very, very neutral from the release. Ben Jeffrey, BMO, says biggest takeaway. 
along with widely expected 25, was that the Fed opted to leave ongoing with the formal language and indicated that there are more tightening moves to be realized this cycle. He adds that the phrase pace of future increases transition to the extent of future increases, reinforcing the idea that future rate hikes will be at pace consistent with what we got today. And then you're holding 10 more minutes. 10 more minutes, Chattadonia. Uh, everything is still relatively the same, surprisingly or not. Mm. Okay, spies coming back up, but bonds are dry. So this is where you this is where shit gets different. Watch if the dollar comes down, but now yields are going up. Bond market. So if bonds come down and stocks go up, that's going to start creating a gap here for Powell. One of them might be leading. You want to see, does everybody, if nothing changed, did the bond market change its stance to disagreeing with Powell? That's pretty much what we're looking at here. Mm -hmm. and then dollar stopped moving. B day decided to try paper trade. Let's go, Robert. Happy birthday, baby. God bless the chair. Y'all showing out today. Okay, so I need y'all need to help me out though today. I need to make sure y'all really like the video. I need to make sure y'all really subscribe. Otherwise, YouTube won't let us stream if you don't subscribe, man. So I know you here right now. I know you hear me. I know you hear. Me. Okay. Anyways, but we got ten more minutes or eight more minutes now. God bless you, man. Shout out to Robert, Mr. Ruiz, birthday. It's the terminal rate. It does matter, but again, technically, we're not supposed to know the terminal mat the terminal rate or whether or not Powell is really going to stick to that. Uh, but he might allude to it, which will be one of the uh, the bigger factors here that we're going to be looking at. And then don't forget, you still got a couple of earnings here along the way. Diane Swank, chief economist KPMG, says that the Fed remains prepared to overshoot with rates rather than risk undershooting. She makes an interesting point. The economy is in a situation it would likely respond quickly to lower rates. Balance sheets are strong, so that reduces the cost of overshooting. The Fed could be confident that if it didn't turn out that they hiked too much, they could course correct that limited cost. And indeed, if household and companies were in financial disrepair, imagine they wouldn't react low to lower borrowing costs. They wouldn't want to take on more debt. That is not the case today. Uh, B.I.'s jersey says the statement was in line with expectations. He says that leading up to the presser, it's reasonable to think that Fed may try to convince the markets that the cut won't come early. Powell could do this 50-50 chance he does, in my view, by saying they won't cut until the employment situation deteriorates meaningfully. Again, very, very neutral right now, man. Actually, pretty wild. Pretty wild on the level of neutral. Hmm. So here you go. Here's Vanguard CIO. I'm going to go pee as we get ready for it. Seven minutes until the big one, baby. Seven minutes. Great job at that. You know, when we think about how we're looking at the economy going forward for the remainder of this year, you know, we're seeing inflation come down at 3% around that range at the end of this year. But that last mile, that last mile from 3% to 2% is going to be a bit challenging, just given that's going to be driven more by what's happening in services. And so that's where we think there's going to be some challenges. And then when you think about the markets more broadly, when you look at valuations, bonds are back. You know, we're back to a place now where bonds are actually offering attractive yields. We're at a place now where even in money market funds, you're actually being paid to save money, where in the last decade, you were not being paid to do that. And so what we've been trying to counsel our clients on is the fact that don't leave money sitting in a bank account where it's earning 30 basis points at max, where you can sit there and invest in a money market fund where you're earning 4.3% or so. Yeah. That's real money. We were talking about the market response to this somewhat, some would say hawkish, some would say in uh, actuality dovish statement. There was a comment out on Twitter by an FX trader basically saying, right now, words mean very little from the Federal Reserve. Bonds know this, that the market basically is looking past anything the Fed will say. Is there anything that Fed Chair Jay Powell could say in, say, eight minutes time that will catch your attention that will make you shift your view? I think a big part of it is really how he's thinking about the market more broadly. And when we look at financial conditions and the fact that they've, they've eased up so much over the course of the last six months or so, if he were to come in and say something more aggressively than what the market's expecting. So, again, our view is that there's going to be a couple more rate hikes, which is in line with the language. But if he were to say, 
you know, the market is way off base. I don't think that's going to necessarily be perceived well by the equity markets, which in our view uh, still seem a bit stretched from our perspective. So that's actually uh, what I would. Well, he says they're well off base. I like that. This is an interesting one. Uh, Dan Curtis points out that the change in the two year has been more muted on this in December's than uh, December's Fed days compared with any meetings going back to March of last year. The press conference is still to come, but the yield rose three basis points today and declined 0.8 last time around. Last March, on the other hand, it rose nearly nine basis points. Yeah, bro, bonds are muted. Pretty crazy. And then they took out the public health, but we'll see. If Powell wants to go crazy with the language, we're going to find out. Dollar's still elevated. Stocks kind of matched up here with the bonds on that move, but nothing else is here. Get ready. So four minutes here until the presser. Uh, we'll see his tie and uh, how long it takes him to come out. Mm, and then let me get up my other Google Doc. Just so we have the list of reporters for today. Again, we're going to have a couple of them. Nah, bonds are this this kind of weird again in the last year off of a fed meeting the the bonds have moved what triple the size of this so i think everybody wants to i think everybody wants that clue on the terminal and if powell whatever he says to to word his way in or out of that i think that will have an effect so we are going to find out here chatadonia it's coming so now bonds are moving first so this is it. If the bomb breath, if everybody starts smashing the ask on the bonds and they're like, screw you, Powell, that will be interesting. So let's see. And again, dollar. So every time bonds take a bid, dollar comes back down. But we still don't have a leader yet. Some on Wall Street are reading the change of extent of future increases from pace as being dovish, suggesting we're near the end. I'm not sure if it's 100 percent why the FOMC changed the wording. Perhaps Powell, oh man, watch out. The bulls. The Bulls found a way to do it. This is what I was talking about. That's the that's the whisper right now. They're saying extent of future increases was different rather than further ongoing. They're saying extent. Hold on. I'm going to double check this right now. <laughs> I told you, bro, they fi might find a way to ignore Papa Pow. Where was it? to attain in determining the extent of future increases in the target range. Let me see if I could get this strike through. What does that mean? There was a slight change. Uh, they didn't they kept the ongoing, but they changed the word to extent. So let me get it for you. I'm pulling it up. I'm trying to see the side by side. Statements. Okay, today's February 1st. Let's see, right here. Let me show you this one right here. This is now, this is the Bulls are going to, this is going to be the BS bull run if they want it right there. So they kept the line about uh, in determining, say, instead of pace, they changed it to extent. So that might, honestly, that could be very bullish there for the bonds if everybody eats that up. Because now they're saying they're not determining how high to go or, or how fast to do it, but how high, the extent. So this could be the only bullish read on that if people want it. That's what people are going to try to get bullish on. That could go either. That's what I'm saying. I think it's kind of a reach, but it is a change. You see what I'm saying? It's like literally you could compare every other response in the last year, but that is a literal change. And then now if everybody wants to read into that where we got to see how Powell addresses that one. So be on the lookout for that question. I bet you what's his name? Uh, Michael McKee is going to ask him that. So I think we're getting ready here. Uh, game time. No audio. What time is it? 10 seconds. He is not out. Mm.
Okay, this one's behind. I have a faster one. The website's behind. Scammers. Good afternoon and welcome. I'm going to switch it. My colleagues and I understand the hardship that high inflation is causing, and we are strongly committed to bringing inflation back down to our 2% goal. Over the past year, we've taken forceful actions to tighten the stance of monetary policy. We've covered a lot of ground, and the full effects of our rapid tightening so far are yet to be felt. Even so, we have more work to do. Price stability is the responsibility of the Federal Reserve and serves as the bedrock of our economy. Without price stability, the economy does not work for anyone. In particular, without price stability, we will not achieve a sustained period of labor market conditions that benefit all. Today, the FOMC raised our policy interest rate by 25 basis points. We continue to anticipate that ongoing increases will be appropriate That's in order to attain a stance of monetary policy that is sufficiently restrictive to return inflation to 2 percent over time. In addition, we are continuing the process of significantly reducing the size of our balance sheet. Restoring Again, price stability will likely happen require at the last maintaining meeting. a restrictive stance for some time. I will have more to say about today's monetary policy actions after briefly reviewing economic developments. The U.S. economy slowed significantly last year, with real GDP rising at a below-trend pace of 1 percent. Recent indicators point to modest growth of spending and production this quarter. Consumer spending appears to be expanding at a subdued pace, in part reflecting tighter financial conditions over the past year. Activity in the housing sector continues to weaken, largely reflecting higher mortgage rates. Wow, he addressed these. these higher interest any... rates and slower output growth also Again, appear to be weighing minutes. on business fixed investment. Despite the slowdown in growth, the labor market remains extremely tight, with the unemployment rate at a 50 year low, job vacancies still very high, and wage growth elevated. Job gains have been robust, with employment rising by an average of 247,000 jobs per month over Spy the last three months. Spy hit a new low before bonds. Although the pace of job gains has slowed over the course of the past year and nominal wage growth has shown some signs of easing, the labor market continues to be out of balance. Labor demand substantially exceeds the supply of available workers, and the labor force participation rate has changed little from a year ago. There it is. Bonds Inflation are remains well gapping. above our longer run goal of 2 percent. Over the 12 months ending in December, total PCE prices rose 5.0 percent. Excluding the volatile food and energy categories, core PCE prices rose 4.4 percent. There it is. New low on the, the Inflation spy. data received Bonds over the past three months show a welcome reduction in the monthly pace of increases. And while recent developments are encouraging, we will need substantially more evidence to be confident that inflation mm -hmm. is on a is. sustained downward path. Despite elevated inflation, longer-term inflation <laughs> expectations appear to remain well anchored, as reflected in a broad range of surveys of households, businesses, and forecasters, as well as measures from financial markets. But that's not grounds for complacency. Although inflation has moderated recently, it remains too high. The longer the current bout of high inflation continues, the greater the chance that expectations of higher inflation will become entrenched. The Fed's monetary policy actions are guided by our mandate to promote maximum employment and stable prices for the American people. My colleagues and I are acutely aware that high inflation imposes significant hardship as it erodes purchasing power especially for those least Dollar able to meet the down. higher costs of essentials Again, spy went lower than like bonds. food, housing, and transportation. All of this is still light. We are highly attentive to the risks that Five inflation poses in. to so both sides four of more, our mandate. Or three more. And we are strongly committed to a returning inflation to our 2 percent objective. At today's meeting, the committee raised the target range for the federal funds rate by 25 basis points, bringing the target range to 4.5 to 4 and 3 quarters percent and we are continuing the process of significantly reducing the size of our balance sheet. With today's action, we have raised interest rates by four and a half percentage points over the past year. We continue to anticipate that ongoing increases in the target range for the federal funds rate will be appropriate 
in order to attain a stance of monetary policy that is sufficiently restrictive to return inflation to 2% over time. We are seeing the effects of our policy actions on demand in the most interest sensitive yeah, sectors of the economy. Yeah, nothing has changed. Every single thing is, is a quote he's already said before. It will take time, however, for the full effects of monetary restraint to be realized. The market especially loves hearing on that. Inflation. That's the lagging effects. In light of the cumulative tightening of monetary yep. policy and the lags with which monetary policy affects economic activity and None inflation, of this is new. This is just the jitters. committee decided to raise interest rates by 25 basis points today continuing the step down from last year's rapid pace of increases. Listen for the word extent. Shifting to a slower pace will better allow the committee to assess the economy's progress toward our goals as we determine the extent of future increases that will be required to attain a sufficiently restrictive stance. That's why bonds are doing better. From we will there. continue to make our decisions. That was the change. Meeting, that right into there. A, taking into but account we need the more totality update of on, but market data might and like their implications it. for the outlook for economic activity and inflation. We have been taking forceful steps to moderate demand so that it comes into better alignment with supply. Our overarching focus is using our tools to bring inflation back down to our 2% goal. He did emphasize the word and to extent. keep longer term inflation expectations. Mm -hmm. But it's not, it's not enough, but that's why I'm not moving yet. Reducing inflation is likely to require a period of below trend growth and some softening of labor market conditions. Restoring price stability is essential to set the stage for achieving maximum employment and stable prices over the longer run. The historical record cautions strongly against prematurely seven minutes. loosening policy. Give him one or two more minutes. We will stay the course until the job is he done. Might finish now. To conclude, okay, we understand that our actions affect communities, families, and businesses across the country. Everything we do is in service to our public mission. We at the Fed will do everything we can to achieve our maximum employment and price stability goals. Thank you, and I look forward to your questions. Seven minutes 30, a lot shorter. So there's your rally. Uh, Chris Rugeber, the Associated Press. Rugeber's uh, thank the you first. For doing this. Uh, as you know, financial conditions have loosened since the fall, with bond yields falling. Already hitting uh, him with it. In, which has also brought down mortgage rates, uh, and the stock market posted a solid gain in January. Does that make your job of combating inflation harder? And could you see lifting rates higher than you otherwise would to offset the increase in, or to offset the easing of financial conditions? He's gonna say something about confidence. So it is important that fin overall financial conditions continue to reflect the policy restraint that we're putting in place in order to bring inflation down to 2%. And of course, financial conditions have tightened very significantly over the past year. Uh, I would say that our focus is not on short-term moves, but on sustained changes to broader financial conditions. You said that last time. And it is our judgment that we're not yet at a sufficiently restrictive policy stance, which is why we say that we expect ongoing hikes will be appropriate. Of course, many things affect financial conditions, uh, not just our policy. He's not batting it uh, down. And we will take into account overall financial conditions along with many other factors as, as we set policy. Wow. That's kind of bullet. He didn't bat it down. Hi, Chair Powell. Thank you for taking our questions. Rachel Siegel from the Washington Post. These are Over the, the last quarter, we've seen a deceleration in prices, in wages. She and usually a fall talks in unemployment. Spending, all while the unemployment rate has been able to stay at a historic low. Does this at all change your view of how much the unemployment rate would need to go up, if at all, to see inflation come down to the levels you're looking for? So I, I would say it is a, it is a good thing that the the disinflation that we have seen so far has not come at the expense of a weaker labor market. But I would also say that that, that disinflationary process that you now see underway uh, is really at an early stage. Uh, what you see is really uh, in the goods sector, you see inflation uh, now coming down uh, because uh, supply chains have been fixed, demand is shifting back to services and uh, uh, shortages are, have been abated, so you see that in the um, uh, in the other in the in the other uh, in in the uh, housing services sector, we expect inflation to continue moving up uh, for a while, but then to come down, assuming that new leases continue to be lower. Same so same in those response. two sectors, you've got a good story. Uh, the issue is that we have a, a large sector called non-housing service core non-housing services where we don't see disinflation yet. But I, I would say that. Um, so far, what we see is uh, is progress, but without without any weakening in labor market conditions. That's. Has um, your ex oh, sorry. Go ahead. Has no, your expectation dude, for where sounding the bullish. might go changed since December? 
you know, we're going to write down uh, new forecasts. Again, I'm expecting meeting, a big we'll drop, so time. don't get sucked into it. I will say it. that it is gratifying to see the disinflationary process now getting underway, and we continue to get strong labor market data. Uh, so, but, you know, we'll update those forecasts in, in March. So no word on the uh, on the SCP or uh, terminal. Paul Neil Irwin with Axios. Um, uh, you and some of your colleagues have emphasized the possibility that job openings could come down and that, uh, <coughs> that would let some of the air out of the labor market without major This guy job talks losses. about rate cuts we a lot. We saw the opposite in the December jolts this morning, uh, job openings actually rising. Uh, that also has co coincided with, with uh, slowdown in wage inflation. Uh, do you believe that openings this is are the Goldilocks question. To studying to, to understand where the labor market is and where wage inflation might be heading? So you're right about the data, of course. What we um, we Bonds did are see, we've now. seen uh, average hourly earnings, and now they're the, pushing Powell uh, into the, the corner. corner cost index abating a little bit, still off of their highs of six months ago and, and more, but still at levels that are that are that are fairly elevated. Um, the job openings uh, number has in jolts has been quite volatile that, uh, recently, and I did see that it moved up back up this morning. I, I do think that uh, it's probably an important indicator. The, the ratio, I guess, is back up to 1.9 job openings to um, uh, to unemployed people, people who are looking for work. So it's an it's an indicator. But nonetheless, we you're right. We do see uh, wages moving down. That's if you look across the rest of the labor market, you still see very high uh, uh, payroll job creation, um, and uh, uh, you know quits are still at an elevated. Level so many many by many many indicators, uh, the job market is still very strong. Um, yeah, bro, he's that's the Goldilocks dude. He's not even coming in hard. You might have Thank some market you. pressures, Colby but Smith bonds are going. Times, uh, given the economic data since the December meeting, is the trajectory for the Fed funds rate in the most recent SEP still the best guidepost uh, for the policy Oof. path forward, this is uh, it. or this does ongoing now mean uh, more than two uh, rate rises now? So this might be you're right, at the December meeting, extent. we all wrote down our, our best estimates of, of what we thought the ultimate level would be, and that's obviously back in December, and the median for that was between 5 and 5.25%. Five and it's um, almost been 15 minutes, too. At the March meeting, we're going to update those assessments. We did not update them today. We did, however, continue to say that we believe ongoing rate hikes will be appropriate to attain a, a sufficiently restrictive He's stance. He's not answering the terminal question. That's bullish we think on we've bonds. covered a lot of ground, and financial conditions have certainly on tightened. On bonds, but let's see what it does uh, to stocks. Say, uh, we still think there's work to do there. We haven't made a decision on, on exactly where that will be. I think you know, we're going to be looking carefully at the incoming data between now and the March meeting and then the May meeting. Um, I, I, uh, I don't feel a lot of certainty about uh, where, that, where that will be. It could certainly be higher than we're writing down right now if we uh, come to the view that we need to write down – uh, to, you know, to, to move rates up beyond what we said in December, we would certainly do that. At the same time, if the data come in in the other direction, then we'll, you know, we'll make data-dependent decisions. <laughs> Dude, that's meetings, bullish for VODs. Right? Dude, he's soft today. How are you viewing the kind of balance of risk between those two options of, um, you know, the, the likelihood of maybe... Again, yen and bonds, bonds are ripping off that now. That level. I, I guess I would say it this way. Um, I continue to think that... Uh, it's very difficult to manage the risk of doing too little and finding out in six or 12 months that we actually were close but didn't get the job done and inflation springs back and we have to go back in. And now you really do worry about expectations getting uh, unanchored and that kind of thing. This is a very difficult risk to manage. Whereas, uh, I, you know, of course, we, we have no incentive and no desire to, to over tighten. But we, you know, if we if we feel like we've gone too far, we can certainly could, could certain and inflation is coming down faster than we expect, then we have tools that would that would work on that. So I, I do think that in this situation where we have still the highest inflation in 40 years, so far it's bullish. But know, I'm just I'm worried about there's going to be done. one dip. As candle, I mentioned, I started the power soft today. We have a, a sector that represents 56 percent of the core inflation index. Where and the bond market is bullying yet. now, and it could get so, worse. We, we don't see it. It's not happening yet. Inflation in, in uh, core services X, uh, X housing is still running at 4% on a 6- and 12-month basis. So there's not, nothing happening there. In the other two sectors representing, you know, less than 50%, you actually, I think, now have a, a story that is credible that's coming together, although you don't actually see disinflation yet in housing services, but, but it's in the pipeline, right? So 
for the, for the third sector, we, we don't see anything here. So I think it would be premature, it would be yeah, very premature to declare victory or to, to think that we've really got this. We need to see, our, our goal, of course, is to bring inflation down. And how do, we, how do we get that done? There are many, many factors driving inflation in that sector, and they should be coming into play to have inflation, the disinflationary process begin in that sector. But so far, we don't see that. And I think until we do, we see ourselves as having a lot of work left to do. Uh, Howard Schneider with Reuters, and, and thanks as usual. So I just wanted to connect a couple dots here. The, the statement's made a number of, of changes uh, that seem to be saying things are getting better. You're you saying didn't talk about the extent. Has eased, uh, has eased. I uh, hope. That's new. Uh, you've taken out references to the war in Ukraine as causing price increases. You've taken out references to the <coughs> pandemic. You've uh, eliminated all the reasons that you said prices were being driven higher. Yet that's not mapping to any change in how you describe policy. We still have ongoing increases to come. So I'm wondering, why is that the case? And does it have more to do with uncertainty around the outlook or more to do with you not wanting to give a very overeager market a reason to get ahead of itself and overreact? Great question. So I guess I would, uh, would say it this way. Uh, we can now say, I think, for the first time that the disinflationary process has started. We can wow. see that. And we see it really in goods prices so far. That's the first time he's goods acknowledged it without sector. saying we, This is we what we thought would it. happen since the very beginning, and now here yeah. it is actually happening. And for the reasons we thought, we, you know, it's supply chains, it's shortages, and it's demand revolving back towards services. So this is a good thing. This is a good thing. But that's, that's you know, what we wanted last meeting. The PCE meeting. price index, core PCE price index. So the second sector is, is housing services, and that's driven by very different things. And we, as I mentioned, with housing services, we expect, went above 40, already. expect that measured inflation will continue moving up for several months, but will then come down, assuming that, that new leases continue to be soft. And we do assume that. So we think that that's sort of in the pipeline. And we actually see disinflation in the goods sector, and we see it in the pipeline for two sectors that amount to a little less than half. So this, this is good, and that, we note that when we say inflation is coming down, that this is good. We expect to see that that disinflation process will be seen, we hope soon, in the core goods uh, X housing, sorry, the core, core services X housing sector that I talked about. We don't see it yet. It's, you know, it's, a, it's seven or eight different kinds of services. Uh, not all of them are the same. And, you know, we have a sense of what's going on in each of those different uh, subsections. Um, uh, uh, probably the biggest part of it, probably 60 percent of, of that will, is, you know, uh, research would show is sensitive to slack in the economy. And so the labor market will probably be important. Some of the other ones, it's, it, the labor market's not going to be important. Many other factors will drive it. In any case, we don't see disinflation in that sector yet. And I think we need to see that. It's the majority of the core PCE index, which is the thing that we think is the best predictor of headline PCE, which is our mandate. So it's not that we're not, we're neither optimistic nor pessimistic. We're just telling you that we, we don't see inf uh, inflation moving down yet in that large sector. I think we will fairly soon, but we don't see it yet. Until we do, I think we, you know, we see ourselves, we got to be honest with ourselves, we see ourselves as having perhaps more persistent, we'll see, more persistent inflation in that sector, which will take longer to get down. I closed um, out my Dolby. I'm trying to take to, advantage of the we have to complete smaller the job. ones I mean, that's, here. That's what we're here for. <coughs> Nick Timmerous. <coughs> Nick Timmerous, The Wall Street Journal. Uh, Chair Powell, you observed several years ago that we learned we can have a low unemployment rate without above target inflation. And we have learned lately that inflation can come down from its uncomfortably high level despite a historically low unemployment rate. Given that, and, and given how much you did over the last year, why do you think further rate increases are needed? Why not stop here and see what transpires in the coming months before raising rates again? So we, you know, we've raised rates four and a half percentage He's points. He's saying why not and we're talking here. about a couple of more rate hikes to get to that level we think is appropriately restrictive. And why do we think that's probably necessary? We think because inflation is still running very hot. We're, of course, taking into account long and variable lags, and we're thinking about that. Um, it really, it, it, the story we're telling about inflation is so this will be a pivot point here. The way we understand it is basically too. the three things that I've just gone through a couple the of times. Three buckets. And again, we don't see it affecting the services sector X, X housing yet. 
Um, but I mean, I think our assessment is that we're not very far from that level. Uh, we don't know that, though. We don't know that. So I think we're, we're, you know, we're living in a world of significant uncertainty. I would look across the, the, rate, the, the spectrum of rates and see that real rates are now positive right by, you know, by an appropriate uh, set of measures or positive across the yield curve. I think policy that's, is restrictive. That's bullish We're trying to make a, a fine judgment about how much is restrictive enough. That's all. And we're gonna, you know, that's why we're slowing down to 25 basis points. We're going to be carefully watching the economy and watching inflation and watching the progress of the disinflationary process. Did you or your colleagues discuss <clears throat> the, the conditions for a pause at this meeting uh, this week? Oh, well, you, you know, you'll see the, the minutes will come out in three weeks and we'll give you a lot of detail. I, you know, we spent a lot of time talking about the path ahead and, uh, and the state of the economy and, uh, I think he's just, he I just doesn't want, want to the, the, describe all the details there, but he that just was doesn't the want, discussion he's going to cut really talking quite a bit That's about it. He just doesn't want to say it forward. explicitly or give you a clue in writing. That's it. Victoria? Um, hi, Chair Powell. I wanted to ask about um, the debt ceiling. Um, mm. Given that we've now hit up against it, um, I was wondering if the U.S. Goes past he's, he's been the soft all day. So this is bullish so far. I'm just worried about the red candle. But other than that, though, or will it he's small and he's, he's going to cut soon. He's just not. A, he just doesn't want to give you. That's it. That's why he doesn't care. So your question is, would we? Very surprising. Say your again. Will the Fed do it's good for what now. The market can still go up. It's already ran up a lot here, payments, but still. Or will it do its own analysis of any legal constraints? I'm just waiting for the. You're really asking the drop. You're asking about prioritization, in effect. Again, this is a sure. debt ceiling okay. question. So I, I, don't I, worry about it till June. I feel like I have to say this. There's only one way forward here, and that is for Congress to raise the debt ceiling so that the United States government can pay all of its obligations when due. And any deviations from that path would be highly risky, and that no one should assume that the Fed can protect the economy from the consequences of failing to act in a timely manner. In terms of our relationship with the Treasury, we are their fiscal agent. And I'm just going to leave it at that. Are, are you actively doing any planning of, of what might happen in the event that that would happen? I'm, I'm just going to leave it at that. This is a matter that's to be resolved between really, it's really Congress's job to raise the debt ceiling. And uh, I gather there are discussions happening, but they don't involve us. We're, we're, not, uh, we're not involved in those discussions. So we're the fiscal agent. <clears throat> Gina Smiley from the New York Times. Thanks for taking our questions. I wonder, was there any discussion today of the possibility of pausing rate increases and then restarting them? Lori Logan from the Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas seemed to suggest that that would be a possibility in a recent speech. And I wonder if that view is broadly shared on the committee. So um, the committee, obviously, did not see this as a time to pause. We judged that the appropriate you know, thing to do at this meeting was to raise the you sell wall up here. basis points, and we said that we continue to anticipate that ongoing increases in the target range will be appropriate in order to attain that stance of sufficiently restrictive monetary policy that will bring inflation down to 2%. So that's, that's the judgment that we made. Um, you know, we're going we're gonna to write down new forecasts in March, and, uh, uh, and we'll, you know, we'll certainly be looking at the incoming data, as everyone else will. I mean, would it be possible to take a meeting off, for example, and then resume? You know, could you, rather than just doing at every meeting a move, go a little bit more slowly, take some gaps in between moves? I mean, <clears throat> I think I, I, this is not something that the committee is thinking about or exploring in any kind of detail. Okay. She's in trying to trap though, him. You know, we used to, the thing we used to do was go every other meeting, if you remember, 25 basis points, and that was considered a fast pace. Um, so. I think a lot of options are available, and uh, I mean, you saw what the Bank of Canada did, and you know they left it that they're willing to to raise rates after pausing. But so this look is at not bonds are outpacing the stocks that, there. The bonds are going to bully Powell for the next the month now. Is, uh, on the on the point of deciding right now. <clears throat> Steve, Steve Leisman, CNBC. Mr. Chairman, um, the SEP has the uh, PCE inflation rate in 2023 at 3.1 percent. Meanwhile, the three-month annualized PCE is 2.1 percent, and you've achieved this um, without going to your 5.1 percent uh, funds rate, which is what you have penciled in for this year. Um, and you've also achieved it without the one percentage point increase in the unemployment rate, which you have penciled in for this year. I'm wondering if you've considered the idea of whether or not 
um, your understanding of the inflation dynamic may be wrong, and uh, it's possible to achieve these things without raising rates that high, um, and also without um, uh, without the surge in unemployment. And specifically, I wonder if you might comment on the uh, speech given by uh, Vice Chair Lel Brannard, who said, to the extent that inputs other than wages may be responsible in part for important price increases for some non-housing services, an unwinding of these factors. In other words, it may not be wages, the idea that it may not require unemployment rising to get this sector of inflation under control. Thanks. Okay, you're not even getting the so red right now. First, on the, <clears throat> on the Again, forecast, the bonds are doing what they need to. Um, you, if you're right. If you take very short-term, three, three months, say, measures of PCE, core PCE inflation, they, they're quite low right now. But that's because that's driven by, uh, you know, significantly negative readings from goods uh, inflation. Most forecasters and, uh, would, would think that the, that the significantly negative readings will be transitory and that goods inflation will move up fairly soon back up to its longer run trend of something around zero, something like that. So a lot of forecasts would call for core PCE to go back up to 4% by the middle of the year, for example. So that's really where the sustainable level is, is more like at 4%. So that would suggest there's, there's work left to do. Uh, you know, let's, let's say inflation does come down much faster than we expect, which is, which is possible. As I mentioned, you know, obviously our policy is data dependent. We would take that into account. In terms of, of um, the non, sorry, the core non-housing services, as, as I mentioned earlier, it's a very diverse sector, six or seven sectors. And um, so sectors that represent 55 or 60 percent of that uh, subsectors of, of that sector um, are, we think, are sensitive to slack in the economy, sensitive to the labor market in a way. But some of the other sectors are, are not. And for example, you know, financial services is, is a big sector. That's really not driven by. All right, close by, out the uh, Whirlpool by, uh, $80 loss. Uh, Again, I'm just, labor, I want to clean markets, up some of these wages. other ones here. Um, I don't want to. So many that's X why factors. I said there, there the are a number of things that working. will affect. Take, take, take restaurants. Just compare right? the bonds so clearly to Clearly, labor is important for restaurants, but so are food prices. And, you know, transportation services is going to be driven by, by uh, fuel prices, uh, for example. So there are lots of things in that mix that will drive inflation. I would say overall, though, my own view would be that you're not going to have a, you know, a sustainable return to 2 percent inflation in that sector without a better balance in the labor market. And um, I don't know what that will require in terms of, of increased unemployment, your question. Um, I do think uh, there are a number of dimensions through which the labor market can soften. And uh, so far, we've, we've, we've got, as I mentioned, in goods, we have inflation moving down without the softening in the labor market. I think most forecasters would say that, uh, that unemployment will probably rise a bit from here, but I still think, I continue to think, that there's a path to getting inflation back down to 2 percent without a really significant economic decline or a significant increase in unemployment. And that's, that's because that's, the, the, you know, the, that's the setting we're landing. in is quite different. The, it's the, interesting. The, the market inflation that we good. originally got was very much a collision between very strong yeah. demand and hard supply constraints, not something that you really have seen in, in, prior, uh, you know, in prior business cycles. And so now we see goods inflation coming down for the reasons we thought, and um, we, we understand why housing inflation will come down. And I think we'll, a story will emerge on, on the uh, non-housing services sector soon enough. But I think there is, there's ongoing disinflation, and we don't, yet see, uh, you don't, we don't yet see weakening in the labor market. So we'll have to see. Certainly possible. Yeah, absolutely, it's possible. You know, it's a question it, no one really knows. I think it's because this is this this is not like the other business cycles in so many ways. Um, it may well be uh, that as as that it will take more slowing than than we expect than I expect to get inflation down to two percent. But I don't I don't. That's not my base case. My base case is that uh, the economy can return to 2 percent inflation without a really significant downturn Dude, base or cases really soft landing in unemployment. I think that's, that's a possible outcome. Um, I think many, many forecasters would say it's not the most likely outcome. But, yeah, uh, but the bonds I, don't I like that as much because like, what do you mean? Of. That means higher rates if that's the case. <laughs> but everything else he said fueled bonds. I, he's just not uh, trying Mike to admit McKee he's going to cut. Radio. I'd like to that's pick it. up on uh, what you were just saying about a Mike uh, substantial downturn and ask with uh, the 
full weight of your tightening not in place yet. And uh, with the progress against inflation, there's still a lot of talk about uh, very, very slow growth going forward in 2023. And the recession indicators are all suggesting uh, that we are going to see recession this year. So I'm wondering if you've changed your view or you have a more nuanced view of what you think the danger to uh, economic growth is going forward and whether you're very close to uh, perhaps tipping it into the wrong place, which calls for more restraint on your part. So I, I do think you most forecasts and, and, you know, my own assessment would be that, that uh, growth will continue, positive growth will continue, but at a subdued pace as it did last year. We had growth of uh, GDP growth of 1% last year and also final sales growth, which, you think is, which we think is a better indicator of about 1%. I think, you know, most forecasts and, and certainly my assessment would be that growth will continue at, at, at a fairly uh, subdued level this year. Um, there are other factors, though, that need to be considered. You, you will have seen that the global picture is, uh, is improving a bit. Uh, and, and that will matter for us, potentially. The labor market remains very, very strong. And that's job creation, that's wages. Um, as inflation does come down, sentiment will improve. You also, um, state and local governments are, are really flush these days with, uh, with Sorry, literally said big you know, money, and many of them are no considering tax cuts jump. or even sending checks. So I think that's going to support. They're also spending a lot. There's a lot of spending coming in the construction. So new high right now. You're getting up both there. Both private and public. Again, this and is so already above 4,100. So I, I think there's a there's, there's a good chance that, that those factors will help support positive growth this year. And that's my base case is, is that, that, that there will be positive growth this year. Thank you. Rich Miller from Bloomberg. First of all, uh, how are you doing? Uh, Fine, thanks. Uh, Fine. Good, good. Uh, second of all, um, I think Everybody laughed on at the that. press conference, you, you, you said you uh, need to see substantially more evidence uh, uh, of inflation com uh, coming down. Uh, can you give us some idea of what you're thinking of? You mentioned three months that we've seen three months in a row. Governor Walter su suggested he might want to see six months. Is it just the inflation data, or do you have to see the uh, the labor market coming back into better balance to have that substantially more evidence uh, So I, I don't think there's a, you know, going to be a light switch flipped or anything like that. I think it's just an accumulating accumulation of evidence. So, of course, we'll be looking, by the time of, of the March meeting, we'll have two more employment reports, two more CPI reports, and we'll be looking at those carefully, as, as all of us will, and we'll be asking ourselves, what are they telling us? And, and uh, uh, soon after that, we'll have another uh, ECI uh, uh, wage report, which, as you know, is, is a report that we, we like because it, it adjusts for composition and it's very complete. And, uh, you know, the one we got, uh, I guess it was yesterday, was, um, was constructive. It's, you know, it's, it shows wages coming down, but still at a, at a high level. They're, st they're still at, at a level that's way above, where, well above where they were before the, uh, uh, before the uh, pandemic. So... I, I don't want to put a number on it in terms of months, but as, as the accumulated evidence comes in, it's going to be reflected in our assessment of the outlook, and that will be that will be reflected in our policy over time. But I, I will say though, we, you know, it is our job to restore price stability and achieve two percent inflation for the benefit of the American public. We're not mar market participants have a very different job, and it's a fine job. It's a great job. In fact, I did that job for for years, but. Um, in one form or another. But, uh, you know, we have to deliver that. And so we are strongly resolved that we will, you know, complete this task because we think it has benefits that will, uh, you know, support economic activity and benefit the public for, for many, many years. Edward. I'll cut the Broadcom too early. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Fed Chairman, um, for taking the questions. So you've talked about we had solid uh, job growth. Um, Edward Lawrence from Fox Business, by the way. We had solid job growth, a uh, slight falling in the increase in consumer spending. Um, it seems so far it's been relatively mild uh, from the economy to go to from a 9.1% CPI inflation to 6.5% CPI inflation. Is the hard part yet to come to go from 65 to 2? I don't think we know, honestly. You know, the uh, so we, of course, expected goods inflation to start coming down by the end of 
2021. And it didn't. It didn't come down all through 22. And now it's coming down, and it's coming down pretty fast. So I would say these are. this is not a standard business cycle where you can look at the last 10 times there was a global pandemic and we shut the economy down and uh, Congress did what it did and we did what we did. It's just, it's unique. So I think certainty is just not appropriate here. Inflation, it's just harder to forecast inflation. It may come down faster. It may take longer to come down. And, you know, our job is to deliver inflation back to target, and we will do that. But I think we, we're going to be cautious about, about declaring victory and, you know, sending signals that, uh, that we think that the, the game right. is won. I grabbed because 200 it, you know, it's, Apple shares. Go. It's just, it's the I think this is going to run until earnings fuck it's it up. It's most welcome to be able to say that, that we are now average down on in my Apple. disinflation. So my average but is like 146 that's great, now. But we, we just but see that it has to spread through the three economy. Three bucks a share. It's going to take some time. That's all. How long do you see then the federal funds rate? Again, the speech is about to end, it seems like, you too. Know, so, our, again, our, the, my forecast and that of my you colleagues, only, yeah, you have you barely any the red on that. And, I mean, there are many different forecasts, but generally it's a forecast of slower growth, some softening in labor market conditions, and inflation moving down, moving down steadily, but not quickly. And in that case, uh, if, if the economy performs broadly in line with those expectations, it will not be appropriate to, to cut rates this year. To loosen policy this year, of course, other people have forecasts with with inflation coming down much faster. That's a different thing, you know. If that happens, if inflation comes down much faster, you know, then no, we'll I'm be still holding my and, NQ. And That's why I want the Apple and then the run up for tomorrow. We already have the Amazons. Thank you, Chair Powell. Simon Rinovich with the Economist. Again, I'm down. A, a a I have the bonds, so even if it comes down, I'm not increases. <coughs> uh, that of course implies out. At least two further rate rises. Uh, if you look at Fed fund futures pricing, uh, the implication is that you'll raise rates one more time uh, and then pause. Are you concerned about that divergence, uh, or do you think if everything breaks right, is that is that a plausible? Six thousand contracts. You just ate that level. I'm, I'm not. I'm not particularly concerned about about the divergence. No, because it's it is largely due to the market's expectation that inflation will move down more quickly. I think that's that's the the, the bigger part of that. Um, so again, as as I just mentioned, we, uh, you know, our forecasts. There are different participants have different forecasts, but generally those forecasts are for continued, subdued growth, some softening in the labor market, but not a recession, not a recession, and and we have inflation moving down, um, you know, into the somewhere in the mid threes or maybe lower than that this year. We'll update that in March, but that's what we thought in December. Markets are are past that. They they show inflation coming down in some cases much quicker than that. So we'll just have to see. Um, and we have a different view, and a different view to different forecast. Really. A lot of risky names um, on the high. And uh, given our outlook, I, I, I just I don't see us cutting rates this year if we get our, uh, if our outlook turns true. As I mentioned just now, if, if we do see inflation coming down much more quickly, that'll, that'll play into our policy saying, of course. <laughs> Dude, this is, bro, Powell's soft today. Hi, Chair Powell. Scott Horsley from NPR. Bro, he did um, not have the, the stick. One of the in the statement this, this month is that the committee is no longer listing public health as among <coughs> the Bro, the high ticker's tweaking. Bro, everything's system. running. Every, dude, this is tweaking out right what now. What should we make of that? You got people piling in right no here. Longer see the pandemic as, Again, I'm still cautious. I had to take that one there to balance some things. That's but the this might be a green light to earnings understand, tomorrow. I personally understand well that, that, that uh, COVID is still out there. Um, but uh, that it's no longer playing an important role in our economy and you know we've kept that statement in there for uh, for quite a while and i think we just we knew we would take it out at some point there's never a perfect time but we thought that uh you know people are handling it better and the economy and the society are handling it better now it doesn't really need to be in a yeah you know, meta might do its own uh, but this is just uh, apple uh, amazon Netflix, google uh, now or, that's you know, it they post meeting statement as this an is just good, bro he's too soft today as opposed to he's way way you know, too soft issue Again, he knows it's going to cut. He knows he's going to cut rates, but he has to be soft. Otherwise, he has to admit his plan. Here, pal, Nancy Marshall Genser, That's uh, it. With marketplace. Again, just wait for the big red candle. But for now, they, dude, he's being soft. Um, she said she doesn't see signs <laughs> of a wage price spiral, and I'm wondering if you agree with that. I do. Yeah, I do. I, I, I don't see that yet. But the whole point is, you know, if you once you see it. You're, you you have a serious problem. That 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 means that effectively in people's decision making, inflation has become a really salient 
issue. And once that happens, so maybe we get our first that's red. That's but I, you need a, I'm happen. expecting some and, big drop if that doesn't know, so materialize. It's going to happen. The longer at we're at this, and the longer people are talking about inflation all day long, every day. Next level is 41.33. Um, you know, the, the more risk or of 41.40 like on you know, there's, SPX. There's not much. It's a, it's more of a risk. It always has been more of a risk. I think this is a level on else. the futures, though. By the way, I think it's becoming less salient, and people are you know we we pick that up in conversations, and I've seen some data too that show people are, you know, gradually they're glad that inflation's coming down. People really don't like inflation, and as we see it coming down, that could also add a boost to economic activity. You, you look at the sentiment uh, surveys now, and they're very very low. With three and a half percent unemployment and you know high wage increases nominally by historical standards, why can that be? It has to be inflation, right? So He's uh, I think once inflation stock, is really seen is. to be coming down in, in coming months, even you will also see a, a boost to sentiment. I hope. So that's what you're looking at most closely is consumer expectations. That's that's at the very heart. It's consumers and businesses that you know are the, the essentially. We believe that uh, expectations of future inflation are very and a very important part of the process of creating inflation. That, that's yeah, I a, still have qualities. Sort of Got to buy those belief. ones. I'm just keeping. Uh, in one way or another, it, it, it has to be. It, we think it's important. Um, and uh, in this case, I would say the risk eight months ago or so, longer-term inflation expectations that had moved not. up. We moved quite vigorously last year. Expectations are. It seemed to be well anchored, including at the shorter end now, not just the longer end. So it's, you know, and that's, I think that's very reassuring. I think, you know, the markets have decided and the public has decided that inflation is going to come back down to 2%, and it's just a matter of us Bond following Bond-inspired just taking turns. That's measurably helpful to the process no, of I'm double, I'm a, my next plan is drop the ES off. Pull, believe but I'm, wait, I'm waiting. That'll this be is, part of the process. This guy bought time. You need Apple or process. another Fed speaker to bring it down. Over, I'm already saying this is board, this is all borderline very bullish. Thank you, Chair Powell, Greg Rob from Market Watch. Again, it's already moved up though, December like two percent. There was a a couple sentences that struck people. And then as ultra important. bullish on bonds now. The committee now. said participants talked about this unwarranted easing of financial conditions was a risk. And then and the NQ is really not that bad. I mean, if you guys see it, bring inflation down. we have it balanced with other Are, stuff. The ES or the Ethereum hurts it there too, but the statement. So I was wondering, on all of this today, I'm down a hundred bucks, two hundred dollars. That that's why I'm just waiting. It gets worse once yeah, I drop something this off. Something but that we monitor I'm, carefully. I'm pushing it. Financial conditions didn't really change much from the December meeting to now. They mostly went sideways or up and down, but came out in roughly the same place. Um, it's important that the market. No, I think do this is bullish for natural gas. We're putting in place, as we've as we've discussed a couple times here. There's a different difference in perspective by some market measures on how fast inflation will come down. We're just going to have to see. Uh, I mean, w I'm not going to try to persuade people to have a different forecast. But our forecast is that it will take some time and some patience and that we'll need to keep rates higher for longer. But There's we'll, some we'll stuff that really hasn't even moved. Go to Brendan for the last question. Hi, Chair Powell. Uh, Brendan Peterson with Punchbowl News. Uh, I wanted to ask if the Fed takes into account at all the debt ceiling when it comes to quantitative tightening, given the fact that rapid or faster quantitative tightening could bring us closer, faster okay, to that drop Okay, if we do get our big reds, deadline. we could sell off to VWAP and then bounce by the end of the day. That drop and then if it holds up, it's going into squeeze mode. I, look, I, it's very hard to think about all the different possible ramifications and I, I think the answer is basically I don't I don't think there's likely to be any important interaction between the two because I believe Congress will wind up acting and as it, as it will and must in the end to raise the debt ceiling in a way that doesn't risk you know the progress we're making against inflation and the economy and the financial sector I believe that that will happen I believe it will happen you know it, we, we of course will monitor money market conditions carefully uh, as you know, as the process moves on, for example, the, the Treasury General account will shrink down and then it will grow back up. And we understand there'll be lots of flows between there and the overnight repo facility and, and reserves. We, we understand all that. We're watching it uh, carefully. We'll just be monitoring it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jerome. Thank you. Bro, that was crazy. Bro, that's the softest you've seen Powell in a year. Bro, that, so again, I was saying it earlier, even from like right around here, I was just telling you it was bullish and it was really bullish for the bonds. 
He's not fighting back against anything. He's just, I, I again, I'm under the impression that he just doesn't want to tilt his hand because if he admitted it, the bonds in the market would rally even harder. I think this was the best option. And then I'm assuming he knows something will bring it down here. But for the most part, that was the softest pal you've seen in 12 months. He had no stick on him at all. That's it. That's why everything I'm waiting for the red or for the big red here, which we haven't gotten, which usually we should. Like I'm saying here now, we got about 45 minutes. Watch for one VWAP move. If it doesn't get below 408.77 here, it's just going to be bounce and squeeze mode. But I'm bullish on bonds, bullish on stocks. I wasn't enough. I'm just I was taking out some of the little smaller plays there. But uh, again, I mean, this my balance is working very, very fine for me. How just like the bonds and the ES. Uh, it's actually more than the uh, NQ, but I'm just waiting here. I added to Apple for earnings because I think this could uh, qualify for an earnings run-up. I'm now down on those the new shares a little bit, but uh, overall, I, I interpreted that as bullish. It's bullish in the short term. I think bearish uh, in the midterm as something happens, but overall, Powell just stroked it, man. He was just so nice right there. That was very, very weird. I didn't average on the NQ. No, no, no. It's the same one. I just didn't move on it, but now, you know, I have bigger profits here on the ES, and then the bonds just, dude, the bonds are going to rock it. That's it. He's not even fighting back against the gap, and he borderline was kind of saying that, hey, you know, we're, even the Fed, he said we might be able to change it, you know. He, he's really leaving it up until March, but that's that's what it was. it was. He did not beat down the market in the way you would have expected him to. That's it, bro. He was just he gave the Bulls uh he gave the Bulls a, a W right there. I think in the only thing that's gonna bring this down is if uh the uh uh what's it called? Is if Apple earnings and Google earnings are really, really bad. Otherwise he probably knows there's gonna be a data set that is gonna surprise people, but he, he didn't fight back against the bonds at all. That's it. I mean again and what he was even saying about the the Fed futures and where they're moving, he just he, he gave you a green light. That's it. He did not even care about financial conditions. He said that's what the market is pricing in, and there it is. So, I, I mean, unfortunately, uh, I have the NQ. I would love for that thing to come back down, but uh, I don't I don't think this was the event to do it. Uh, that's why I think he has a little bit more time here now. And But really, my, my analysis is that he knows that he's going to cut rates soon or he's going to stop, but he didn't. I think if he admitted that, it would have been a lot bigger than today. And that's why I think he's just he's keeping it there. And, and that's all a little bit of good cop, bad cop, more or less. But no, he was easy. He was very, very easy on the Bulls, man. It, it was exact. It was the same exact thing with a little less fighting back against any any sort of hawkish commitment there. And and then, dude, he just said his base case was soft landing. I don't think you guys realize how crazy that is. Like, that's it. Hmm. So markets clearly like what they heard. Keep in mind, some occasions the markets move on Fed days are reversed in subsequent trading sessions. For now, investors are heartened by Powell not ruling out the possibility of a rate cut, even if he repeatedly hit home that there is a couple more rate hikes. Uh, Mike Lowen, part of Morgan Stanley, says, as expected, Fed raised by 25 basis points, and the debate for investors has now shifted from the size of hikes to when they'll no longer be ongoing. Despite the market's initial reaction, it seems like the hike was priced in for the most part, and we see a slight step back from January's bear market. Remember, inflation may have peaked. Easing, easing isn't the same as evaporating, and with each month, the Fed may be getting closer to pausing, but that's not the same as pivoting into rate cuts. Investors should likely prepare for the possibility of volatility that dominated last year could reemerge. His, his demeanor it was great I mean I'm still patient with it I mean I still have my initial plan but now I'm not I'm not ready to cut the upside until uh I get more of these earnings here now so I I still don't think the uh I don't think the the bulls are safe but they definitely have a short-term green light off of this it just he wasn't bro he said base case was a damn soft landing and then he brought up the Goldilocks again, and he said everything with the wages. He said, well, we're not seeing – he said you don't want to see the wages, and once you do see wages go up, you already have a problem. But uh, he wasn't uh, he wasn't acknowledging it in the sense that he, he sounded more positive about it than not. Again, look at the bonds. I'm, I'm telling you, that right there, he did not even fight back against what the bonds were doing. 
So Roger Hollum, global head of Vanguard, says the bond market has extrapolated Chair Powell's more balanced tone to think that the pause is coming soon. That's not what he said today with at least a couple more hikes, and he did raise the prospect of doing more if the data was stronger. He cautions that the front end looks expensive and adds that decent jobs print on Friday throws into doubt the Fed pausing in the near term. So I, I, I agree with that. I th again, I think you got that bond. The bonds are, are saying what I'm telling you, but that could change by Thursday or Friday with the earnings and jobs report. But I think it's short term for now. He, that was weird. <laughs> I'm telling you, that was very, that wasn't Jerome Powell you have seen in the last 12 months. He seemed oddly more positive about it than not. Short Disney. We might be waiting for some of the earnings there. Again, some of the companies, uh, depending on where they're at, if they've already had their move. Spotify still going. He even smiled. They laughed a little bit. But no, the soft landing thing, that right there, they changed pace to extent. I told you the Bulls had that in the beginning if they really wanted to run off of it. Uh, little did I know Powell was going to be the softest he's ever been. It was very, very weird, bro. Very, very weird. Carvana, you're, a lot of risky names are moving more like a risk off the underperformers of last year. Those are the ones. I like UNG a little bit better now. That's it because I think he's going to cut rates sooner than not. But I, I, I think if he admitted that, commodities would have ran today. So I think we're going to have to hold it for a little bit longer there. But I, I'm in a weird way, I'm definitely not as concerned as that. Mm-hmm. Right. Everything's going crazy. Everything, bro. You have a lot. Again, you have more earnings in the morning. And then today we have meta now, but you only you only got like 30 more minutes. I think just take this into earnings. I'm, again, I'm waiting for the VWAP drop. But if that doesn't happen, you are going to start squeezing. And then China is going to have to react to this and everything. I'm still bearish on meta. Yeah. I mean, that's earnings. So it doesn't matter where they're at right now. If fucking Zuckerberg went crazy with the blank checks, you know. Uh, but then again, if that does good, I'm just going to cut it after hours there. I'm still, again, my, my idea with Meta is bad earnings, not necessarily reacting to where the stock price moves, if that makes sense. But I'm not, I added uh, Apple to the upside just in case we get a run up tomorrow. I'm still holding the ES. The bonds are supporting. Again, like you can see right here, it's like I make 5,000 bucks between ES and bonds and then down 4,800 on the NQ. Again, my balance isn't even out of whack here. It's, you would be surprised. Imagine with what you're seeing in all of these, I'm down 600 bucks now. So that was a little worse than earlier. At one point, I was up a thousand. So it's not really. Uh, again, this is just about keeping everything steady till I could move it with the surprise data, and that'll be my plan. I'm gonna hold Google uh, just in case, because just in case Meta runs, that'll prepare me for any more run up on that. Mm -hmm. There, July Powell. He wasn't talking dovish, but the market took him as dovish in July. But that dude, he was soft. I'm telling you, it was weird. That shit was weird. <laughs> uh, Sharif, he says, not sure if I get an obsession with a couple more rate hikes as being dovish. I thought it was dovish after I read the statement. The change in inflation language in the statement uh, t from pace to extent suggested they're debating whether to pause and indicating to that 5.1, which was the median, was the ceiling, barring any big changes in the data. Again, And I agree with that with the bond market. I just think Powell's hiding his hand. That's that's all it is. Like, you got to realize if Powell admitted they are going to be cutting rates or stopping, all oil and commodities and everything would have went up a lot. So I think Powell took this route because he just, unless the data, you put it on the data again, he doesn't box himself in, but you're he's limiting financial con conditions in a weird way. So he's letting the bond market bullying him because he simply is believing that if he admitted it, it would have ran even more. Do, does that make sense? That's that's my interpretation. I'm saying that if Powell, uh, again, based on the language changes, based on his answers of saying soft landing, he could still blame the data if he wants in the future. But I just really think his his logic here was that, hey, if I if I come in soft like this today, it's better than admitting we're gonna pause because if he admits the pause, you would be up four percent right now. So I, I think he's just genuine. I think he picked the lesser of two evils and allowed uh, financial conditions to keep running here rather than admitting it and then letting it run even further. 
So it's it's pretty crazy. Yeah, I'm down twenty eight thousand dollars on the uh, NQ. Uh, but again, uh, that one's from a, a that's the last couple of months here now or last month or so. or Yeah, last 30 days. Uh, but then now our other plays are actually balancing it in there. So it's it's not really that bad. I don't, at least I don't think it is. I know it's a scary number to some people. But even on the day, uh, you know, my balance is from today, yesterday to today, my balance has changed five hundred dollars. So this that's why this is how I set it up. Uh, and I'm waiting here for a little bit more to drop it off and making sure, you know, we've realized profit too. But the idea here is uh, I'm waiting for the event to drop it there. Carvana sick. Everything is sick right now. So that's why I'm not, again, the, the bonds. Uh, just un don't underestimate that. I have a bond, a fraction of the size of the ES, moving almost the same amount now, or of the NQ. And that's the bonds are, are going to be ridiculous here. I, I hope so. It sucks that they're up. I'm, I'm waiting for a dip to try to either add more long side or really give me a dip and I'm buying more bonds on that. I'm not selling the shorts, no. Because I think I could, I, I don't think it's, I think I could finesse it, but I think you have a little bit of a green light for a little bit. Just for a little bit. He knows the truth will come out in the minutes. Brainerd beat him in arm wrestling. <laughs> That's what he said. He said that comment there. He said, you'll see in the minutes, which is crazy, but hopefully the data at that point calms you down. When do you sell the shorts? Uh, we sell the shorts on two good data sets, pretty much. But then, again, in the meantime, I'm, I'm still riding upside. So it's not like we got left behind on it, but I just, this guy, is, he's, a, he's a sore a sore spot for me. It would be better if I didn't, but uh, it's not really about the levels. It's, it's going to be the data or the bond market or somebody flinching, which right now, though, Powell just, he gave a green light to the bonds and the market, which is, uh, again, the, the level of, of lack of, of hawk out of Powell was crazy. The minutes will be a month from now or a couple of weeks. Mm. TLT called. Well, they're they're substantially more. Every all the bonds are really really expensive now, comparatively. They're all going up here, and then we're gonna find out. Our redfin position is great. I mean, hundred forty percent. Uh, the covered calls are working me now, but hundred forty on the equity after the yield, a uh, total of hundred sixty percent. But that's long term. Long term's loving this too. I mean, that's it. It's just this is this is killer. I can't I I can't believe Powell just green lighted that shit, bro. This guy's crazy. Tesla I might be able to. I have to go 185 then 188. I believe. And then 196. Bro, even HBI went, bro, all of these names. I'm telling you even Uber at $32 or right below. Stupid. Stupid. Dude, I'm telling you, this this was this was weird. This was it doesn't mean buy by bear market, but it, I, in a weird way, it's kind of it's bullish in the short term, ominous in the midterm because I I really think Powell is going to cut and or pause at least, but he's not. He didn't. He can't admit it, and that's where I'm like, dude, this is why I've never seen. I have not seen Powell like that in a long time. Neither have you. Uh, it's been 12 months now minimum where Powell has even sounded remotely like that. Like in July when we ran up, uh, it was because of it, people misinterpreted the lagging effects, the cumulative tightening effects, if you remember. This time he just straight up was, he didn't fight back against the bonds. He didn't say, he said a soft landing is his base case. Those are the things I'm really focusing on because that that's kind of a, a very big shift. He was saying, he said he doesn't see jobless, jobs going up that much, and as long as wages stay down, uh, very, very weird. I think earnings matter. I wouldn't, I wouldn't get too far. That's what I'm saying is, like, you got some bullishness, but the only way people get ahead of themselves is if you ignore some of those, but earnings might be contained to certain industries if not. But that was wicked. He wasn't, no, he wasn't dovish in December because – he was kind of the, the the bearish part about December is the terminal rate went up to 5.2. So no matter what he's and then he didn't say 
he said he he kind of he said he doesn't disagree with soft landing today he said it's a base case uh but then in december he raised the uh he raised do the all right your squeeze mode now end of the day 30 minutes here now 330 ramp capital you did not get your vwap drop i think you're going to go 4140 uh that will be your next level here to the upside but in in december that by raising the terminal rate to 5.2 and downgrading the economy into a you know a lower gdp that's what gave him the hawkishness but today he was just like nah you know <laughs> he really wasn't there he missed the bottom not quite yet i don't i still wouldn't uh i wouldn't fall for that just yet but as of now he gave us again a temporary one just don't forget you have two jobs reports and two cpis now but for now, he definitely gave a mini victory to the some vindiction. He vindicated the bulls a little bit here. Mm. What a crazy, crazy cat. The yen move, I like it. I think it's going to flow with the bonds. I mean, if anything, you might watch the yen start to strengthen, but the bonds go with it. Again, there's a high correlation, but the bond sh the bond should be the winner. I think over the next couple of days, bond should be the real winner. Yen could play along. The dollar's already down, but then just depending, you really, really need the dollar to go go down. Mm. Weigh out the monies. Uh, data tomorrow is just going to be really the big earnings, and then Friday... Uh, you're going to be getting uh, uh, jobs. You get non-farms on Friday. So that's the beauty of this. So we're not out there yet. And then non-farm, that I think, I think we drop off on non-farms if those are bad. But then we'll have enough cushion here. Meta will influence Google undoubtedly. But it just depends. If, it, if everything comes in line, the sympathies will be softer. And then people will take the positive from the sympathies rather than the negative. But you just you need Meta to really really miss if you want Google to come down a lot. Earnings are after hours. You got Meta is really the main one, I would say. A pause is not well. Pause will be pause is when when things start to get really really bad. That's what you're gonna have to watch out for. Yeah, quantum scape and align technologies. We usually gap down after the 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 FOMC. That's the crazy part. Yeah, tomorrow could be disgusting, but I think that's going to be dependent on on Young Meta. Otherwise, if it's not, they're gonna they're gonna run it up there with uh, the other. I'm still in my Meta short. Yes. So again, even including that moving, that's that's all part of even the balance here today. Again, I'm not really, it just sucks because I, I would have been able to make a lot more money rather than kind of just staying borderline neutral. Now I'm down a thousand bucks on there. So something's taking over. The bonds aren't picking up the slack anymore, but it could be worse. I'm not really like, again, I could have made some money on this, but uh, either way, I think if uh, if I can make it on the back end by dropping off, we'll we'll be golden. Yeah, you have companies pre-market as well, too. Don't forget about that. So tomorrow morning, you're also going to get Bristol Myers, BC, HBI, Harley Davidson, Eli Lilly, Siri, EL, Merck, uh, SWK, ConocoPhillips, Honeywell, Hershey's, Penn, and then that's it. And then tomorrow is Google, Apple, Amazon. That's that's what I'm saying is the thing. You're in squeeze mode now, 30 minutes, 26 minutes left. The long term is killing it. Yeah, the long term is doing great. I mean, the big one, we still have some slight ones. I mean, net net, we're positive now. And then the small account is already up to 5.7 here. And then add dividends, we're, we're probably up 15, 20%. So we've gone about 15% in dividends over the last three years. So that's not factored in here. Uh, but it's it's wicked. That's it, bro. This is, this is uh, I mean, we had those couple of good purchases, but now... Bro, he just vindicated the bonds there, low key. Yeah, job. Uh, is there jobless claims tomorrow morning? Yes, there is. I don't think jobless claims though. The real money is on on Friday, non farms. So you can jobless claims could move some things there. 
See, bonds are bonds are giving up here now. The bonds are kind of tapping out. So that's the problem I have there. But I think that'll balance out in the next day or so. Mm. Uh, what is it? Apple hours, Amazonian, Googly Woogly, even Meta. Dude, they even let Snapchat get involved in this. That's crazy. Nvidia, AM, dude, that's it. They're all they're all there, man. Oh, I could have held a couple of those other ones there, but still got a couple of random names. But I wish I kept the Broadcom, but I'm glad I added a little more Apple, because now we'll go positive on that. Yep, Spy Pop. Now app again, Apple, Amazon, Google, all of these have pre run ups tomorrow, so just keep that one in mind. Yeah, HBI, again, a lot of value names in the morning. Damn, they, yeah, everything's now. Yeah, Broadcom, that's the one I'm like, damn it. That one, we could have made a little bit of extra change on that one. But I'm happy. I, I got to at least trim some stuff, give me some room. We still have a lot. I just threw down a decent amount on Apple there. If we could clean out some of this tomorrow, get the run up, and then hopefully if Meta could work for us, that would be nice. Dude, everything Tesla 182 now. Uh, let me see. And no other news here. Ford to report tomorrow. Ford has earnings. Bro, even UWMC. Where's where the hell is Redfin now too? Bro, Redfin's going crazy. Baidu, I cut that. Ah, Baidu's actually same price though. So that one you got most of the gains. Microsoft starting to move now. Yeah, Tesla could go a little bit crazy here. Why no move on Meta? Because Meta has earnings, but Meta's doing good. I'm waiting. I think Meta, that's it. Okay, now bonds are coming down here. Where's the damn dollar? Dollar's chilling, but this is your little bit of a gap here now. Spy's starting to outpace. I think this is just the end of the day. Uh, that's it. I think you're going to get your rally here. I'd watch for Spy and bonds to match up. Let's see. Yeah, because now there's a gap here, but pretty much I'm expecting the bonds to close it this time around. I don't think they're going to get any fighting back from the Fed. The Fed just seems they're going to just change it to depending on the data. Meta cheap. I mean, Google's a little cheap, bro. You're squeezing. Is that 4140? Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, you hit the level. That's it. That's the last level I've had here for months. I mean, there's like a 40. Bro, you just topped out all of it. That's your final level on the chart. This one will be interesting. The bonds weren't able to make it up here, but this is looking full-on squeeze mode. No sales, all buys here below it. There it is. Mm -hmm. They want it. This is insane indeed, my friends. Insane indeed. Here comes the bonds. No, nah, they might have to do it tomorrow. They're going to wait till uh, China, China, Japan, but... It's our it's in this position. I just the narrative flipped for the bonds in the sense that I don't even think these Fed speakers, I, they're not even going to say, oh, our term like the, I, what I got out out of today is that Powell is willing to negotiate on terminal. He just didn't want to explicitly say it. And I, I think bond the bond market is well aware of that until we get a data set that's going to make everybody panic. Spy, bro, Spy's at 413. Y'all say now that you could like justify a little bit of pump it up. Because finally, bro, you're that's it. You're above Jackson Hole. I don't know if y'all feel me on that. Bro, this is Jackson Hole. That's it. All of that last August, everything, you are now above that level. So really like 415-ish, 415, 415 to 418 will be the next. If you hold this, assuming you could hold this, 415 to 418 on Spy, Good earnings, everything else is going to be good. Mm. UNG. I, again, I, even though UNG is dead, I feel a lot more confident, though, 
and even though it's getting absolutely murked, but it just seems like if Powell, I, I think Powell didn't want to admit everything because he didn't want all of these commodities to stoke inflation again. <laughs> FBI probes Santos role in service dog charity scheme. That's that Republican dude who lied about everything. <laughs> Again, there's still the possibility we barf after today, but I would just keep in mind uh, whatever happens with earnings. Oh, there you go, bonds. We need the bonds. A little lift, but it's working. There you go. The Apple position is positive now. How happy? I'm I'm pretty content. I'm in the middle. I mean, I would have loved to make uh, you know, way more money on it. I think my idea is right, but you know, being uh, I have some big positions working against me. Uh the fact that I'm, you know, not really moving too much and I'm still get, making sure I get some of the upside, I I feel decent. Uh, it's unfortunate for the long term, but bittersweet because I would love to buy more stuff. But now uh, this definitely makes me not want to buy anymore. Uh, and that's it. So I'm, I'm pretty much in the middle, uh, but I am. Ex I know my I know what my bonds can do. So I'm good. Fed swaps price in 50 basis points of rate cuts by year end from June peak. So, again, that's the the Fed futures are we're going ham on Powell, but he doesn't care, uh, apparently. Is the rally short covering? I think definitely this is taking out the late shorts. And then not to mention you have a lot of new money hitting right there. Again, volume is high. And every we got, what, 18 minutes? Yeah, you're again, you're already at seven. You're going to do 100 million here. But I'm, a lot of people, this is, uh, this is what I was saying earlier. You know, we want, uh, it reminds me of, uh, like I told you for the butterflies. Remember I told you I wanted one of these? That's, I think you're right here right now. That's it without a gap up. You're going to get one more of these that could last a couple of days here. That's, you know, you get your little pop, you get the little blow off top more or less, but it depends on data. Sadly, uh, again, I, I would not doubt the bulls now because you're the only person who would have fucked up everybody. Just this guy, Powell just abandoned the bears today. <laughs> I'm telling you, Powell, Powell said, I don't know you, man. He said, I don't know what you're talking about. You know, maybe, maybe soft landing is the base case. He said, I don't know, maybe, maybe, you know, it's, uh, you know, maybe the terminal rate, you know, we'll see what happens. You know, maybe we'll see. I don't know. That's Powell, bro. Powell just abandoned any bearish position. I'm, I'm very shocked by it. Low key. Very, very shocked. Mm-hmm. He literally said, I don't know you. I'm, I'm shocked. Bro, that this is a uh, like can I get another meme for him now, please? So like where is it? Let me see if I where where'd I put it? Where's my pal with the stick? Yeah, this one I need a new one. This isn't true anymore. Can you put him in like I don't know, can you make him a Furby or something? Cause this dude was soft today, bro. I don't know how to tell you that. I don't know how to I'm tell this is not that's you didn't that dude. I'm so I get sad looking at this now because I'm like, that's not even like like, dude, he didn't even do that. Nah, bro. He just straight up like, bro, he just went Hollywood. I don't know what it he's soft now, bro. I'm telling you that was the soft. I've, I've never seen Powell like that in, in 12 months minimum. I don't even know if it reminds me of him in 2018 at the back end, but even then, that was crazy. Dude, the words he said, he I thought he was going to beat up my bond position today. Worst case scenario, I thought he was going to... I thought Powell was going to come swinging at the bond market. I thought he was going to try to defend the terminal rate. None of that occurred right there. And But, you know, everything else, he was just... And I think he played it for, for a, a very strategic purpose. You know, I think he did it to because, again, I think he knows they're going to pause and cut soon. But I think he already I think he chose the, the less violent route 
even though this is pretty violent, but you know that that wasn't that wasn't the pal that you used to know. It's like you know, it's like when you're you know it's like when one of your friends starts talking to a cute girl and starts acting all different. That's what Powell did. I don't know what he saw though. I think he just he didn't. He, I think Powell would rather would rather act dovish than than tell you what what he's gonna do and give himself some optionality. Very shocking out of young Powell. I think he is counting on overheating or the data, but that's why this is the lesser of two evils. But still, he didn't even fight back against financial conditions. Your boy was your boy was different, man. Hmm. Dangerous for future inflation. Yes and no. Because he's letting the markets go up, but the markets could quickly come down. But by not admitting he is going to pause, he just saved oil and natural gas and commodities from running. Does that make sense? This is my interpretation. This is my interpretation of it, but I, I think it's quite smart in the sense that he picked, he chose which one he wanted. He said, fuck it. I'll let the markets go up. I'll beat them down or let the data beat them down later. But if he admitted, that's why I was telling you for UNG, I was waiting. Because if he said we're going to pause or gave any admission, if they changed the language, oil, commodities, and, and agriculture would have ran uh, off of the future expectation of that. So I think he just chose, he chose let the stocks run up, keep commodities down for now until the data beats everybody else up at this point but he it, it came at a cost of of your you just loosened up bro i think financial conditions might be at january levels right now there's no way they're not that's that's my only that's my take on it because i don't know why he didn't fight the bonds bro he should have fought the bonds uh -uh. Interesting. I think financial conditions. Yeah, bro. Right now you are at. Where are you? You're at 0.33. The high was 0.78 on the year. Uh, Do we have 10 minute rig coming in? Let's go. I, I mean, I, I still want a VWAP drop, but look at what's happening now. The bond, they're switching gears. It's the same thing now. Hmm. -mm. Little scammer, <laughs> he, dude. He's he did he did it fight back. Mm. Comes the sell off. Could be again. I still think VWAP. That's the one I was looking for. I think UNG after the right data we could get into it. Or pretty much once Powell can you if you don't want to deal with any pain in the meantime. You could sell out and buy back in once Powell pauses, or once you get into like real indication. But either I'm I'm just gonna ride it out through there. Biden McCarthy meeting on debt limit began at 3:17 p.m. Eastern. Mm -mm. Uh, I don't know how Apple. Apple could be one that I'm just gonna try to play the run up with bullish sentiment. That's what anything else that I'm I'm gonna hold from here. I'm gonna, hopefully I could trim shares before ES and then go from there and then do whatever else we need to. What could happen to reverse this Powell data earnings? Uh, that's it. Powell data earnings and any other Fed speakers or a, a straight up unexpected economic event. But right now it's you need a surprise. Surprise will bring you down, it, and that's going to come through Powell, but I, I, would, I would rule Powell out of there. I think data and earnings, and then maybe another Fed speaker, but that's it. Just like straight up data, and the data is still big. You now, again, you just don't forget what you saw this morning. You saw a huge data surprise. 
So, I mean, it looks like nothing now compared to this move, but uh, that will be the uh, the next thing, I think, moving forward. Ten minute rigged. There you go. Getting back to the level, but bonds are at the high. Again, now VWAP's higher, but I still think VWAP uh, a VWAP test would be reasonable. This guy hates everybody. Yeah, we're about to close. So, and then you have Facebook after the bell. That's it. I think everybody's kind of just digesting this still. There's a, this is a lot to take in. You just saw one of the most bearish Fed shares, one of the most bearish actions of the year. And then today, uh, again, slight language changes, but then he confirmed it with just with soft talk, bro. That was weird. <laughs> I, can't, I can't say anything else besides that's the part I'm tripping on. But I think it's going to set us up for quite the, quite the uh, divergence to the next couple of months here between bulls, bears, even data, equities, financial conditions now. This is how diver this is what divergences are made of, man. So, but it's it's ah Again, we'll see. Well, you never know. Uh earnings tonight and then again in the morning and then Apple, Amazon, Google's, the rest of the fun bunch uh they're going to be out there tomorrow. Now we're going to be laughed by Bullard. That's the thing. Those Fed speakers, they might be able to do it, but we'll find out. Meta should be coming out right after the bell. I mean, give or take five to ten minutes, depending. But we'll see. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. 405. Will Nigel show up? Maybe, man. I don't. I think Nigel is gonna. <sniffs> Nigel might surprise you, man. If Powell surprised you like that, watch out, man. Nigel's gonna come in and be like, "Hello, how are you?" <laughs> bro, I do. Powell just like that shocked me, bro. I'm telling you, Powell just came out, and that's not. I was like, that's not the Powell I knew, bro. That's all I'm saying, man. You might just get. What if Nigel come out like that? If not, he's like, "Hey, what's up? I'm Nigel." Nice to meet you. You'd be like, what? That's like Nigel? What the? F what do you mean? That's, that's Nigel? <laughs> that's, that's exactly how I feel. I'm like, that's, that was Powell? No, that was Powell, bro. I, I, again, I think I know what he's doing, but he doesn't care. He just, he gave a, he gave it to the, to the bonds, bro. I wouldn't, I don't know if I'd call it deception. It's just, I didn't think that was what he, he chose. He made a decision. That's all. Powell chose a decision and he chose to let the markets go up today by because he he didn't want to admit he'd rather let the markets go up than let the markets know when he's going to stop. Because once you stop there, you know what's going to happen next. And I just I really think he just made his decision of fuck it, let it let it run rather than try to, uh, you know, give anybody a olive leaf or a olive branch of when he's going to stop because then it's easy to get trapped there. Yeah, he's just, he's not, yeah, exactly. He chose let it run, then get trapped in the future. But I'm, I, I, I felt like he could have done more though. That's the weird part. I felt like he could have not trapped himself, but I, I'm, I'm surprised at some of the language choices he made. And again, and now you throw with the speech into the first one. It was, it was wicked. But again, data is still, I mean, you have non-farm payrolls on Friday. So just keep that in mind. Mm. The Dow is red for the day. Because again, people aren't buying value names. They're buying fucking Redfin. 
<laughs> they're not like that's it they're like oh yeah let's go again interest rates are lower and now what he said is implying lower interest rates so and he's not going to fight back against it so it makes sense you know you don't want you want companies that are interest rate sensitive now because if those interest rates are really going to drop and Powell's not going to do anything about it that's why tech in the all these zombie names are, are starting to run because there you go so it's crazy. Powell, look at the bond vault. Bro, I'm telling you, this is the biggest bond volume on the 10-year since what? J July. And look at what happened there. That that was the July meeting bond. They went from what? They went up 6%. So, I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised, honestly. Mm -mm -mm. We wait till earnings. There'll be, there could be, the bonds are either going to gap, but the bonds are going to sell off soon. I think we buy the bonds again once it dips. But I'm kind of tempted to add more. But I think it's just better to wait. I already added the Apple. Damn fucking pal, bro. <laughs> I can't believe he did that. Oh, man. Yeah, Meta is after after close here today. Oh yeah, where are the bank stocks? That's a good point. HBI fifty, God bless you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're making our final approach as we make our final approach. You guys are holding on to any bags. Uh, please stow them in the overhead bins above or firmly beneath your seats. We'll be coming through there all with a trash bag if you like to dispose of those bags. But as we make this final approach, we're going to be landing here into the second link terminal. Second link terminal in the description. That's going to be your nightly watch list and main channel layover around 4 p.m. Pacific time. Then we're going to be taking off promptly around 6 a.m., 6.10 out of sunny San Diego, California. So you make this final approach into San Diego International Airport's about 63 degrees and sunny, looking like a beautiful day unless Powell slapped you in a different way because he came in soft as a pony. Our pony soft, I'm not too sure, but we are no longer under COVID guidelines, so no masks are required, but we do ask that you exit one row at a time and drop a GG on your way out. As always, we appreciate your guys' business. If you're interested in the Cult Rapid Awards program card, Please fly down your flight attendant, and we'll get you that as soon as possible. As always, thank you for flying with the coat, and hopefully have a wonderful evening. Wow. Let's go, baby. <laughs> let's go. Bring it home. It's all in Meta's hands now. It's all in. It was it, pal. Pal don't got the whole world. He got the whole world. Powell bitched out. He got the whole world. Powell bitched out. He got, dude, that's it, bro. He caved. He caved today. That's a rare moment, bro. You got some people watch their hero fall today. Wow. Wow. But bring it home. Earnings after the bell and more in the morning. Ah. One minute. Let's go. Wow, that's a fed day for you, Chad. Go, 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 go. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I need you to bring it home. You got to wrap up your plays. You still got jobless claims. Earnings, Meta, Apple, Amazon, Google, all tomorrow. More in the morning. Everybody's going to be arguing overnight. You still got an overnight session in Asia. And it's not over yet, baby. It's just the beginning of the year. But bring it home. Wrap up your plays. Finalize your earnings. We love you, Chattadonia. But you have less than 15 seconds left. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There you go.
You holding. You had the squeeze in hold, man. Even the bonds ain't moving. Five, four, three, two, one. Ding 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 Let's go, baby. Wow, GG, baby, let's go. I don't care if you made money, lost money, lost your hero. I don't know. I need a GG. Get them in here before Facebook comes in. Let's go. Let's go, all the real ones out there. It don't matter if you made money or lost money. I know you learned something. I hope you stayed alive. We got a lot more on the way, baby. It's only the first to hear the month. Oh, man, where you at, baby? All the laggers, all the lurkers, all the lovers. No need to be shy. You made it to the bell. We love you. All the people who held it down, they contributed. All the stream alerts, all the members, all the non-members, all my homies holding it down. Let's go. Good game, baby. Oh, we still in the game. Let's go, I see you too, Twitch. You my favorite stepchild. I love you, it's okay. The prodigal Twitch. The prodigal Twitch, I love you. Good game, baby. Way to hold it down. Are you in the game or not? You ain't backing down now. This is the beginning of a volatile year. I need me to rock. You won't see me a lot. When they do further, you need me to talk. Chattadonia, that's it. Oh, bam, 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 Wow, Chattadonia, that is the day. I love you. If you have to get going, thank you. Oh, what? No way. Was I muted that whole time? Oh, how long was I muted for? Oh, this is really awkward. Are you kidding me? No, how long? Don't tell me you missed the GG. Oh, you're fucking kidding me. There's no way. No, you didn't hear. Oh, I was just talking. Oh, but I, was, I said thank you. I was saying thank you to everybody if you got to get going. Oh, you're kidding me. Oh, I feel so awkward now. No, 15 seconds. Okay, y'all being dramatic. Okay, okay, I thought. No, you heard the GG. No fucking way. No two minutes. Bullshit. You got the GGs? Well, I said thank you, and I appreciate y'all, and I hope you're ready. Uh-oh, meta, 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 meta. No, we're waiting two minutes. It ain't out yet. It ain't out yet, bro. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Meta, meta, wait for it. Wait for it. <laughs> You got the thank you. Okay, I love you. I was trying to get you this info. But yeah, this is what's expected. It's not out yet. You're getting the little pot, baby. Oh, man. Oh, man. So what? Oh, well, thank you, guys. I love you, man, for real. And just, dude, this is going to be an exciting year. Okay? If you got to go, you got to go, bro. But I, I love y'all. And let's get it. I hope I see you on the watch list, okay? Mm-hmm. Okay, you got at four exactly. Okay, that's good. Then we're good. We're good. We're good. Land the plane. The plane's already landed. Don't worry about it, man. But for real, stay in the game, man. A wild day. There's a there's a lot a lot of good and a lot of bad. You know, I don't I don't know. There's, there's just get ready. And now this this earnings, dude. This just made this whole year crazy, man. So let's go, Chad. You're ready for it. This is only the first day of the month. So let's see. I think one minute now, forty five seconds. It is hard to stay in the game. That's why I always remind you, baby. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Are you sure it's five minutes? Because I don't want to get all hyped up and then I like mute my mic or something. Mm-hmm. 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 Ooh. 
10 seconds. Are you excited? <sighs> this was a while. I can't believe Powell was a beep. Little Powell was a teacup. I can't believe they got him. All right, five minutes. I don't see anything. Uh 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 oh whoa 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 monthly active users two point nine revenue thirty one point two five estimate thirty point eight six uh family apps they barely beat uh reality labs seven hundred twenty seven million estimate six fifty nine they missed on users again they see first quarter oh they guided up by one billion for next quarter oh come on I don't think it was that hot but it's moving they guided up b barely. So they guided first quarter 26 to 28 billion. They lowered the bottom range and then raised the top range by 1.5 or 1.2. And they, oh, $40 billion in stock buyback. Fuckers. Well, there you go. Well, so it's already up 12 days. That dude, $40 billion? Are you kidding me? Oh, come on, Zuckerberg. So guidance was, was borderline bad, but they just raised a $40 billion buyback. So I'll probably cover once I get a drop on this. That's it. Buybacks, you know how they love them. Google's going up on it now. Oh, my God. <laughs> Dickheads. So, again, the guidance, they lowered the range, but now they, they literally just announced the buyback. Mm -hmm. That is RIP the meta play, 100%. Uh, that's why I'm going to just wait to close it. Well, give me, give me a red candle on a guidance reaction, but... Ad revenue was bit where well, they missed uh, on this quarter, or I think they, let's see, revenue beat by like put three quarters of a billion. So 700 million beat, uh, not much. And then they guided by uh, 2 billion or 1.5 billion lower on the low end, but then they raised the top end by 1.25. So they, but again, a $40 billion buyback is insane. Again, remember we were talking about that with, uh, with what's it could do. That's like how much of the shares right now, even at this price, that's t that's a ten percent of their float, dude. <laughs> that is ten percent. I was uh, short on it on the trading account. Yeah, you ain't watching the watch list on there. They killing me, man. You killing me. Some of y'all killing me, bro. You killing me. Mm -mm. Well, it's good for the long term. One more wait. Give me one little one, or maybe I wait till uh the conference call. But that dude, that's forty, bro. Ten percent of the float right there. That's that's a lot of money, dude. That's or ten percent of your market cap of buybacks. Mm, so Google's already up off of that. Uh, it's good for the market. That's it. I mean, the advert just like Snapchat, they didn't do bad enough to scare you. Again, I don't think guidance being lowered was good, but that's it. I know. Yeah, exactly. I'd rather that's what that's that's his gift to employees and shareholders. So instead of screwing you over by spending it on metaverse. He bought. It. I am. I. I want to cut that short on Meta. Yeah, I'm just giving it some time here. Uh, other, okay, and it could squeeze a couple more dollars. What's the next range? But is it gonna get back to? I think if it goes above 180, you're screwed. So a couple more, 188. But if that conference call, I don't know how that's gonna be. They say total expenses 89 to 95 billion versus 94 to 100. That's positive. Uh, so they actually lower. They said they're going to spend $1 billion in restructuring. Again, EPS was $176, $32.1 billion revenue. Mm -hmm. The googly woogly. He ain't getting too much of it. Again, this is just buybacks. So it's already up 16%. It's already up what it was pricing in. That's the crazy part. But no, look at even the markets up. I mean, again, Snap or Meta could uh, lift some things up here. Yeah, that's that's like a little pseudo dividend, forty billion dollars, dude. That's a shit ton of money. They could have bought Snapchat twice, could have bought Roblox twice, and then gotten into the Airbnb business. All right, no, they're not giving it. I'm covering. I'm going to take a $4,000 loss total on that one. That one hurt. Oh, shit. It didn't close? Damn it. I forgot to do after hours. Well, maybe I just bought myself a little bit more time. No. Wait for it. 
I really hope the earnings call brings it down. That's why I'll feel like a dickhead if Zuckerberg just says some stupid shit. But I think it's hard to fight against forty billion in this environment now. All right, top tick, Josh closed it, 4,000, 2,500 on the day. So that tilted my balance there. That was the one that hurt. Hold it. I Even then, I don't even care. It's like, that's it. I'll give it to them. They were supposed to do awful. Now they, again, I don't think the ad revenue, dude, it's $40 billion there. Yep, top tick, Josh, right there. I should have waited. Again, 2,000 of it was from today. The other 2,000 took me a month, so. I closed the meta short, yeah. Again, I think it could drop there on the conference call, but I'm just, I don't, that's it, bro. He gave, it's a weird one because he gave something to the shareholders. He gave something to employees. They still are spending money, but they did lower CapEx by $10 billion, and they their guidance, they lowered it while raising it. Again, everything's going crazy on that now. And again, just look at the market and everything. They beat barely. They beat barely on revenue, and then that's it. Dude, there's a $40 billion buyback. Uh, now we have Apple tomorrow. And then they said reported headcount includes substantial majority of 11,000 employees. So their headcount's not even reflected. They saw more than 2 billion users a day, up more than 70 million the year prior. Notable number for the platform, which has been around two decades. The Q1 revenue straddles the estimate. Seems like good news to the street with the stock up 13%. Interested to hear commentary as to whether the revenue beat was on general malaise in digital advertising and is similar to what Snap said. Meta has been working to monetize Reels, their new video content, which has been positive for users, but a drag on revenue. Mm -mm. Zuck knows Meta was undervalued. Dude, 40 billion is insane. I guess it's still at 2018 levels. That's why I'm like, all right. That's where the problem starts to hit. Again, even Roblo's up. Every everything. Again, look at Google after hours, bro. So that's it. The whole spy now. Now it's at 176. Uh, where is it? Oh, I'll see in the long term. Dude, that's insane. Dude, we're almost 100% on meta now, too. That's disgusting. <laughs> dude, that, dude, that thing is up from the now. It sucks because they got to go up faster than Netflix. What they did it on one quarter, though. That's the crazy part. But, dude, they just bought back everything. Again, I think Chevron went up 10%. Last when they announced the buyback of that size, theirs was a little bigger, but I mean, that's a deep discount there for Facebook. That fucker. Mm -mm. You have to log in to congrats. It's bittersweet. I lost that on that trade. My old meta shares, I, I made a shit ton of money. And then our long term, I mean, we might have 200% picks in the last, what, three to four months. But shit, dude. This is I can't believe this right now. He just went in on there. Mm -mm. Uh, I cover my trades when they when I have new information. That's it. So something like do you see the difference? I was willing to ride it all the way through. Uh, again, I didn't I didn't believe that the stock was up on a legitimate basis, and I paid for it. But what happened right now? There was a lot of new information right there, and quite frankly, it was uh, it was enough to for me to say, okay, that's it. I'm not going to play this game with it anymore. Uh, the information has changed. I could justify covering, uh, and then you know, at least we're going to make some back. I hope through uh, Google or anything. But at the end of the day, it was just new info, and that that right there is good enough for me. Mm. New info, new decision. Amen. But that's crazy. 40 billion. I, I'm not going to get over that. Zuck takes no prisoners. I'm, dude, that is. I, I wonder. I want to see what they say on the commentary. 
because I want to see. So $40 billion in buybacks on the heels of 2020 being the worst trading year. Clearly, the company thinks the shares are undervalued. Shares are up now 15%. Mm-hmm. Yeah, bro. Long terms long terms love it, bro, but that's fifty forty billion. So I'm glad there we saved a little bit off of that cover. But wait till earnings uh when's the conference call? I may want to listen to that. If we get a Microsoft esque beat, I might be might be down with that. Uh, no, that's why I covered because if it goes past bro, if it goes past one eighty this is a very, that's it. 180 leads it back up to 200, if not 192. Uh, borderline, I would even say 230 is back on the cards now because, again, earnings just didn't do that bad. They beat on revenue. They they did a straddle on the guidance, but now you have $40 billion. So legitimately at this market cap, they could buy 10% of the company uh, just at, at, at the fucking market, 16 at 20% up, that's still 10%. So that's the crazy part. Yeah. Now it's at one. That's what I was scared of. So I think it was, a, ended up being a good cover. Everyone, i probably should have flipped long on it to be honest with you. Uh, but I'll just, I'll, I'll take that. I'll take the L. HBI, HBI in the moon. That'll, I mean, this is a, it's looking great for the long term. It will happen over the next, uh, probably the next quarter or the next year. So pretty much they authorized $40 billion to spend on the stock uh, in the next in the next year, most likely. And then again, they lowered their CapEx, which is good. Pretty much they said full year cap expenditures, 30 to 33 billion down from 34 to 37. So that's another set of good news right there. Daily users across the app grew by 5%. So they're buying back stock. They lowered expenses by three to ten billion dollars, and then, uh, yeah, there it is. Mm -mm. Biden will be pissed. Very, dude. This is again the market is already up now one point, almost two points off of that. Look at Google. So again, those should come in a little bit more for us, but. Overall, dude, the meta is now going to be the squeeze stock here for a little bit. It's up 20%. So this was this was a surprise in terms of the news. I think even the calls might even hit off of that. 184. You break above here, you go crazy. That's the that's going to be your first test. 184 and then conference call. See where it takes you. Just hopefully Zuckerberg doesn't say anything shitty about it. Uh, Apple, I mean, I'm in it for, I'm in it long, so I'm glad I have that. I'm glad I have the rest of the big tech. That's what I'm saying. That'll feed us for tomorrow. But like we were even saying with Powell now, you're not even going to get, uh, uh, you're not even going to get, um, like this, the first set of data for tomorrow, unless the earnings in the morning are down. That's it. That's all that matters. Shares of other social media stocks are running. Snap is up 1.9. Uh, Pinterest is up three. Alphabet two point two. No, they even let Snap go up. That's insane. Yeah, bro, one eighty. I read that we should be almost at a hundred percent. Yeah, ninety three percent now on the long term for that one. And then Redfin did some work for you too. The covered calls. If you we sold those too early, we waited on that. That would have been even better. Apple's up almost 100% too. I thought Apple lagged, but Meta's, dude, Meta's insane. Any, bro, if you got that in on the 90s, uh, obviously here comes the, I wish we bought more, but <laughs> dude, that's a that's an insane move in 30 days, uh, or excuse me, 90 days. From o end of o October, so November till January, you're up 100% practically. GG, especially if you bought call, your calls might hit. You're five percent above pricing in, and you had the the run up here in the morning or throughout the day. They didn't cook the books. They didn't have to change anything. They just said we saved three or seven to ten billion dollars, and then all they said was uh they're buying back ten percent of the company. That's it. 
that right there, I mean, again, you saw it the other day with Chevron. So remember, Chevron, right before their earnings, Chevron announced uh, this a similar amount, and they went up uh, a pretty big margin, and they were already at their highs. So it's not even a stock that has been, uh, you know, again, I think Meta, relatively speaking, on a one-year basis, Meta is still down uh, just under 50% right now. So net is still down 40% on the year uh, based on that. Mm. Zuckerberg saved the market a little. Well, Powell did. Powell was a, a little b-boy. Well, wait till the conference call. I mean, that's the story of this. Yeah, you got the gains. Google's a little smaller, but I mean, it'll buffer it a little bit, but. We held the meta for a while, but then if Google doesn't do bad, I think is Google down yearly? Google's the one with premium, though. Actually, no, Google, I guess they still got down a little bit. Again, they love it, too. It better not drop. You better not drop. You better not pop. Powell is a little beep. And then Nas Zuckerberg, that buyback, that is the something I, I wouldn't have thought about. <laughs> I didn't see that one coming. So again, all social media stocks are up right now. Expanded buyback. They jump on sales beat. They add 70 million users to pass 2 billion users threshold. The high end of revenue exceeds analyst projections. Zuckerberg touts year of efficiency as, as theme for 2023. So again, revenue 32.1. It's down 4.5% year over year. Estimate was 31.6. Advertising revenue is down 4% year over year, 31.25 versus 30.86. Family of apps is down 31.4. Estimate was 30.81. That's 4% year over year decline. Reality Labs was 727. Estimate was 657 million. That's still a decline. And then other revenue increased 184. Uh, versus 188 but that was a 19% increase uh they beat by like what 100 million users extra on uh daily active users or on yeah daily active monthly active users came in just below ad impressions were 23% estimate was only 13 average price per ad was negative 22% estimate was negative 17 so they showed more ads but they got less money for it and then Reality Labs operating loss, $4 billion. Oh. <laughs> he literally gave us $40 billion so he could spend $4 billion a year. All right, I'm down. Fuck it. I guess so. As a, as a Facebook holder, in the long run, I'm down. Why not? He gives you $40 billion a year. You, it, I, I'm fine with that if he spends $4 billion. All right, fair enough. He gets 10%. That's it. You're just tithing to fucking the metaverse. Not nah, a good trade. I'll take it. I'll take the trade. Why not? Mm-hmm. Average family services, uh, users per day, 2.96 billion. Estimate, 2.92. Uh, and then EPS, 176. Operating margin, 20. And then they guided the lower... They wrote... They, they lowered the lower end, but then they raised the higher end, higher than any analyst was expecting. They see expenses of 89 to 95 billion. Previously, it was 94 to 100. The estimate was 95. So that's another 6 billion. They see capital expenditures, 30 to 33 billion instead of 34 to 37. And then they announced uh, 40 billion in buybacks, headcount 86,000. Uh, and I don't think that includes the 11,000 they fired. Restructuring co cost under FOA segment, 3.7 billion. Oh, wow. They said operating margin would have been 13 percentage points higher. Effective tax rate would have been one percentage lower. Diluted EPS would have been $1.24 higher. Uh, in addition, we continue to monitor developments regarding viability of transatlantic data and potential impact on European operations. Our guidance assumes foreign currency will be a 2% headwind year over year. Total revenue growth in total in first quarter based on current exchange rates. There it is. Now wait till you get the fucking upgrades. So they spent four billion. Spent four billion on reality. That's it. Forty billion dollars, bro. That's crazy. Mm -mm. 
Yeah, no, they the firing didn't really do that much. They didn't even, uh, oh, yeah, invested. Nah, fuck that. He lit that money on fire, but that's it, dude. He just gave everybody damn $40 billion. Bro, what he just did with the shares there is insane. Again, what we've always said, they have a lot of cash. I mean, how much money is that? I don't know how much he has total. Now, Zuckerberg, that's weird because we always, we were criticizing Zuckerberg spending, but not if he spends it on the shares. <laughs> that's the funniest part about it because you're like, this guy spends so much money. Little did we know. That's all of their cash, though, bro. So they have $41 billion in cash. So I wonder how they're going to divest that throughout everything. But I guess so. He got. I mean, it's a deep discount on anything else. He, he's buying it at a very, very cheap price. He did the right thing. Now he did. That's At least because that's what you should be doing. Because everybody was saying, like, why are you spending money on this? when? And then everybody's losing all this money and losing this wealth. But... At the end of the day, he, uh, you know, by at least spending it on your shares, you make sure that the investments don't go to waste. It's it's bringing value to shareholders in, in an indirect way. I mean, there's better ways you could have got value, but, you know, we'll, we'll take it. Mm-mm. Imagine if it's 40 money and enough to still he does he won't have enough to buy out companies. They only have 41 billion in cash and cash equivalents. So I don't know if they maybe I'll get an update on that, but I don't think they have enough cash. To be honest with you. Uh let me see when the number reports, but actually they'd have like maybe I mean beginning of last year they would have had they had 47 billion. But again, he's not going to just use all of his cash to buy the stocks. They're going to just siphon it off from a uh, profits and then they're factoring that into their capex like that's it pretty much he just fired people spent less money promised to spend less money kind of executed on it and then now he just siphoned that money into the shares and then just committed that there mm, Qualcomm I feel uh, I'm still short on that one too but I mean we did see a lot of earnings misses on chips but I'm I'm kind of worried now because I just think there's another element of the market that could come back and kill us all. And it rhymes with Schmeiback. If any of these companies have that much cash and their stocks are just trading at discounts. I mean, again, Facebook was at, you know, we bought it. At, I thought it was cheap at $90, but, you know, I I never, I, I don't know why I didn't factor that in. It rhymes with Maybach, Maybach. <laughs> Dude, he's a killer. He's a killer. Let's see, 200 day. All right, so that's your other low. Yeah, 200. You're looking at, if you break above here, the 200s to 205, 197 will be an issue first. Apple, I think Apple will guide down, but I'm long on him for now. Again, I just think the optimism after today is going to be good. That's not, no, Chevron bought more. Chevron bought $70 billion the other day. That's just huge, though. And again, that's not a, that's not a, a crazy, like, I don't even know what their Meta's buybacks were. So, B.I. Singh, they say the trend is still against them. The app pricing declined 22%. Ad pricing impressions grew 23. So, they're keeping up with time spent on the platform. Uh, and then uh, he said it's because they lowered their operating guidance and their CapEx guidance. He says that's why the stock's going up. The year of efficiently certainly suggests more cost cuts are coming. I'm speculating, but given that Meta did a significant round of layoffs in November, this would follow the trend. I don't find the can CEO statements to be all that enlightening for earnings, but this one from Zuckerberg, Alex mentioned, does sound a bit ominous. Uh, he says, uh, the progress we're making on AI engine and reels are major drivers. Beyond this, our management theme for 2023 is year of efficiency, and we're focused on becoming a stronger, more nimble organization. Uh, 
Oh, I guess he did do a buyback in uh They did do a buy they did the first buyback was October 21st and they did 50 billion. So actually this is 10 billion dollars less than October. So he tried to save the stock last time. So October 21st, last time when they dropped from, so but again, he was getting, he got way less shares on it, but he pretty much, he did $50 billion buyback here in 2021. And then that kind of kept them alive for a little bit. And then there began the, the, the crazy drop. So they have done a buyback of this size before. Only one. That's, I think that's their only buyback. I don't know if it's, uh, let me see if I could go back in time. Yeah, so the 2020 and then January 2021, damn. January 2021, they did 25 billion. So he did 25 billion dollar buyback there. And then January 2020, they did 10 billion. So it's recent, it's kind of a recent trend there. And then 2018 and then 2016, but those were 9 billion and 6 billion. Seventy five, eighty, eighty six. So they bought in like, I guess, 25 percent of the company now at this point or on current valuation. Yeah, the stock does drop usually after the buybacks. So I think it's kind of cooling down. Uh, I don't know when the conference call starts, but Chad, that is the day, my friends. That is the day. So, Chad, I love you. Thank you again for being here. I'll still see you on the watch list tonight. We had a crazy day today. We're going to have another crazy one. So I hope you're ready. Uh, but, yeah, go read the book, Search His Man of Babylon, Proverbs, New Living Translation, Strangest Secret in the World. Yeah, don't forget, you got cold real estate tonight, baby. But, don't no, I got that. You know, we'll, we'll run it for you. We'll run it for you, baby. I'm just trying to taste some, so let me taste. I'm just trying to eat some, so let me eat. I woke up in beast mode, they still asleep. Told them hit their free throws, they back on day. I can hold an L, bro, that's on me. Told them take the game slow, keep the peace. Looking at the table, my enemies. Don't know where I came from, I'm like ET. Money, money ain't the motive, but it sure is motivating. You ain't a hoe with love complaining and the celebrating. You sell a home, you know I'd love to have a conversation. We was buying cribs before you knew about inflation. You ain't gotta give me credit, boy, the banks give me a lot of that. I meant it when I said it, we gon' take it all and give it back. I learned a couple lessons, the wisdom that came from all the bad. I learned the repetitions, I put that shit on my dad. My money ain't getting lag, I want it, could get it now. But I cannot force the hand, I buy that shit when it's there. Your homie just look around, we did it, I say your prayer. We built that shit from the ground, and the finish in the sand. Y'all ain't feel it though, nah, but we ain't need them though. I ain't being cocky, I just won't look in the mirror, bro. Do it more than talking, boy, the empire empirical. Every time I sign the dotted boy, it still feel like a am just trying to taste some, so let me speak I'm just trying to eat some, so let me eat I woke up in beast mode, they still asleep Told them hit their free throws, and back on D I can hold the L, bro, that's on me Told them take the game slow, keep the peace Looking at the table, my enemies Don't know where I came from, I'm like E.T. Market's gonna crash, but I could kick another lesson. Till the curve went inverted, and I don't talk recession. Till the dollar was stronger, then I ain't really stressing. But the fact it won't crash it until the Fed admitted 15 on 50. Boy, the kid already seen this shit. Only way to get tricked off bullshit is to believe in it. 2022, like 92, you should go read this shit. Japan and how they move might really make you think they lead this shit. Place it high money, boy, it sound like today. I'm not playing, it ain't funny. Even the fix was raised, race. Both the problem and solution started with a central bank. Call it what you want, but that one cost a decade. Okay. I got hold the air, bro. That's all me. Facebook, Meta, Power is a bitch. Oh man, so much today. Chatadonia. That's it, man. I hope you enjoyed it. You know, uh, it's a good one. I, ju I just had to go pee, bro. I was holding in the pee from Powell, bro. You know what I'm saying? 
I had to, I just got fully power mode. I was like in shock. I almost pissed myself how soft power was. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know power could even be that soft, bro. You know what I'm saying? He'd be definitely be moisturizing out there. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. Now buybacks on, on, on this thing, man. So we're going to see. You're going to have a conference call. Uh, I hope I have the watch list for you. You might get some other moves. Wait for China and everything else tomorrow. But Chad, I love you all. I hope you enjoyed the day. And uh, I'm going to see you. I'm going to see you tomorrow morning. We have we have a lot to deal with now. You know that the market, the market is slowly shifting and Powell and he's left the door wide open and we are going to have to deal with a lot, man. We are going to have to deal with a lot. So I hope I see you on the watch list. I hope I see you on call real estate tonight. I don't know, man. That's it. You see if the stock market bouncing and the rates go lower, you know what that means for real estate. Oh, never mind. I don't want to. I've been telling them for years, man. And even then it's 6% year over year gain, bro. It's crazy. Yeah, non-farm. You have jobless claims tomorrow, too. We'll go over all that. But Chattadonia, I love you. God bless you. And thank you again. And don't forget why we're here and why we keep going. And even if it's hard, you stay in the game, baby. And why you got to keep looking forward. Save that 10% and keep that faith, hope, and love, and endurance alive, baby. Why? Finger to the sky, baby. To God be the glory and through the grace of God alone. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Nah. So, Chad, I'll see you soon. You enjoy your beautiful day and peace out. jobless claims and Mark Zuckerberg throwing some money away. I hope you liked and loaded and I hope you're ready for more baby and get ready. Welcome to February. Cole loves you baby. Shout out to Cole